Senate in the third regular session of the 18th Congress is hereby called to order. Senator Joel Villanema will lead the chamber in prayer. Thank you, Mr. President. Let us uh, put ourselves in the presence of the Lord. Dakilang Dios, ama namin sumasalangit, kami po ay naniniklohod at lumalapit sa iyo. Alam po namin at kinikilala na wala po kaming magagawa kung wala po kayo sa amin. Panginoong Yesus, tulungan niyo po kami sa aming uh, session ngayon. Niaalay po namin ang aming lakas, katalinuhan, talento at lahat-lahat sa iyo. Because we know that without you, we can do nothing. But if you are with us, no one and nothing, no circumstances here on earth can be against us. We ask that you bless our session today. Bless every member of the Senate, every family of the Senate in Jesus' mighty name. Help us, Lord, to uh, be a channel of your blessing to millions of our uh, people, not only here in the country, but also abroad. And uh, into your hands, we commend everything. We love you and praise you. And uh, we carefully give back to you all the honor, all the glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you. Secretary, please call the roll. Roll call of members. The Honorable Senator Angara. Present. Senator Binay. Present. Senator Cayetano. Present. Senator De Lima. Senator De La Rosa. Present. Senator Drilon. Present. Senator Gachalian. Senator Go. Present. Senator Gordon. Present. Senator Ontiveros. Present. Senator Lacson. Senator Lapid. Present. Senator Marcos. Present. Senator Pacquiao. Present. Senator Pangilinan. Present. Senator Pimentel III. Present. Senator Poe. Senator Recto. Present. Senator Revilla Jr. Present. Senator Tolentino. Senator Villanueva. Present. Senator Villar. Present. Senator Zubiri. Present. Senate President Soto III is present. Mr. President, uh, I believe Senator Tolentino would like to recognize. I, I failed to acknowledge the call. So yes, you were counted. Thank you, Mr. President. With five senators physically present and 17 senators virtually present for a total of 22, the chair declares the presence of a quorum. Majority Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we dispense the reading of the journal of the 34th session, January 17 and 24. 2022 and consider the same as approved. Any objection? Chair, here's none. Journals approved. Mr. President, I move that we defer with approval of the journal of the 31st, 35th session, rather, Tuesday, January 25, 2022, as it's still being finalized. Hearing no objection, the motion is approved and the January 25 journal is deferred. Mr. President, uh, I move that we proceed with the reference of this test. The Secretary will proceed with the reference of business. Reference of business. Messages from the House of Representatives, letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 17 January 2022, it designated Representatives Tianco, Gachalian, Silverio, Romualdo, Santos Recto, Agabas, Vergara, Vargas, C. Alvarado, and Kimbo as countries to the Bicameral Conference Committee on the disagreeing provisions of House Number 3255, an act providing for the establishment of a Timbanga Nambayan Center in all markets nationwide. Appropriating funds, therefore, amending for the purpose Chapter 2 of Republic Act Number 7394, otherwise known as the Consumer Act of the Philippines and Senate Number 1241, an act institutionalizing the establishment of Timbangan and Bayan Centers in public and private markets, amending for the purpose Chapter 2 of Title 3 of Republic Act Number 7394, otherwise known as the Consumer Act of the Philippines. Refer to the committee on rules. 
Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 17 January 2022, it designated Representatives Yap, Gachalian, Lopez, Abaya, and Paduanos Conferees to the Bicameral Conference Committee on the disagreeing provisions of House Number 5793, titled An Act Requiring the Registration of Subscriber Identity Module Cards, and Senate Number 2395, An Act to Eradicate Mobile Phone Aided Terrorism and Criminal Activities, mandating for this purpose ownership registration of all SIM cards for cellular phones. To the Committee on Rules. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 17 January 2022, it designated Representatives Gachalian, Rodriguez, Singson Mihan, Chanko, Garbin Jr., Garin, Swan Singh, and Kimbo as conference to the Bicameral Conference Committee and the disagreeing provisions of House Number 9007, an act regulating the manufacture, use, sale, packaging, distribution, advertisement, and promotion of electronic nicotine and non-nicotine delivery systems, heated tobacco products, and novel tobacco products, and Senate Number 2239, an act regulating the importation, manufacture, sale, packaging, distribution, use, and communication of vapor products and heated tobacco products. To the archives. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 17 January 2022, it designated Representatives Veloso III from Waldes, Abueg Zaldivar, Flores, and Fortune as conference to the Bicameral Conference Committee on the distinct provisions of House Number 10355, an act establishing a separate facility for high-level offenders and appropriate funds, therefore, and Senate Number 1055, an act establishing a separate facility for prisoners convicted of heinous crimes. To the Committee on Rules. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 17 January 2022, it designated Representatives Chanco, Gachalian, Gonzalez Jr., Colliantes, Sagarbaria, Romualdo, and Kimbo as conference to the Bicameral Conference Committee on the district provisions of House Number 7808, an act amending Sections 35, 37, 38, 39, and 40 of Republic Act Number 4566, otherwise known as the Contractor's License Law, modifying the Contractor's License Renewal Process, increasing fees and imposing penalties for violations thereof, and Senate Number 2247, an act amending Republic Act Number 4566, otherwise as amended by Presidential Decree Number 1746, otherwise known as the Contractor's License Law. To the Committee on Rules. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 17 January 2022, it designated Representatives Garin, Chanko, Garcia III, Bondok, Singson Mihan, and Kimbo as conference to the Bicameral Conference Committee on the district provisions of House Number 78, entitled An Act Modernizing the Public Service Act, amending for the purpose Commonwealth Act Number 146, otherwise known as the Public Service Act as amended, Senate Number 2094, an act amending Commonwealth Act Number 146, otherwise known as the Public Service Act as amended. To the Committee on Rules. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate on 17 January 2022, it ratified the Conference Committee report on the district provisions of House Number 10213, an act providing for the development of the electric vehicle industry and establishing a regulatory framework for the manufacture and use of electric vehicles, and Senate Number 1382, an act providing for a national energy policy and regulatory framework for the use of electric vehicles and the establishment of electric charging stations. So the Committee on Rules. I'm sorry, to the archives. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 17 January 2022, it passed the following House bills in which it requests the concurrence of the Senate. House number 10529, an act granting Philippine citizenship to Wen G. Kai. To the Committee on Justice. House number 10530, an act granting Philippine citizenship to Li Peng Zhang. To the Committee on Justice. House number 10541, an act granting tax exemptions and subsidies for the local film and music industries, amending for the purpose Section 140, Public Act number 7160, as amended, otherwise known as the Local Government Code of 1991. The Committee on Ways and Means. House number 10555, an act mandating private higher education institutions to waive the college entrance examination fees to underprivileged graduating high school students and high school graduates belong to the top 10% of the graduating class who are applying for college admission. The Committee on Higher Education. House number 10560, an act expanding the coverage of the tertiary education subsidy, amending for the purpose Republic Act number 10931, otherwise known as the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act. To the Committee on Higher Education. House number 10561, an act establishing an enterprise-based education and training program and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Higher Education, Ways and Means and Finance. House number 10568, an act increasing the discount rate and exempting from the value-added tax the monthly electric and, L and water consumption granted to senior citizens, amending for the purpose Republic Act number 743 to as amended, otherwise known as the Expanded Senior Citizens Act of 2010. To the Committee on Social Justice and Ways and Means. 
House Number 10569, an act protecting the right of the people to freedom of religion in the Philippines, guaranteed under Section 5, Article 3 of the Constitution. For the Committees on Justice and Ways and Means. House Number 10576, an act defining the rights and fundamental freedoms of human rights defenders, declaring state responsibilities and instituting effective mechanisms for the protection and promotion of these rights and freedoms. To the Committee on Justice. House Number 10579, an act strengthening the field offices of the Commission on Elections by upgrading and creating certain positions amending for the purpose Section 53 of Batas Pambansa Bilang 881, otherwise known as the Omnibus Election Code, as amended and providing funds, therefore. To the Committee on Civil Service and Finance. House Number 10582, an act promoting rural financial inclusion and literacy. To the Committee on Trade and Banks and Finance. House Number 10610, an act fixing the validity period of license to own and possess registration and permit to carry firearms outside of residence or place of business, amending for the purpose Section 7 and 19 of Republic Act Number 10591, otherwise known as the Comprehensive Firearms and Ammunition Regulation Act. To the Committee on Public Order. House Number 10567, an act establishing the Baguio City Sports High School and appropriating funds, therefore. To the Committee on Basic Education and Finance. House Number 10570, an act declaring the Sinking Bell Tower, located in the city of Lawag, province of Ilocos Norte, a tourism destination and appropriating funds, therefore. The Committee on Tourism and Finance. House Number 10583, an act establishing a 75-bed general hospital to be known as the Chodoro N. Pepito Memorial General Hospital in the city of Valencia, province of Bukidnon, and appropriating funds, therefore. The Committee on Health and Finance. House Number 10589, an act converting the Bataan Peninsula State University Bagak Extension Campus in the Municipality of Bagak Province of Bataan into a regular campus of the Bataan Peninsula State University to be known as the Bataan Peninsula State University Bagak Campus and appropriating funds, therefore. The Committee is on Higher Education and Finance. House Number 10590, an act rectifying the composition and technical descriptions of Barangay Scalao, Cabaritan, and Kibel in the Municipality of Dumaleg, Dumalneg, Province of Ilocos Norte, and their adjoining local government units, amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 10955, entitled An Act Dividing Barangay Dumalneg in the Province of Ilocos Norte into three distinct and independent barangays to be known as Barangay Calao, Cabaritan, and Kibel. The Committee is on Local Government and Electoral Reforms. House Number 10591, an act declaring November 23 of every year a special non-working holiday in the province of Benguet to be known as Benguet Day in commemoration of its founding anniversary. The Committee of Local Government. House Number 10611, an act declaring the island of Mindoro a mining fee zone and providing penalties therefore. To the Committee on Environment. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 24 January 2022, it reconsidered the approval on third reading and withdrew from the Senate House Number 10590 entitled An Act Rectifying the Composition and Technical Descriptions of Barangay Scalo, Cabaritan, and Kibel in the Municipality of Dumalneg, Province of Ilocos Norte, and their adjoining local government units, amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 10955 entitled An Act Dividing Barangay Dumalneg in the Province of Ilocos Norte into three distinct and independent barangays to be known as Barangay Calao, Cabaritan, and Kibel. To the Committee on Local Government. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 24 January 2022, it ratified the Conference Committee report on the districting provisions of House Number 8097, an act granting additional benefits to solo parents, amending for the purpose Republic Act Number 8972, otherwise known as Solo Parents Welfare Act of 2000, and Senate Number 1411, an act amending Republic Act Number 8972, otherwise known as an act providing for benefits and privileges to solo parents and their children, appropriating funds therefore and for other purposes. To the archives. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 24 January 2022, it adopted Senate Number 225 as an amendment to House Number 8207, an act allowing the conversion of a municipality with either a population of at least 100,000 inhabitants, as certified by the Philippine Statistics Authority, or a contiguous territory of at least 100 square kilometers, as certified by the Land Management Bureau, into a component city if it has a locally generated average annual income of at least 250 million pesos, amending for the purpose Section 450 of Republic Act Number 7160 as amended, otherwise known as the Local Government Code of 1991. The archives. 
Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 24 January 2022, it adopted House Concurrent Resolution Number 23, titled Concurrent Resolution Granting Consent to the Honorable Delphine N. Lorenzana, Secretary of the Department of National Defense, General Silito E. Sobejana, retired former Chief of Staff of the Armed Forces of the Philippines, AFP, and other AFP personnel to receive the awards to be conferred on them by the President of the Republic of Indonesia, in which it requests the concurrence of the Senate. The Committee on Rules. Letter from the House of Representatives informing the Senate that on 24 January 2022, it concurred with Senate amendments to the following House bills. House Bill number 8970, entitled Anachronuing for Another 25 Years Franchise Granted to Meridian Telecoms Inc., presently known as Smart Broadband Inc., under Republic Act number 8337, entitled Anach Granting the Meridian Telecoms Inc. a franchise to construct, install, establish, maintain, lease, and operate wire and or wireless telecommunication systems throughout the Philippines. House number 8970. After knowing for another 25 years, franchise granted to Polaris Telecommunications Inc., presently known as Radius Telecoms Inc., under Republic Act Number 8955, titled Act Granting the Polaris Telecommunications Inc. a franchise to construct, install, establish, operate, and maintain telecommunications systems throughout the Philippines. House Number 9658. Converting the Pinaglabanan High School in Barangay Pinaglabanan, Sitpadi of Goa, Province of Camarino Sur, into a national high school to be known as Pinaglabanan <laughs> National High School and appropriating funds, therefore. And House Number 5944, an act declaring April 28th of every year a special working holiday in the province of Aurora to commemorate the death anniversary of Doña Aurora Aragon Quezon. To the archives. Bills on first reading, Senate Number 2495, an act creating the Bawat Pamilya My College Graduate Program. Amending for the purpose, Republic Act Number 10931, otherwise known as the Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act and appropriating funds, therefore, introduced by Senator Pangilinan. The Committee on Higher Education. Senate Number 2496, an act strengthening the architecture profession, amending for the purpose, Republic Act Number 9266, otherwise known as the Architecture Act of 2004, introduced by Senator Pangilinan. The Committee on Civil Service. <clears throat> resolution, PS Resolution Number 986, resolution expressing the sense of the Senate to declare every first Thursday of February starting this year and every year thereafter as the National Synchronized Interfaith National Prayers for Peace and Reconciliation, introduced by Senator Soto III. The Committee on Rules. Committee reports. Committee report number 535 submitted by the Committee on Public Services on House number 10306 introduced by Representative Birone et al. entitled An Act Amending Sections 1, 15, and 21 of Republic Act number 11212 entitled An Act Granting More Electric and Power Corporation, a franchise to establish, operate, and maintain for commercial purposes in the public interest, a distribution system for the conveyance of electric power to the end users in the city of Iloilo, province of Iloilo, and ensuring the continuous and uninterrupted supply of electricity in the franchise area, recommending its approval with amendments, sponsor Senator Poe. The calendar for ordinary business. Committee report number 536, prepared and submitted jointly by the Committees on Agriculture, Food and Agrarian Reform, and Banks, Financial Institutions and Currencies on Senate number 2494, with Senators Marcos, Revilla Jr., Lapid, Angara, Villar, Po, and Go, as authors thereof, entitled An Act Strengthening the Financing System for Agriculture, Fisheries, and Rural Development in the Philippines, repealing for the purpose Republic Act number 10000 or the Agri Agra Reform Credit Act of 2009, recommending its approval. In substitution of Senate numbers 1038, 1336, 1352, 1361, 1585, 1740, and 1924, take into consideration PS Resolution number 19 and House number 6134, sponsor Senator Villar. To the calendar for ordinary business. George the leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, on the agenda today, we have a Again, a very long agenda. It's like a catalog, <laughs> 31 pages, Mr. President. It's nanganganak na nanganganak ang ating agenda, so we'll have to ask our colleagues to bear with us, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, may I ask why this uh, uh, screen is not mm -hmm. utilized? Sira ba yung camera? But I can't really see our colleagues on the smaller screen. Anyways, we'll ask... Uh, our staff to secretary to take care of that. First item uh, on the agenda is a treaty on the arms trade. I'll ask if the good our good colleague Senator Coco is ready for uh, for this and approval on second reading and possibly third reading, Mr. President. Senator Pimentel. We have to put on record that we need 16 votes, Mr. President. He insists that I take it up today, so 
we will proceed or not to proceed, Mr. President. Is he ready? He's here. Senator okay. Bimitel. Yes, uh, Mr. President, I'm sorry. Uh, okay. Uh, I was, By the way, uh, thank you for the sumptuous meal in the lounge to Senator Pimentel. Yes, yes, oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I hope the senators physically present will take time uh, to to take a break and uh, enjoy uh, what I prepared for you. Yes, sir. So, Mr. President, uh, I, the the uh, following well the, uh, the <laughs> agenda is to approve it on second reading. Then we can proceed yes, to a third reading vote. Mr. President, I move to approve on third reading Senate resolution. Concurring in the ratification of arms trade PT, this is Senate Resolution Number 960. So moved. Any objection? Hearing none. DS Resolution 960, consideration is in order. Mr. President, I, will, I move that we proceed to the third reading uh, nominal vote for this measure. What is the parliamentary status of the measure? We approved it on second reading, Mr. President, just now, and uh, after, with precedence and uh, uh, the suspension of our rules. So I move to suspend the rules, Mr. President. My apologies. Any objection? Hearing none, rules are suspended. The... We may now proceed, Mr. President, for a third reading vote for this resolution. Yes, we just approved it, sir, second reading. Uh, I think the motion was to consider 960. Oh, you know, so we okay. uh, we are so now just to make the proper motion. I move yes. to approve on second reading. Yes, proposed Senate resolution 960. 960. All right. Any objection? Hearing none. 960 is approved on second reading. Mr. President, uh, I move to suspend the rules. Oh uh, yes. Okay. okay. The rules are suspended. Presently. Thank you, Mr. President, so that we may proceed with the third reading vote. I so move. The Secretary will read the title of the resolution and conduct a roll call vote. PS Resolution Number 960, resolution, con resolution Concurring in the Ratification of the Arms Trade Treaty. Roll call vote. The Honorable Senator Angara. Yes. Senator Binay. Yes. Senator Cayetano. Oh. Yes. Senator De Lima. Senator De La Rosa. Abstain. Abstain. Senator Drilon. Yes. Senator Gatchalian. Senator Go. Abstain na lang din ako. Abstain. Senator Gordon. Senator Ontiveros. Aye. Senator Lacson. Senator Lapid. Yes. Senator Marcos. Marcos. Huh? Sen Marcos. Senator Marcos. Mark. <laughs> He's talking to somebody else. <laughs> I Senator. Mean. I mean. Senator Marcos. <laughs> Senator Pacquiao. Sandali lang. Eh. Yes. Senator Pangilinan. Yes. Senator Pimentel the 3rd. Yes. Senator Poe. Abstain. Senator Recto. Abstain. Abstain. We'll break you. So throw away mm -hmm. all that self-doubt. And the pursue the things that Senator I mean, Marcos is ready to vote. Uh, Senator Marcos. Sa inyo ngayong, uh, hapon na ito. And of course, Senator she, she interview the uh, I uh, me. I me. Yes, po. Yes. Oh, yes. Uh, so Senator po, uh, Arms Treaty yes, po ito. Po. Okay. Yes. You know, just proceed with the roll call vote. Uh, please do not interrupt the voting. Go ahead. Uh, Senator Revilla Jr. No vote. Senator Tolentino. Senator Villanueva. Yes. 
Senator Villar. Yes. Senator Zubiri. Abstain. Senate President Soto III. Yes. But we need the vote of uh, Senator Marcos. Senator yes. Marcos. Yes. Yes, vote. And then... Uh, Dick Gordon. Senator Gordon. Because if they don't vote, that's not counted. Fifteen ang bilang ko eh. Hmm. Ano? Hindi, tinatanong. So, Senator Gordon and who, who did not vote? Senator Gordon and Senator Rebilla. I'm here. I'm here. I'm, I'm voting for it. Yeah, what is your vote? Yes. Yes. How about Senator Rebilla? No, Senator Rebilla. Last call. All right. Uh, we have uh, 16 affirmative votes, no negative votes, six abstention. Oh, huh? PS uh, Resolution 960 is approved in third reading. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President. Moving forward, congratulations to our dear colleague. Sa arms Mr. pa lang yun, Mr. President, President. I bet I, I think we have to discuss about RCEP because mukhang mas marami pang kukunta sa RCEP. I think uh, the chairman <laughs> of the committee should, uh, I think, uh, make more effort siguro to gather more of our colleagues to vote in favor of the Lamina, especially our RCEP. Mr. President, uh, moving forward, uh, I move that we consider Senate Bill number 2233. Any objection? Hearing none, 223, so consideration is in order. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, uh, may we recognize our sponsor, and we are in the period of amendments, Senator Risa Ontiveros. Senator Risa Ontiveros, recognized. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. President. Um, Mr. President, uh, I am prepared to present for the approval of our chamber the proposed committee amendments uh, on the foundling bill as of today, 26th January 2022. May I proceed, Mr. President? Go ahead. Salamat po, Mr. President. And uh, just at the outset, for the record, these uh, committee amendments already include two of the, uh, the proposed amendments uh, of the good uh, chair of the Committee on uh, Foreign Relations, uh, the good gentleman from Cagayan de Oro, Senator Coco. Uh, in section two, Mr. President, on page two, line 10, section two, insert a paragraph after the last sentence of the section. In furtherance of the state policy to create one body to exercise all powers and functions relating to alternative child care, state services relating to the protection and welfare of foundlings shall be placed under the National Authority for Child Care, NAC. I so move, Mr. President. Uh, any objection? Anything not uh, adopted? Thank you, Mr. President. In section four, on page two still, line 17, after the words abandoned child, Insert the words, provided that if the actual finder is a minor, his or her parent or legal guardian shall assist in making the report. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. On page 2 still, line 17 still, delete the word immediately and replace with the phrase, Report within 48 hours upon discovery of the child too. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. On page 2 still, line 18, delete the words other relevant national or local government agencies and or recognized child caring agencies and replace with closest to him or her or any safe haven provider, which shall in turn coordinate with the NAC through the Regional Alternative Child Care Office, RACO. 
I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Eating none adopted. Still on page 2, line 20, after the word interest, insert a new sentence. In case the finder or finders apply to become foster parent or parents of the foundling, the NAC shall prioritize the assessment if they meet the qualifications under Republic Act Number 10165 or the Foster Care Act of 2012. Taking the amendments in items 3, 4, and 5, Mr. President, Section 4 shall now read, The finder shall be a person of legal age who discovered the deserted or abandoned child, provided that if the actual finder is a minor, his or her parent or legal guardian shall assist in making the report. The finder shall report within 48 hours upon discovery of the child child, inform the local social welfare and development office closest to him or her, or any safe haven provider, which shall in turn coordinate with the NAC through the Regional Alternative Child Care Office, RACO, for the provision of appropriate care and services in line with the foundling's needs and best interest. In case the finder or finders apply to become foster parent or parents of the foundling, the NAC shall prioritize the assessment if they meet the qualifications under Republic Act Number 10165 or the Foster Care Act of 2012. Just for the record, Mr. President, as each of these uh, proposed committee amendments have uh, been approved by the Chamber. Thank you, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Moving now to section uh, five, Mr. President. On page two, still, line 26, before the words, a natural born citizen, insert the word presumed. Uh, and this, Mr. President, for the record, is a proposal from the office of uh, Senco Copimentel and is consistent with the wording in the Paul Yamanzares Supreme Court decision. I so move, Mr. President. Consulates in his and territories abroad presumed. Yes, Mr. President. It's a natural board, Filipino. No, Paul. Wait, let me. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, consulates and territories abroad presumed or presumed? What was the word did you use? Uh, presumed, Mr. President, with a D. Presumed. Yes, Mr. President. Yeah. Is presumed a natural born oh, Filipino is citizen. Presumed a natural born. All right. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Continuing on page three now, line five, and for consistency, before the words natural born status, insert the phrase presumption of, so that it will now read, Mr. President, the presumption of natural born status of a foundling. All right. Okay. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Again, with thanks uh, to uh, Sen Coco, uh, from whose office uh, this was a proposal, and again, consistent with the wording in the Polia Manzare Supreme Court decision. Moving on, Mr. President, to Section 6, on page 3, line 10, delete the entire Section 6 as presently worded and replace with the following new Section 6. Section 6, Administrative Adoption and Status of Legitimacy. In the event that the biological parents cannot be identified and located, the foundling shall be declared legally available for adoption subject to existing laws, rules, and regulations, and taking into consideration the best interest of the child. The relevant provisions of Republic Act Number 11642, otherwise known as the Domestic Administrative Adoption and Alternative Child Care Act, shall apply in the adoption of foundlings. Consistent with Section 41 of Republic Act No. 11642, once the adoption of the foundling is finalized, 
the adopted foundling shall be considered the legitimate child of the adopter for all intents and purposes, and as such, is entitled to all the rights and obligations provided by law to legitimate children born to them without discrimination of any kind. To this end, the adoptee is entitled to love, guidance, and support in keeping with the means of the family. The legitimate filiation that is created between the adopter and adopted foundling shall be extended to the adopter's parents, adopter's legitimate siblings, and legitimate descendants. The adopter is also given the right to choose the name by which the adopted foundling is to be known, consistent with the best interest of the child. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hitting none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Still on page three, insert a new section after section six to read as follows. Section seven, alternative child care options. The NAC, LSWDO, and any accredited child caring or child placing agency shall ensure that foundlings are provided with alternative child care options such as but not limited to kinship care, foster care, or even residential care consistent with existing laws, while the search and inquiry into the facts of birth and the parentage of the foundling is ongoing. And then renumber succeeding sections accordingly. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Section 7, on page 4, line 1, delete the words, the DSWD or its accredited child caring center or licensed and accredited SWDAs and replace with the words, the NAC through the RACOS, all relevant government agencies, so that the paragraph shall now read, the NAC through the RACOS, all relevant government agencies, the concerned LGUs, police authority, and the finder shall, at all times, consider the child's best interest in all actions or support services provided for a foundling. I so move, Mr. President. Uh, any objection? Anything not adopted? Thank you, Mr. President. Section 8. Still on page four, line ten. Yes, uh, you 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 uh, will move for uh, renumbering later, or uh... Uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, I move to renumber succeeding sections accordingly. Yes, there was an additional section. So the the present section eight. Go ahead. Yes, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, even before I continue, I wish to again thank Santia uh, for all her uh, important contributions. Uh, to this bill. Thank you, Mr. President. To continue, uh, Mr. President, on uh, section in section eight, on page uh, the current section eight on the cur in the current page four line ten, replace the words the Department of Social Welfare and Development (DSWD) with NAC. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. In the current page four line eleven, section eight. Delete the words, the DSWD or any of its accredited child caring centers or licensed and accredited social welfare and development agencies, SWDAs, and replace with the NAC through the RACOS. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Still on the current page four, line 15, delete the words, the DSWD or its accredited child caring center or licensed and accredited SWDAs and replace with the NAC through the RACOS. Any objection? Being not adopted. And on page four, currently, line 22, delete the word may and replace with the word shall. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Being not adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, moving now to the current section 9, still on page 4, line 25. Delete the first paragraph and replace with the following. Section 9, registration of a foundling. 
the following documents shall be required before the foundling may be registered with a local civil registrar. A. Affidavit of the finder. B. Certification of the barangay captain or police authority on the circumstances surrounding the foundling's discovery, provided that in the event that the child is found in a different barangay from the residence of the finder, both barangay captains shall be informed and C, report of the NAC duly signed by the authorized officer. The NAC report must attest to the fact that the birth and parentage of the foundling are unknown, despite the proactive and diligent search and inquiry conducted. The report must be exhaustive and must include all the facts that have been gathered regarding the parents and the birth of the foundling, provided that for adult foundlings with no foundling certificate, no exhaustive social case study report by the RACO shall be required, but the local social welfare and development office shall issue a report on his or her background and qualifications as a foundling under this act. I so move, Mr. President. Uh, until wo, wo, until what uh, line are you amending? Uh, that would be, Mr. President, uh, beginning on the current page four, uh, line twenty-five. Uh, until until page uh, we we deleted. Uh, I propose rather, Mr. President, to delete by this committee amendment up to line twenty-four currently of no, page no. five, Mr. President. Okay. So all three all three paragraphs. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Oh, I, I apologize, Mr. President. My mistake. Uh, I had moved to delete the first paragraph, which, uh, to correct myself, Mr. President, is the original section 9, line 25 on page 4, up to mm. line 6 of page 5. I apologize, Mr. President. Just that one paragraph to be replaced with the uh, two paragraphs I had read to be uh, yes. replaced. So it's, it is not up to line 24. You are not deleting oh, line Mr. 7 President. to line 24. Yes, All Mr. Right. President, I am not. We, we, it, is, it stands corrected. Go yes, ahead. Mr. Oh. President, thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. To continue, uh, still on page 5, line 7, delete the word DSWD and replace with NAC. I so move, Mr. President. The objection. Hearing none, adopted. Still on page 5, line 11, after the word act, delete the words, shall also be issued a certificate of live birth on the basis of such document alone, provided further that if such a certificate of live birth has not been issued yet, the certificate of foundling or a similar official document shall function as such with the same legal effect and replace with may secure a certificate of live birth before the local civil registrar, which shall immediately issue one, without cost, on the basis of such document alone, provided further that the certificate of foundling or a similar official document shall continue to have the same legal effect as a certificate of live birth. So taking the amendments in items 14 to 20, mm. the relevant paragraphs of section 9 shall read as follows, Mr. President. Section 9, registration of a foundling. The following documents shall be required. I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. President. I'm sorry, Mr. President. No, I was saying that the suggestion is that... Uh, do you no longer have to read what you are deleting? Just tell us okay. which lines are you deleting so that you can continue uh, with the amendment. Go ahead, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. <clears throat> President. Just for the record that the last paragraph of Section 9, beginning with the concerned agencies, uh, shall also not be deleted. Thank you, Mr. President. Okay. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Moving now to Section 10. On uh, the current page 5, line 25, after the words live birth, 
delete the line, the following are grounds for cancellation of a foundling certificate of live birth and replace with the line, the biological parent or parents, the NAC or the LSWDO may file a petition for the revocation of the certificate of live birth before the local civil registrar based on the following grounds. I so move, Mr. President. All right. Any objection? You can adopt it. Thank you, Mr. President. Moving now to Section 11. On the current page 6, line 9, delete the entire Section 11 and replace with a new Section 11 as follows. Section 11, recovering legal custody and restoring parental authority. The biological parent or parents or legal guardian of a foundling may petition the NAC to recover the legal custody and restore parental authority over the child, provided that if the child was voluntarily committed or if any of the following is pending with the NAC. A. Petition for the issuance of CD CLAA. B. Supervised trial custody. Or C. Petition for adoption. The relevant provisions of Republic Act number 11642 shall apply. In deciding all cases, the best interest of the child shall be the paramount consideration of the NAC. If the child is already adopted, all legal ties between the biological parents or legal guardian and the child are severed, and the same shall be vested on the adopters. The NAC or the Local Social Welfare Development Officer, LSWDO, shall provide the necessary counseling and other necessary programs and services to the biological parents and the necessary assistance to authorities when the biological parents of a founding are identified and express the desire to reclaim or exercise parental authority over them. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Moving now to Section 12. On the current page 6, section line 20, section 12, after the word church, insert the phrase, provided that for purposes of this act, a church shall be defined as a place devoted to religious worship held with regularity. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Still on page 6, line 21, paragraph D, delete the line, a medical staff member at a licensed government and private hospital and replace with DOH accredited health facilities, including hospitals, infirmaries, city health offices, birthing homes, rural health units, and barangay health stations. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing that adopted. Now on the current page 7, Mr. President, line 1, paragraph E, delete the line, any other person that shall be designated as a safe haven provider by the Secretary of Social Welfare and Development under the implementing rules and regulations of this Act and replace with a local social welfare and development office and I so move, Mr. President. Uh, hearing no objection, adopted. Still on page 7, line 3, insert a new paragraph F. DSWD managed residential care facilities and LGU managed residential care facilities. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Moving now to section 13. On the current page 7, line 5, after the word shall, delete the rest of the paragraph and replace with the following in itemized fashion. A. Act appropriately to take care of the infant. B. Inform the parent that the parent may but is not required to answer questions regarding the identity and the medical history of the infant. C. Confirm, if practicable, 
that the parent wishes to permanently relinquish their parental rights and release the infant for adoption. And D, within the 48 hours from the time of relinquishment of the child by the birth parent or parents to the safe haven provider or from the report by a finder that a foundling was discovered as applicable, inform the NAP through the RACO that the child has been relinquished in its custody, including all information surrounding the identity and circumstances of abandonment of the child. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. New provision after Section 13. Insert a new section after Section 13 to read as follows. Section, the appropriate number, Mr. President, status of infants relinquished under the safe haven provisions. Infants relinquished under the safe haven provisions of this Act shall be considered foundlings. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Moving now, Mr. President, to Section 15 on the current page 8, line 2, delete the words DSWD officers or staff or its accredited child caring center or licensed and accredited SWDA and replace with the words NAC or RACO employees, staff of child caring and child placing facilities, safe haven providers. I so move, Mr. President. What uh, what line is that? What page? Um, that would be currently, Mr. President, page eight, uh, line two. All right. Any objection? It is not adopted. Still on page eight, line seven. Delete the word and after the word foundling. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Still on page eight, line eight. Delete the entire letter C covering lines 8 to 14. This, Mr. President, is an amendment from Senator Coco's office for which I thank the good gentleman and which we accept as it can be covered by the revised penal code provisions on malicious prosecution. So I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing not adopted. Still on page 8, line 8, insert a new letter C to read. A fine ranging from 500,000 pesos, and then also in numbers in parentheses, to 1 million pesos in numbers in parentheses, shall be imposed on a safe haven provider that does not report within 48 hours that an infant was relinquished within its premises. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Still on page 8, line 21, after the word kidnapping, delete the word and and replace with the word or. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. And moving um, now to section 16, on the current page 9, line 7, replace the word DSWD with the word na. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Still on page 9, line 7, after the word LSWDOs, insert the phrase Local Council for the Protection of Children, LCPC, Department of the Interior and Local Government, DILG. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Moving now to section 17, on page 9, line 14, after the word DSWD, insert the word NAC. On the same line, replace the word stakeholder with stakeholders. I so move, Mr. President. Uh, hearing no objection, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Moving now to section 19. On page 9, line 21, implementing rules and regulations. After the words Secretary of Social Welfare and Development, insert the words and the executive director of the Inter-Country Adoption Board before the words in consultation with the Secretary of Justice. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Moving now to Section 20 
on page 10, line 5, after the words, within 10 years of its effectivity, insert a new second paragraph. Before the establishment of the NAC, as provided under Section 56 of Republic Act No. 11642, the functions of the NAC relating to foundlings shall remain with the DSWD. The functions of the RACO shall, during the three-year period, be performed by the DSWD field offices in coordination with the local social welfare development offices. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. And finally, moving to section 23 on page 10, line 12, after the word suppletory clause, insert the words Republic Act number 11642, otherwise known as the Domestic Administrative Adoption and Alternative Child Care Act. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. I also uh, finally move to renumber the sections accordingly. I so move, Mr. President. All right, so renumbered. Senator Pia is recognized. Mr. President, I'd just like to thank our colleague, uh, the sponsor of the measure, for accepting my amendments. Uh, the reason for these uh, key amendments is number one, to ensure that the rights of the foundling child are respected and, and institutionalized through legislation. And number two, because we just passed a very comprehensive uh, domestic uh, adoption law, which is now a law, a bill that is now a law, uh, it's, it's um, a domestic administration, um, administrative adoption. Uh, the objective here, Your Honor, is to ensure that this bill on foundlings is consistent with that measure. So um, given those two major concerns, uh, we drafted our amendments um, pursuant to that. And uh, Her Honor, the sponsor, was uh, graceful enough to accept these amendments. And I'd like to thank her for that. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, uh, as well, good gentlewoman. Salamat po, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. With that, I move to close the period of amendment. Any objection? Hearing none, period amendments closed. Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading Senate Bill number 2233. Any objection? Hearing none, Senate Bill 2233 is approved in second reading. Thank you very much. Mr. President. Congratulations to our sponsor and to all the authors and sponsors, Senator Pia, Senator Grace, uh, and uh, to all those who have been pushing for this uh, measure. Congratulations. Mr. President, I move to suspend consideration. Consideration is suspended. Mr. President, I move to resume consideration. Senator, uh, before I do that, we would like to recognize our distinguished colleague from Taguig. She just wants to give a short report on her trip to the IPU, Mr. President. Our distinguished colleague, Senator Pia Cayetan. Senator Pia Cayetan is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I believe it's very important that we report on uh, this trip. Um, this is a uh, practice I have learned from the late uh, Senator Nene Pimentel to be very detailed in our report so that we can also share our learnings with our colleagues and the Filipino people. I will make this brief, Mr. President, in the interest of time, but I will submit a full report to each of your offices, complete with pictures, and then I will also submit my speech into the record. So let me begin. Mr. President, I rise today on a matter of personal and collective privilege. Last November 26 to 30, I took part in the 143rd Interparliamentary Union, Assembly, and Related Meetings in Madrid, Spain, as the sole representative of the Philippine Senate. This year's theme was Contemporary Challenges to Democracy, Overcoming Division and Building Communities. The IPU members adopted the Madrid Declaration, which calls for a new approach to democracy with a renewed commitment to core democratic values, inclusiveness, and problem solving. Of course, these debates took place amidst COVID, and we were swift to tackle policies based on evidence to immediately respond to emergencies and mitigate the negative impact of this unprecedented health event. It was discussed that all countries had sadly observed that this had negative effects on the democratic process, this need to act urgently. And these challenges were further aggravated by COVID itself. During the general plenary deb debate, which I participated in, I stress that our response to these challenges must be long-lasting solutions that incorporate the concept of intergenerational fairness, 
so that it will have a positive effect on the next generations. Intergenerational fairness is a concept of justice among generations, which is the foundation of sustainable development in the use and conservation of the environment and its natural resources, cultural resources, and the proper way to approach economic and social problems. I also cited various Senate initiatives, such as the creation of the Committee on Sustainable Development Goals, Innovations and Futures Thinking, that is focused on monitoring progress in sustainable development and mainstreaming futures thinking. Always a topic in the IPU is women representation. I, I reported that 28% of the members of the House of Representatives and 29% of the senators are women. This places the Philippines at the 61st spot out of 188 countries in terms of women representation in parliament, according to the latest IPU report. This is the highest number ever achieved in the Philippine Senate. We also discuss misinformation and fake news. We had discussions on education regarding the quality of education and the challenges during COVID and climate change. Again, the details are in my report, Your Honor. During the forum on women parliamentarians, we discussed a resolution entitled Legislation Worldwide to Combat Online Child Sexual Exploitation and Abuse from a Gender Perspective. I joined two meetings that discussed the following. One on child exploitation. I shared reports that confirmed cases of online child exploitation in the Philippines where children are being sexually exploited by adults within their own households. On abuse from a gender perspective, I decided to share an interesting reality in the Philippines, wherein we have millions of mothers, women and mothers who leave the country to make a living and serve as nurses, doctors, and household helps in other countries, in other homes, the effect of which is that they leave their own families behind. And this has had repercussions that will for generations have to be dealt with. During the meeting on the Standing Committee on the United Nations Affairs, we discussed the global vaccination campaign to end COVID, the COVID-19 pandemic. I mentioned in my intervention how the Philippine Senate has been instrumental in engaging our government on the adequate procurement and prompt delivery of vaccines and ensuring enough budget for COVID-19 vaccines. To stress the importance of vaccine equity, I highlighted that we continue to prioritize our healthcare workers for vaccination and financial protection given that they are put in high-risk situations at the forefront of the battle against the virus. During the discussion of a resolution on an emergency item, the IPU member parliaments unanimously backed the African group's resolution, which calls for global parliamentary support for vaccine equity in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. During the high-level advisory group discussion on counter, countering terrorism and violent extremism, I initially expressed my intention to vie for the vacant position at the IPU's high-level advisory group as one of the representatives of the Asia-Pacific group. I have had the opportunity to, stud, to engage in security studies, that's my interest in this matter. However, during the assembly, the, this representation was approached by the Honorable Eva Abdullah, Deputy Speaker of the People's, Ma the People's Maglis, the Parliament of Maldives, who sought our support in her bid for the same position. She recounted her country as well as her own experiences on the surge of extremism ideas and actions in the Maldives, which included death threats on their speaker and herself. I felt that the proper thing to do, Your Honor, was to give way and support the deputy speaker for the aforementioned position. She was very thankful for this um, initiative on our part and committed to also support us in future, um, in, in future endeavors. This representation likewise had bilateral side meetings with the Honorable Mira Al-Sualdi, member of the UAE Federal National Council and a ranking member of the IPU's Bureau of Women Parliamentarians. Also with Senator Gabriel Cuevas Baron of Mexico, the immediate past president of the IPU, and the Secretary General of the Parliamentary Forum on Small Arms and Light Weapons, Ms. Karine Olofsson, who I had met in 2018 in another conference. I also had the opportunity, Your Honor, to visit the exhibit of national artist Kidlat Tahimik. He was showcasing Philippine history at the Palacio de Cristal in Madrid, Spain, something we can be very, very proud of. 
In closing, I thank you, Mr. President, for giving me the opportunity to represent the Senate of the Philippines and express our views on various important issues. I remain a supporter of global affiliation and continue to learn from colleagues across the globe who encounter similar concerns that we have in the Philippines. Our participation in the IPU Assembly is important now more than ever, considering that learning from each other and working together is vital in our survival from the COVID-19 pandemic and other future public health interests. With that, I thank you again, Your Honor, and I will submit this speech and my newsletter to every office of our colleagues. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you very much, thank you very much Mr. President. I would like to thank uh, the distinguished lady senator from Taguig for the report, and indeed it uh, professionalizes most of our uh, trips, uh, official trips that we go to, and it's a welcome uh, development, and we should emulate that, Mr. President. Thank you very much, my dear colleague. With that, Mr. President, moving forward, um, I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill Number 2365. Any objection? Any consideration is in order. This is the PDIC Charter Amendments. We're in the period of amendments, Mr. President. We'd like to recognize our distinguished colleague, Senator Sunny Angara, for the amendments and together with our colleagues who wish to propose and propound amendments. Senator Sunny Angara has recognized the period of amendments. Thank you, Mr. President. I think uh, if we go line by line, uh, I think only Senator Recto has uh, indicated a wish to propose an amendment on page 14. Uh, if there are no anterior amendments uh, from our colleagues, Mr. President. All right. So you mean page by page? There yes. are no amendments from page 1 to page 14. Uh, then uh, we can proceed. Yeah, Senator, Senator uh, Ralph, if he's online, Ralph. he can uh, propound it, or I can also read his uh, amendment if he wishes. Yeah, with the permission of the Senate President, I did submit uh, our proposed amendments. I think there are two only to Senator Angara, and uh, if that is okay with him, I do not have a copy of the amendment page by page. But yes, we did submit it to uh, the office of Senator Angara. I, I can read it out, Your Honor, uh, to the distinguished Senate President Pro Temp. Mr. Ahead, President, yes. That's all right with him? Yes, that's fine. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, on line 14, uh, this is uh, section, uh, um, line 12, rather, of page 14. Mm. Uh, for the new, the seven section 7A of the PDC, PDIC Charter shall now read uh, on... Uh, on line 16, after before that sentence, the semi-annual assessment, it shall mm -hmm. read, the Board of Directors shall consider a mechanism that adjusts the assessment rate depending on the creditworthiness or risk profile of the bank. I so move for that sentence to be inserted there, Mr. President. Yes, on line 16. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Uh, and on... Uh, Mr. President, I think it's easier if I just read the new section rather than go, is that all right? Can I just read the new section proposed by Senator Recto? I think it's easier. Well, you're talking of Section 7? 7A, Your Honor, Mr. President. 7A. Uh, why don't you just delete Section 7? Yeah. A. May I move to delete uh, Section 7A as as read as it reads now in the committee report? And, Until uh, page 15, uh, num let, uh, number 8. Line 8, are you doing that? I, I'm sorry, Section 6, rather, of our version. I'm sorry for the confusion, yeah. Mr. President. Section 6 of our version. Page you 14. are deleting that from line 12 all the way to what line? Uh, all the way to... Uh, line 8 of page 15 or line 2 of page 15? All the way up to line 2 of page 15, Your Honor. Line two, page fifteen. Okay, what is the? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Right. All the way to line eight. I'm sorry, Mr. President. All the way to line eight. Okay, you yes, will, yes. will proceed with the, the that is uh, deleted, and you were going to propose the entire amendment. Go ahead. Yes, read thank it. you, Mr. President. It shall now read the as follows, Your Honors, Mr. President. The assessment rate shall be determined by the board of directors, provided that the assessment rate shall not exceed one fifth of one percent centum per annum. The Board of Directors shall consider a mechanism that adjusts the assessment rate depending on the creditworthiness or risk profile of the bank. The Board of Directors shall establish the risk-based assessment system and impose a commensurate 
risk-based adjust, adjusted assessment rate per annum per bank period. The adjusted assessment rate shall be determined to ensure the sustainability of the corporation while at the same time rationalizing the financial burden on banks. A new paragraph, the assessment of each insured bank shall be determined by multiplying the adjusted annual assessment rate with the assessment base, but in no case shall the assessment be less than 5,000 pesos in words and figures. New paragraph, the assessment base shall be the amount of the liability of the bank for deposits based on the total sum insured of the bank, semicolon, provided that the operating expense requirements of the corporation shall be distinguished from the calculated risk pool of the bank and excluded from the calculation of the assessment base period. Sum insured is the amount of money that the corporation is obligated to cover in the event of bank closures. New paragraph, in case there will be an increase of maximum insured deposit, the PDIC board shall have the authority to adjust the assessment rate for banks taking into consideration the current economic conditions and the adequacy and sustainability of the deposit insurance fund. The corporation and the board of directors shall ensure and endeavor to maintain transparency under all possible conditions in the way of conducting all of the foregoing activities under Section 7A. Uh, that's the end of the new uh, proposed uh, paragraph, section Mr. Six. President. I so move. The new, the new Section 6. Uh, the new Section 6, yes, Mr. President. Yes, therefore, yes, that is replacing line 12 all the way to line 7 of page 15, all right? Yes, Mr. President. All right. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, the, the next and the last amendment is on page uh, 21. No amendments on page 16 up to no, none, page uh, 20. 16 to 20, Your Honor. 20, all right. If there are no amendments, page yeah. 21. Uh, this is on line 6. After the word corporation, to insert the following phrase and the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Uh, on the same page, page 21, Mr. President, on line 6, to delete the word its and replace with the word there, T-H-E-I-R, there. So move, there. Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, no other amendments from our colleagues for the rest of the bill. Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. President, before that, if I may. Yes, Senator Recto, go ahead. Yes, I'd just like to thank the uh, Chairman of the Committee, the sponsor of this measure, for accepting our amendment. Thank you very much. Uh, Most Mr. welcome President. to our uh, distinguished Senate President Pro Tem. Always welcome uh, amendments from him, Your Honor, Mr. President. Thank you. Majority Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, with that, I move to close the period of amendments. Any objection? Hearing none, period of amendments closed. Mr. President, move to approve on second reading House Senate Bill number 2365. Any objection? Hearing none, Senate Bill 235 is approved on second reading. Yes, Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader Thank you. and our colleagues. Thank you. Thank you. Move to suspend considerations. Consideration is suspended. Mr. President, uh, next on the agenda is uh, the Malawi compensation. I move that we consider Senate Bill number 2420. 2420. Any objection? Hearing none. Consideration is in order. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, but before I recognize the sponsor, I'm also a principal author of this. We're appealing to our colleagues. It's the winding down of this administration. And uh, the fact of the matter is, when you go to Marawi and Donald mm. Tour, many of our uh, Kababayans there are still without homes. They still have no uh, uh, way of being able to uh, renovate and uh, rebuild the homes that were destroyed during the siege. And they really earnestly uh, appeal to us to help them with this compensation fund. And uh, we also appeal to our colleagues that uh, it's not—it's a very small amount. It's not a large amount. And it's really uh, to uh, give social justice as well to those, unfortunately, who are victims of uh, uh, the terrorism that uh, had taken siege of Marawi City. So with that, as an opening statement, Mr. President, may you recognize Senator Sunny Angara uh, to sponsor the measure, and we don't have any uh, one actually listed to interpolate. Uh, but we'd like to recognize the sponsor if he has anything else. Senator Saliangara is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. I just uh, would like to second everything the distinguished majority leader said. And uh, I see Senator De La Rosa, who is the chair 
of the Marawi compensation and uh, uh, Senator Bongo, between the three of them, they really are the ones pushing for this bill. And I am uh, just a messenger, Your Honor, and hopefully I will be able to answer. Of course, Senator Risa, I forgot. I see her also online. She's also very uh, adamant in pushing this bill. She has a few amendments that she will propose. Uh, Mr. President, I see the minority leader uh, raising yes. his hand. Perhaps she has some questions. Senator uh, Rilon, the minority leader, is recognized. Uh, we, uh, thank you, Mr. President. And uh, if the good sponsor can yield uh, uh, to, uh, the floor to a few, offer a few questions, uh, we are in support of the measure. Uh, indeed, uh, the rehabilitation of uh, Marawi uh, uh, because of this uh, that unfortunate episode is something that uh, is due to our brethren and uh, in, in, to our brothers and sisters in Muslim in the now. Um, but may I ask, will the bill, the bill, I, since it is principally uh, budgetary uh, uh, bill, in other mm -hmm. words, uh, the, the bottom line is that we must appropriate funds. Uh, would the funds, I assume the funds will be, st will be included uh, in the General Appropriations Act, uh, and that uh, for the General Appropriations Act of 2023. Is that a correct uh, assessment, uh, conclusion, sir? Uh, that's correct, Your Honor. The, the appropriations provision uh, just provides reference to the General Appropriations Bill. So uh, there is no specific appropriation for uh, uh, the compensation board, but there is a item for Marawi compensation under the disaster fund. If I'm not mistaken, uh, that that is that has been there since uh, uh, a few years ago. So uh, for 2023, of course, we will uh, we will work on that going forward, uh, Your Honor, Mr. President. Uh, yeah, just so the the, the the our constituency might be uh, misled into believing that there is already an appropriation in this matter. That is not the case. Yeah, is that correct, sir? No, no. It, it's uh, like our other legislation. Uh, it is not uh, self-contained uh, in that sense. No, it's always referring to the uh, the GAA, Mr. President. Yes, um, yes. So uh, the the uh, this serves as the legal basis for the appropriation in the General Appropriations Act for two thousand, say for two thousand twenty-three, uh, and the subsequent years. Is that correct, sir? Just for the record, that would be correct, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. That's uh, that's all the clarificatory questions I would wish to raise for the record. Thank you very much to our distinguished uh, minority leader. Minority leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Yes, I'd like to thank the minority leader. When I called him about this measure, he said uh, the the people there uh, also deserve this compensation uh, measure, and we'd like to thank him. Uh, uh, for that, for his support of this measure, Mr. President. Uh, with that, I move to close the period of interpolation. Any objection? Hearing that period of interpolation is closed. Mr. President, I move to open the period of amendments and recognize our colleagues for amendments. Senator Ngara is recognized for any amendments. Uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, if it's uh, all right with Senator Risa, we've already, I think, uh, our staff have already discussed her amendments. Does she want me to read them or she she's free to read them and I can accept them uh, as we go along? It's it's her pleasure, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, originally, I was uh, earlier going to interpolate, pero dahil napaka gracioso po ng sponsor uh, to make way for some of my proposed amendments, hindi ko na po ituloy. So good sponsor, if uh, uh, you could uh, read uh, my proposed amendments as part of your committee amendments, I would be grateful. Yes, certainly. Salamat, certainly. Mr. President. And we thank uh, the lady from uh, Panay for her uh, help on this bill. I, I have no doubt uh, her amendments are, imp are improving the measure filed by the majority leader and Senator Bato and Senator Go. Thank you, uh, Your Honor. So if I can begin, Mr. President, uh, the first amendment is on page five after line seven to insert a new paragraph to read as follows. The heirs of those who died and are and legally presumed dead are also entitled to compensation in accordance with the requirements under this act, its implementing rules and regulations, and other applicable laws, rules, and regulations. So moved, Mr. President. Any objection? It is not adopted. 
Uh, next, Mr. President, on page 6, after line 4, to insert a new paragraph to read as follows. The Bangsamoro government and the national government shall ensure the protection of the rights of the victims of the siege and undertake programs for their rehabilitation and development. Period. The Bangsamoro government, in coordination with the national government, the local government units where these IDPs are located and the appropriate national government agencies, shall ensure continued access to livelihood assistance, skills and training programs, loan assistance, and other related activities to assist the recovery of lost income streams of businesses affected by the Marawi siege. Uh, I so move, Mr. President. An objection. It is not adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, mm -hmm. On page 6, line 8, after the word compensation to insert the following sentences to read as follows. The OCD, in coordination with the TFBM, shall update the PCNA report within three months after the effectivity of this act for purposes of assessing the degree of damage and present the actual or estimated valuation of such damage to each structure caused by the siege and implementation of MRRP, period. In updating the PCNA report, the agency should also consider additional information from the post-siege social cartography activities of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources and information on the damages and losses incurred from areas that have become accessible only after the mitigation of security threats. New paragraph, the updated PCNA report shall produce information to be used in assessing replacement cost for residential and commercial structures programming housing sector interventions commensurate to the updated needs and in designating livelihood asset restoration and assistance projects roughly proportionate to the losses. Uh, so moved, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on page 6, after line 12, to insert a new subsection D and E to read as follows. D in consonance with the compensation provisions of RA number 10752, structure owners who built on land not belonging to them or on land being claimed by other parties shall also be compensated for the damage sustained as a result of the siege, provided that unresolved disputes as to the true owners of the land shall not affect the entitlement to compensation of owners of structures damaged or demolished during the siege and as a result of post-siege actions of the government, period. Letter E, compensation for land and or damaged or demolished structures under this act and under RA number 10752 shall not disqualify persons from participating in the government socialized housing programs. For the purpose of this section, all government programs for which corresponding benefits have been granted to the claimants shall be deducted for the total amount of compensation to be awarded under this act. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Santa Teresa. On page 7, line 4, to delete the word and. So move. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. On page 7 as well, on line 7, to delete... to delete the uh, quotation marks and replace and insert the word and, Mr. President. Hmm? Page 7? Page 7, line 7. Wala well, namang quotation marks na. What version are you looking at? Uh, <laughs> I'm just reading what was given to me, Mr. President, so I'm a little uh, confused also. Page 7, line 7, is of law for at least five years in words and numbers. Uh, just give me one second, Mr. President. Sessions delete the period, delete the period. Delete the period. Delete the period and? Replace with uh, the word and. All right. Uh, so move, Mr. President. All right. Any objection? Adopted. Uh, because uh, you're doing the letter D. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Anything else? On the same page yeah. 7, after line 7, to insert a new subsection D. 
to read as follows. To D, two representatives of civil society organizations, at least one of whom is either a Sharia lawyer or a Muslim traditional leader. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, on page 9, line 16, after the oh. word COA, to insert the phrase, three years from the time it was organized, and a final special audit. So moved, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. On uh, Ninth Amendment, Mr. President, thank you. On page 10, line 1, after the word siege, to insert the phrase, and the heirs of those who died and are legally presumed dead. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. On page 13, after line 6, to insert a new paragraph to read as follows. To protect the interests of claimants whose compensation has not been awarded without their fault, the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development shall continue to exercise the powers and functions of the board to disburse and process any and all pending compensation due to qualified claimants pursuant to the criteria set by the board, period. For this purpose, the assets, properties, and funds of the board shall be transferred to the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Anything not adopted? Uh, Mr. President, uh, on page one, going back, this is the, I think this is the short title, if I'm not mistaken, uh, to delete the figure 2021 in line two of page one and replace it with 2022. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Uh, Mr. President, uh, now we go to the title of the bill on page one. Uh, after the word properties, to insert the phrase and loss of life in the title. I so move, Mr. President. Loss of lives. Uh, yes, that, that, that is uh, an improvement. Mr. President, thank you. All right. And loss of lives as a result. Okay. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Thank you, Mr. President. That, that is, uh, those are the amendments of Senator Risa, and we thank her once more for uh, her diligence in. Uh, in uh, proposing these amendments and in her concern for our uh, our mga uh, kababayans of Senator Bato, Senator Migs in Mindanao. Uh, salamat po uh, sa kanya. And Senator Coco, of course, also. Majority Leader. Alhamdulillah, Mr. President. Praise be to God. Uh, we're so happy for the people of uh, Marawi. We passed this today. We thank all our colleagues, together with Senator Marcos, who was with us in that hearing, together with that's Senator right, Bongo. That's right, that's yes, right. Senator, Senator Marcos, Senator Joel, Senator Sherwin, Senator, Senator Nancy. Senator Joel, Senator Sherwin, Senator Nancy. Uh, of course, Senator Bato, who led the panel. Senator, Bato, Senator Go. Senator Go was also instrumental. Bongo, Senator Bongo. And uh, we'd like to thank all of them. And um, inshallah, we can find this law. Uh, properly uh, implemented by the national government. We really like to thank them, Mr. President. It, it, you know, I was the one, if you're not, if you can remember, Mr. President, I was the one who went up to your podium when I was the first to hear about the Marawi siege. Mm -hmm. When there were pictures being sent to me by my colleagues and friends in Marawi of armed men coming in, I remember that day very clearly. Yes. That was at four o'clock in the afternoon. I had whispered to your ear and I said, boss, Nagkakagulo sa Marawi, there are bandits and uh, uh, Abu Sayyaf and uh, terrorists that have Jamaya Islamiya taking over. So, Mr. President, uh, if I may, sir, with the permission of the majority leader, I'd also like to remind people that uh, the majority leader is the father of the Bangsamoro bill. So, we this explains his uh, deep concern for our kababayans in Marawi. Thank you very much, Senator Sani. That is absolutely correct. It is the reason why we push the Bangsamoro organic law because of the siege, because we saw that if we do not address the concerns of social justice, of a, a just and lasting peace, this would happen in other cities. This could have happened in also in, in Zamboanga City, other cities later on, if we do not address the concerns of our brother and sister Muslims in Mindanao. And uh, I thank our dear colleagues who are all here today. They're all online, they're with us. And uh, because of the siege uh, and the uh, the, the big uh, issue on terrorism, 
we all pull together as one uh, one uh, body, the Senate, both uh, minority and majority without any political color to pass, I would say, one of the more difficult measures that this chamber has passed, but I would say one of the best that we have passed because we have put so many uh, uh, game changers, uh, particularly on the uh, management and the uh, uh, governance of the Muslim, uh, autonomous Muslim regions of Mindanao. And to be honest about it, I think they're doing a very good job. Uh, I was told that uh, it's for the first time, maraming pera daw yung barm, hindi katulad ng dati sa arm, mabilis maubos yung pera. Paglabas ng pondo, labas ka agad. Ito, maraming pera dahil ingat po sila gumastos. They're very careful about spending it. They're very careful about people's uh, uh, images of them on, uh, on their uh, reputation. And uh, right now, I've seen in many of my colleagues and my the members of parliament there, the, the pages are filled with projects uh, being built, uh, municipal buildings, daycare centers, health centers. Gone were the days where only the beautiful building was owned by the mayor and the uh, politician, and everybody else were living in shacks. Now, there are very uh, uh, major, several projects being built uh, in these areas. So I'm going to move now, Mr. President, uh, to close the period of amendments. And I thank all our colleagues. Uh, any objection? Hearing none, period of amendments closed. Just curious, is there any uh, counterpart bill in the House of Representatives? We'd like uh, to yes, ask Mr. Senator. President, I think it, it has passed already. Oh. Very good. Thank you very much, Mr. President. So uh, with that, I move to approve on second reading. Senate Bill number 2420. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none. Senate Bill 2420 is approved on second reading. Congratulations po at mabuhay po ang Marawi City. Hopefully, they can move forward. Thank you very much, Senator Ngara, Senator Bato de la Rosa, Senator Risa de Veros, Senator Coco Pimentel, Senator Villar, our uh, Senator Joel Villanueva, Senator Tolentino was with us also in the trip, if I can remember. And of course, our dear ma ma uh, Minority Floor Leader. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader, and to our dearest colleagues. Salamat po. Salamat po. Moving forward, Mr. President, uh, another measure for uh, the sponsorship of Senator Pimentel. If we may, we can do a couple of... Uh, Okay, we can do uh, a couple of interpolators, uh, if uh, we may, Mr. President, because we have a long uh, agenda. Uh, we now like to resume consideration proposed Senate Resolution Number 960. This is on the RCEP. Any objection? Hearing none. Uh, 963 is in order. Thank you very much. I just got a message from Senator Villanueva that he, if he can be put in the last part of the uh, interpolators. So therefore, I move that we recognize Senator Risa Ontiveros to interpolate and to sponsor a distinguished colleague from Cagandi Auto Center, Coco Pimentel the first. Senator Coco Pimentel is recognized to continue in um, sponsoring the measure, and Senator uh, Hontiveros is recognized to uh, interpolate. Salamat po, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Mr. President. Good sponsor, would you kindly allow me to interpolate uh, this important measure? Yes, of course, uh, Mr. President, and just as I've uh, stated uh, uh, regarding the previous interpolator, I will try my best to, <laughs> to respond. Dagan salamat, uh, good sponsor, uh, for allowing me to uh, ask you questions, the good sponsor questions on this important measure. I'd just like to state for the record at the outset, Mr. President, that these questions and concerns are questions and concerns that I raise on behalf of various stakeholders, especially agricultural and farmers groups, also labor groups and other stakeholders. So, una una sa lahat, uh, good sponsor, I really find it um, very concerning that virtually all agricultural groups in the Philippines have opposed RCEP. Mula po sa mga maliliit na magsasaka, Hanggang pa sa mga big players na mga agri-groups. May I ask for the record if we have consulted uh, these groups? Mm, kasi po in a letter that we received uh, 20th this month, January 2022, uh, sinulat po ni Dr. Ernie Ordonez ng Alianza Agricultura 
that government agencies were asked to identify the possible threats of RCEP, but uh, this request, this question, was not responded to. Hindi kaya naging mas prudent kung na-identify muna yung mga threats na to bago tayo mag-proceed sa ratification, good sponsor. Uh, uh, to respond to the first part of the uh, question, uh, I conducted a lot of, uh, as the chairman of the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, I, con I conducted uh, quite a number of hearings uh, on this measure, uh, Mr. President. That's why it took us uh, time also to come up with the committee report and then file it. Uh, uh, three hearings according to the uh, committee secretary. And I in fact scheduled, upon special request of Mr. Ordonez himself, I scheduled a committee hearing uh, in a special format where I allowed uh, uh, debate uh, or a direct exchange uh, between uh, between the uh, proponents of the treaty representing the executive branch led by the DTI, of course, and uh, uh, agriculture, the Department of Agriculture was also present, and uh, the oppositors, or those who have some reservations. Hindi naman kasi, some are not really uh, outright against the agreement, they just have some reservations. So uh, I did all of this, and uh, I was hoping that the the issues would have been uh, clarified, and uh, because I think the 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 exchange uh, the exchanges, even in the formal hearing in the three hearings, were I think uh, 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 clear, comprehensive, sometimes repetitive uh, already. So. So I do not I do not know uh, uh, what what fears uh, our farmers from the big organizations all all the way to the small farmers still have even after the interaction now with the uh, executive branch uh, proponents of the treaty, Mr. President. Salamat po, good sponsor. Uh, we will go into those still abiding. Uh, fears and reservations um, in my uh, next few questions. And tama po yung sinabi, Mr. President, ng good sponsor na hindi lahat 100% tumututo sa RCEP, but at the very least ay humihingi ng dagdag na panahon pa, makapaghanda, lalo na po yung ating agricultural and other uh, rural sectors para lang ipakita kung gaano sila karisonable in considering our country's possible uh, or imminent ratification uh, of this uh, this uh, agreement and i would dare say also good sponsor na hindi yung good sponsor ang nagkukulang dito sa ating mga agricultural groups uh, dahil sabi nga nila nag uh, nag uh, tawag ng several hearings including at least one in the special format pero i would guess na yung frustration talaga ng ating mga agricultural stakeholders ay doon sa mga government agencies natin i think at least i will leave this question uh, at that no to state for the record na pakiramdam talaga po ng ating mga maliliit at malalaking, including pinakamalalaking agricultural groups na hindi pa completely at hindi pa um, maybe hindi pa fully forthright yung ating mga government agencies in identifying yung mga threats, particularly sa agrikultura sa atin, pagsasaka, pangingisda, at iba pa. Moving to my next question, uh, good sponsor, Yung main benefit uh, na for developing countries like the Philippines, no? mula dito sa free trade agreements, tulad nitong Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership o yung RCEP, nandun po yun sa goods chapter, no? yung tungkol sa increasing our exports. Pero meron pong at least isang calculation, uh, ginagamit mismo yung World Bank methodology ng actual liberalization required by the RCEP, na kwenta po ng calculation na ito that the Philippines goods trade balance would 
if we ratify RCEP, lalo na if we ratify RCEP now and not possibly later, it would actually worsen. Yung balance of trade natin would worsen by 264 million US dollars per year. Kasi ang mangyayari pala, Mr. Good Sponsor, na yung imports natin, lalaki. Lalaki ng mas malaki kesa sa uh, paglaki ng exports natin. Kung i-ratify natin ngayon ang RCEP. And we would also permanently lose 58 million US dollars per year in tariff revenue. Ito po ay galing sa isang peer-reviewed study published ng Global Economic Governance Initiative na ang pamagat ay RCEP, Goods Market Access Implications for the ASEAN. Alam niyo, good sponsor, nung kinompute ng mabilis nung staff ko, yung 58 million US dollars per year na mawawala sa atin in tariff revenue, that would be enough to pay, for example, for the salaries of more than 17,000 nurses. Ano pong tingin nyo uh, dito? Yung imminent na pag ng ating balance of trade kung i-ratify natin ngayon ang RCEP? Uh, there are, well, uh, I am sure uh, that study cited by the good senator exists, but there are, there yes. are also other studies uh, cited by the DTI, uh, particularly, and, and he appeared uh, before our committee hearings, uh, Dr. Cororaton, uh, mm -hmm. which gave us uh, favorable uh, figures, not as dismal as the study cited by our honor. And uh, the spirit of uh, a free trade agreement actually is uh, a give and take, diba? parang give and take, uh, op uh, open your market and I will also open my market. Uh, and in the opening up of my market, of course, I lower or I eliminate some tariffs. But so, so the lessening of uh, tariff collections would be a mm. necessary uh, consequence but then that that should be made up for by the be overall benefits of the agreement uh, i can access your market itong your dito there are 14 other countries po, uh, 14 other markets so one so uh, income for my exporters uh, because of the services chapter maybe some some can some professionals or uh, uh, workers can also get employed in those uh, 14 other markets. Uh, the investments uh, that we may be able to attract because of the uh, desire to access the markets of the 15 countries. Uh, so, so ganun po yun. Uh, uh, it's really a, uh, it's really, it's really a uh, give and take. But then we all, but. I repeat that there is also a study which does not give such uh, dismal figures, uh, Mr. President. At, so, uh, projections po ito, ah. so study. So, I cannot say that the study cited by uh, Centro Antiveros will be the one which will be proven correct by future events. Hindi rin natin masabi that the study of Dr. Cororaton will be the one. So, but uh, let's just look at the overall uh, benefit of the agreement uh it's a mega it's a mega area uh 30 percent of the world's population taking the first step to be an integrated uh, market first step lang first step uh, to integrate the market uh those who want to access that market may locate in the philippines so investors na po yun, jobs taxes uh, which can make up for the computed uh, lost uh, tariff in the study cited by her owner. Sige po, uh, good sponsor, uh, Mr. President. Um, tingnan pa natin yung overall benefits or yung supposed overall benefits. Tama naman po kayo, good sponsor. Hindi natin ma-predict 100% in future, pero pwede rin natin tignan yung nakaraan, mga president, halimbawa, kung gaano nagworsen yung balance of trade natin pagkatapos halimbawa pumasok tayo sa GATT WTO or kung ilang uh, jobs ang na-shed 
hindi na likha, hindi na idagdag pagkatapos natin pumasok noon sa GATT WTO. Yan siguro yung pinakomparable na mega trade agreement tulad dito sa RCEP na kinoconsider natin ngayon. Sige po, pag-usapan pa po natin yung supposed overall benefits. Mm, and in particular, good sponsor, in fact, hindi ba totoo na kahit hindi pa natin i-ratify ang RCEP, kahit hindi pa natin ngayon i-ratify ang RCEP, we would actually still continue to trade as we are trading today. Baka wala naman talagang bagong idadagdag ang RCEP. We can already export to all other RCEP countries under the WTO rules and also under our existing free trade agreements that we already have with all other RCEP countries. Uh, at yung iba ay medium-sized agreements na rin. No? Yung ASEAN-Japan, Comprehensive Economic Partnership Agreement, yung JPEPA, yung Japan-Philippines Economic Partnership Agreement. Dagdag pa po dito, good sponsor, yung mga ibang RCEP countries tulad ng Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, actually tinagal na po nila lahat ng tariffs nila sa mga produkto galing sa atin under existing FDA, FTA. So, under RCEP, we would actually not get any new market access to them. Kasi yung existing FTAs already give us that. Kumbaga, walang bagong idadagdag yung RCEP. Kung kailangan natin ng cheap imports ng mga raw materials at saka inputs for manufacturing, pwede naman nating voluntarily tanggalin yung tariffs sa mga produktong iyon kung kailangan natin, again, without having to join RCEP to do so. No? Napag-isipan na ba natin mabuti ang cost-benefit analysis para dito? Uh, yes, yes, uh, Mr. President. No? Uh, uh, this was studied very well. Uh, aside from Dr. Cororaton, uh, nakakalimutan ko lang yung pangalan, na uh, the PIDs also uh, gave a presentation, the PIDS, and uh, the terms of the RCEP have been uh, negotiated for more than 80 years. So, ganun na po katagal ito na didiscuss, napapag-aralan. And, uh, kasi natanong ko rin yung tanong mo eh, uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Madam, <laughs> Madam uh, Senator. At uh, maganda nga yung, uh, the rules of origin is, is, is a uh, good concept that we should uh, understand. Uh, for example, uh, ASEAN plus 1 FTA. Existing na po yan. Na, mamili na tayo. ASEAN plus Japan FTA. Uh, rules of origin. Uh, ano? JPEPA na lang. JPEPA. Japan-Philippines uh, Economic Partnership Agreement. Okay. Mm -hmm. Rules of origin uh, will say uh, require that the goods must be made in the Philippines to qualify for the tariff commitment under the agreement with Japan. But with this uh, RCEP, maganda yung rules of origin dito eh. Uh, the sourcing, lumaki na po. I mean, uh, 15 countries, the Philippines can source raw materials and other components from the other RCEP countries, come up with a product, meron yata ang formula po, a eh, 40% uh, uh, re, RVC uh, RVC I will just ask the meaning of RVC regional uh, value content yata, but a 40% mm -hmm. if we qualify for that as long as that is met then then that is made in RCEP or made in the Philippines that product can be can now avail of the tariff liberalized tariff rates under the agreement. So, lumaki na po. I mean, that's one benefit. Lumaki na po yan. For the, for the imaginative uh, entrepreneurs, the practical, pragmatic entrepreneurs, uh, they can take advantage of this one. Regional, uh, RVC is regional value content pala. Okay. So, that's one, that's one, that's one example, ma'am, that, uh, uh, or Mr. President, that even though we have existing uh, FTAs already, the RCEP is an improvement. So, it's a, it's a rules, on, rules, rules, on, uh, rules on origin. And then number two, there were additional, there were additional concessions actually made. So, some, 
some opened up new new tariff lines some uh, decreased further the tariff rate and some committed that uh, the, some tariffs will be brought down all the way to zero after a certain period of time uh, like 20 years mahaba haba pong agreement ito that's why uh, beneficial and positive effects might be felt not immediately but in the long run uh, mr president so importante din po good sponsor mr president yung matter of time na yon kung yung uh, supposed benefits ay hindi kaagad at mas matagal bago mararamdaman and in the meantime yung mga existing FTAs natin yung mga existing economic partnerships agreement natin pre RCEP would continue to operate anyway so kumbaga hindi hindi game changer, hindi naman magiging game changer ang RCEP para sa atin in terms of facilitating free trade uh, between our country and other RCEP member countries or within our region. So, But that's just the benefit side of the cost-benefit analysis na tingin ko mas kompleto pa nating uh, titignan. On the cost side, dito po pumapasok iyong mga abiding concerns, even fears, uh, ng lalo na ng ating mga agricultural at iba pang rural organizations. Kaya uh, hindi talaga sila sang-ayon na mag-concur tayo dito sa RCEP, at least for now, no, na may mga nag-iisip na baka mas mabuting may konti pa tayong or merong pa tayong panahon makapaghanda uh, ang sektor. And we would not be the only country to do this, Mr. President. The large democracy, the large economy of India ay nag-defer din sa pagpasok sa RCEP. So, and on, on some similar grounds as I am proposing to the good sponsor today, Mr. President. Dito po, sa cost side nitong RCEP na to, ayon po kay... Uh, uh, ka Leonardo Leoni Montemayor ng Federation of Free Farmers and I quote, the advocacy to promote RCEP and to highlight its benefits in terms of market access opportunities conveniently downplays, if not deliberately conceals, one crucial caveat that any tariff concession from our trading partners under RCEP will not be exclusive to the Philippines and will in fact be available to all other RCEP member country. So this means but, that there is no guarantee that we will be able to avail of and benefit from such opportunities, especially if competing countries who are also part of RCEP are more competitive, dependable, and efficient than us. So ito talaga yung isang malaking uh, alalahanin ng ating rural, including agricultural sectors. Kasi hindi pa tayo kasing competitive, dependable, efficient sa agrikultura kumpara sa ibang uh, RCEP member countries. At pwede tayong ma-harm uh, ng pagpasok sa RCEP sa ngayon. So ano po yung mga kaisipan nyo tungkol dito, good sponsor? Uh, yung existing ano kasi natin, uh, Mr. President, uh, free trade agreements, generally is the ASEAN plus one. Uh, diba? So, Hindi talaga exclusive naman din sa atin yung concessions. Uh, and then let's, let us not expect na ganun po ang treatment sa Pilipinas na parati tayong uh, special na exclusive lang sa atin. Let's, let us uh, learn to compete with uh, fair rules equally, equally applicable to all similarly situated. Uh, pero ganito kasi eh. Uh, we have we have highlighted you know in all the hearings this uh, philippine exclusion list uh this is the list of agricultural products as well as industrial go goods where we made no tariff commitment ibig sabihin nun, no change when compared to what we have right now, no change when compared to the status quo as far as tariffs are concerned. So I hope that the uh, the farmers, the players in the agricultural sector will take a look 
at this exclusion list which we have uh, highlighted no? in 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 all the hearings we have brought this up in all the hearings so that they they will see uh, the agricultural products where the philippines has not made any tariff commitment so kung nandun po yung produkto sa listahan na yon expect no change as far as tariffs are concerned so what are the rules now what are the rates now that will continue so so i i i hope that is uh, uh relayed to the uh, agricultural sector and that they study also the exclusion list yes mr president good sponsor mukang uh, inaral talaga nilang uh, masusi yung exclusion list at kaya hanggang sa araw na ito ay tumututol pa rin sila na pumasok na tayo ngayon sa RCEP uh, precisely because uh, hindi covered sa exclusion list yung mga produktong uh, inaani or hinuhuli nila they are not uh, they are not covered by those uh, by those exclusions at uh, palagay ko hindi ito paghihingi ng special treatment or uh, exclusion from the rules of uh, global trade kasi kita naman ng ating mga agricultural at other rural sectors na kahit nga yung mga pinaka-developed na economies na nasa loob na ng RCEP, uh, if I remember correctly, Japan, uh, Australia at isa pa, is it South Korea, is, uh, ay na, nakabilang sa pinaka-protectionist ng mga ekonomiya sa mundo when it comes to their own uh, agriculture. At uh, kaya reasonable pa rin at hindi unreasonable para hingin uh, ng ating agricultural sector, ang ating rural sectors, ng kahit dagdag na panahon pa ng proteksyon at suporta para makapaghanda talaga for real uh, competition or competitiveness, dependability, uh, at efficiency. Hindi po makakamit yung mga layuning iyon sa tingin nila uh, at sinasalamin ko yung concerns nila kung ngayon na tayo papasok sa RCEP. Given that so far sa nakikita ko sa ating pag-uusap, Mr. President, good sponsor, eh medyo wala namang napakalaking benefit pa uh, ang ibibigay kumpara sa mga already existing FTAs at economic partnership agreements na meron na tayo at pwedeng lalong saktan yung ating agricultural uh, sector uh, na reeling na nga dahil sa mga iba't ibang issue ng importation, tarification, na hindi pa talaga sila makaabot sa isang malakas uh, na bargaining position kung kaharap ang isang ganitong napipintong agreement na RCEP. Good sponsor, um, yung sunod na tanong ko po. Uh, well, ma'am, ma yeah, pwede, yes, pwede yes, mag-react. Yes, pwede, pwede mag-react. Okay. Apo. Uh, two points, no? Uh, on the importance of uh, RCEP to the Philippines. I will, uh, I will, and then the number, two, uh, the second point I will uh, respond to is the, about the agricultural, the tariff on agricultural products. Uh, I, I have more facts uh, given to me now. So, you know, uh, the, the RCEP is an ASEAN-led free trade agreement. ASEAN po nagumpisa dyan, ASEAN na nakaisip niyan, and made possible only through and because of ASEAN. Uh, China, uh, China, South Korea, and Japan, they do not have uh, uh, free trade agreements between and among themselves. Uh, may, may, I have even seen a report saying that they cannot even... Uh, sit in the same uh, room together but because of ASEAN uh, because of this RCEP they now have a free trade agreement uh, between and among themselves huh? so that is the that is the cruciality of uh, ASEAN uh, and uh, RCEP accounts for 29% of global trade 29% of uh, global GDP and 30% of uh, the world's population. So, if this is market access, that is the market uh, we are talking about. Hindi pa talaga totally integrated market, but you know, uh, the market has agreed on uh, rules, similar rules to be applied to this uh, big market. 
and uh, uh, I think more than or around 50% of our exports, Philippine exports, uh, are destined for RCEP countries. And then more than 50% of our imports come from this RCEP country. So meaning to say, we have been, we are really trading with this, uh, with this uh, RCEP countries. And uh, uh, because of RCEP, we will be closer, we will be made closer to them uh, through trade and uh, the integration in quotation marks of the uh, the market and then uh, RCEP, the RCEP region will also be an important foreign direct investment uh, destination uh, accounting for 33 percent global inward fdi and 47 percent global outward fdi so we're hoping that we will we the philippines will now be an fdi destination uh, not only from RCEP country investors, but from outsiders of the RCEP who want to access now the market made possible by the RCEP, which is 30% uh, of the uh, world's population. And then uh, we can, because of this, we can we can now possibly ride into the global value chain hubs of China, South Korea, and Japan. Because, ano na, uh, Philippine-made products uh, are entitled to the tariff rates under RCEP going into China, South Korea, and Japan. International organizations such as the UNCTAD and the ADB recognize the value of RCEP and the fact that it will boost post-pandemic recovery. The business sector, uh, including foreign chamber organizations, also recognize the value and importance of RCEP. Now, responding to the uh, uh, to the agricultural uh, tariffs uh, mentioned by uh, the good senator. Yes, Mr. President. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I'm just looking for my... Uh, the first slide. Okay, okay. Uh, in the RCEP, ma, 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 Mr. President, my dear colleagues, the Philippines basically, or the Philippines offered only 33 agricultural tariff rates for further liberalization or improvement, and specifically for Australia, New Zealand, China, and South Korea. Compared, if we compare this to the existing ASEAN plus one free trade agreements. So sa 33 agricultural tariff lines lang po tayo medyo masasabi mong nag-liberalize. Uh, this is only equivalent to 1.9%, 1.9% of the total agricultural tariff lines. So, so out of these 33 agricultural tariff lines, 17 tariff lines are raw materials. Eight tariff lines are inputs and only eight tariff lines are final goods. Moreover, the very sensitive agricultural products are excluded from tariff commitment. Yung po yung exclusion list which I mentioned earlier. In fact, for RCEP, more agricultural tariff lines were excluded from tariff commitments vis-a-vis -vis ASEAN Trade in Goods, Goods Agreement, the ATIGA, and the ASEAN Plus One FTAs. Salamat, uh, good sponsor, Mr. President. Regarding uh, pagiging mas attractive natin bilang destination ng foreign direct investments, again, kahit hindi pa natin pasukan yung RCEP sa ngayon, kung i-improve natin yung iba't ibang aspeto ng ating ekonomiya, governance lipunan, ay pwede na tayong maging mas attractive na FDI destination, including with the RCEP member countries na ka-FTA na natin o ka-comprehensive partnership agreement uh, na natin. Pati po yung binanggit ng good sponsor na mga both uh, local and foreign chambers of commerce and industry, uh, kinilala nila yung concern ng ating agricultural and other rural sectors tungkol sa RCEP. Sila rin yung mga chambers of commerce and industry ay nanawagan na bilisan iyong pag, uh, 
paghanda, uh, pagpapalakas ng ating agricultural sector para maging uh, uh, para makayanan yung kompetisyon na bubuksan ng RCEP sa pagitan natin at ng ibang agricultural sector ng ibang mga bansa. So that means good sponsor. Even the Chambers of Commerce and Industry recognize that time is not on the side of the agricultural sector. They will suffer a direct hit kapag pumasok tayo sa RCEP at pumasok tayo sa RCEP sa ngayon. Uh, atin ba silang sasakripisyohin kung ipagkakait sa kanila yung dagdag na panahon makapaghanda? Kung, kung yung India nga nag-defer muna sa pagpasok sa RCEP, hindi ba natin uh, kayang uh, gawin iyon? Uh, baka mas mabuti, uh, good sponsor, makonsider yung pag-defer sa pagpasok sa RCEP para maging mas uh, kaya nating kum uh, makinabang dun sa promised benefits of RCEP at para din kasabay ihanda ang agricultural sector na huwag masyadong mabanatan dun sa cost ng RCEP sa kanila. Uh, hindi natin kayang gawin ito overnight. Uh, alam ko na may urgency na sineset tungkol sa RCEP ngayong Enero. Pero kung yung India nga, nga nakayana niyang mag-defer, hindi ba it would be the better part of wisdom na maglaan pa ng uh, oras, panahon, both to benefit from the supposed benefits of RCEP at saka to prepare, to equip yung magiging loser sa mga sectors natin to withstand that impact and eventually siguro to get more out of something like uh, RCEP. Uh, Mr. President, good sponsor, nabanggit ng good sponsor yung pandemic Ah, uh, yun nga po yung susunod na tanong ko. Uh, it has to can do I react, can Yes. Can I react first? Uh, yes, certainly good sponsor. On the, on the issue of uh, India and what was the other point that I was preparing uh, foreign to foreign investments point. good sponsor. I, I I I think I already answered that that we can okay. be a destination of uh, more foreign direct investments not only from RCEP investors but from outsiders who want to access the market. But as far as India is concerned, no? Uh I have uh, listened to the reasons why uh, Prime Minister Modi uh, mm -hmm. decided not to join. And uh, I, th I think we are differently situated compared, compared to India. In the first place, and I hope the DTI uh, people will uh, correct me if I am wrong, uh, you, I don't think India and uh, China have a uh, free trade agreement because the the fear of the prime minister was that their uh, the indian market will be flooded by cheap uh, chinese goods so eh samantalang ang philippines po through asean plus 1 fta we already have with china so we are already we are already under a uh, liberalized uh, market access relationship with china through the asean plus 1 fta unlike india and then of course uh but that is the stated reason which i have heard that there may be some unstated reasons <laughs> maybe geopolitics maybe a uh, boundary or a border dispute uh, uh maybe there are other reasons uh mr president so so i don't i think it is not uh, uh it is not uh appropriate for us to measure our action based on the action of India. Okay, plus the fact that uh, India is not member of ASEAN and uh, this is an ASEAN project we, uh, which, uh, which highlights the centrality of ASEAN. Well, uh, I will just uh, agree to disagree with the good sponsor on that, Mr. President. Uh, Hindi ko naman sinasabing kapareho tayo ng India sa anumang aspeto kahit sa iba't ibang dahilan na di sila pumapasok pa sa RCEP at binubuksan ko yung posibilidad na mag-defer din muna tayo ng action dito. Ang I think ang relevant lang na punto, Mr. President, ay that each country of course like in the two previous um, treaties that we voted on already, nagdedesisyon po tayo batay sa ating uh, national interest. At wag po tayo matatakot na to miss the bus, ikanga. Uh, yun yung 
naging isang uh, advocacy uh, tungo sa pagpasok sa ARCE. Pero sinasabi din nga ng uh, Federation of Free Farmers, sinasabi din ng Alyansa Agrikultura, ah, bakit naman tayo matatakot to ika nga miss the bus? Kung kailangan tanungin muna natin, eh teka, baka masagasaan naman tayo in some ways na kung sumakay tayo kaagad sa sa bus na iyon, saan ba papunta yung bus? Yung bus ba na yon ang pinaka mabuting paraan makarating tayo sa ating economic objectives at this point uh, in time. So I think instructive pa rin, uh, hindi naman um, alamin and certainly not gayahin ang bawat dahilan ng, ng India, but just to be aware na, well, yung pangalawang pinakamalaking bansa sa mundong ito in terms of population, nakayanan niyang sabihin, o sige, wag na muna tayo papasok dyan, bigyan pa natin ng konting panahon kung ano yung kanilang mga uh, dahilan no, sa pagde-delay na gano'n. So in any case po, uh, good sponsor, Mr. President, gusto ko lang magtanong tungkol dun sa pandemic na binanggit din ng good sponsor. So yung possible impact po ng RCEP sa ating COVID-19 measures. As the Omicron vi variant is showing, COVID-19 still a serious problem. Uh, scientists warn us to expect more worrying variants after Omicron at na yung mga future pandemic daw ay malamang magiging mas mad madalas at uh, mas deadly, uh, kaya nga tayo nagbabaksinasyon ano po, at booster. Kaya kakailanganin daw natin lahat ng mga posibleng regulatory and policy tools to deal uh, with any possible future variants. So kasama na daw po yung lockdowns, partial reopening, uh, katulad sa IATF guidelines. Um, if the Philippines had to return to alert level 5, ibawa, uh, hypothetical situation, kung at any point after ratifying RCEP, kinailangan natin bumalik sa alert level 5, eh di yung mga kumpanya mula sa ibang RCEP countries, unlike domestic firms, ha, those companies in 45 service sectors would have to be excluded from the lockdown. For example, restaurants, luxury shops could continue operating at full capacity. Gayon din, pag at alert levels 2, 3, 4, yung mga restaurant po mula sa ibang mga RCEP countries, di tulad muli sa mga local restaurants, pwede po silang mag-operate at full capacity, indoors at outdoors. At tinitingnan ko po dito yung Annex 2 ng RCEP, uh, Schedule of Specific Commitment of Services, Retailing Services. Kaya po yung mga law firms, Mr. President, good sponsor, nagpayo na yung price controls um, on COVID-19 tests and medicines, tapos yung grace periods for loan repayments, rent, saka kuryente na inimplementa natin nitong pandemic, posible palang maglabag, mag-violate sa expropriation provision na nandun naman sa RCEP chapter on investment. So, good sponsor, hindi ba ito nakakabahala? Ngayong syempre, we rely heavily on these COVID-19 measures para pigilin yung pinaka-harsh na impacts ng pandemic. A good sponsor, Mr. President, I see Sen. Cynthia raising her hand. Mr. President, naka-mute yata si Sen. Cynthia. Mr. President, can I intercede? Yes, go ahead, uh, Senator Bilar. Alam nyo, hanggang ngayon, hindi na po proof na mabuti yung lockdown sa ating economy. Ha? Uh, it, it's a thing na ginawa natin, but uh, in other countries, they did not do that, and yet, they were able to to live with the virus, and yung economy nila hindi hard hit. So up to now, uh, wag nang sa, hindi natin pwedeng sabihin na yung lockdown na na uh, strategy natin is a good strategy. There were there are people questioning that strategy. Parang sinasabi nila, uh, dapat matuto tayo to live with the virus, we do the vaccination aggressively, we do yung, ano, yung uh, uh, observance of protocol, but we should not close our economy kasi ang impact, lalo na sa employment, napakabigat. So maybe... <laughs> 
we should not include that in consideration with regards to RCEP. Kasi uh, medyo questionable pa rin if we did the right thing kasi grabe ang inabot na ekonomiya natin because of those lockdown. Parang dapat uh, sabi nila in the future we should learn to live with the virus and then uh, make a strategy na we live with the virus, we get vaccinated, we get booster shots, and we observe protocol, but uh, we don't uh, really lock down. Kasi pag nag-lockdown, hindi naman kawawa yung mayayaman, yung mahihirap ang kawawa. O, yun lang. Maraming salamat. Thank salamat, Mr. President. Uh, Good sponsor. But, yes. but the, I think the question is more of on uh, theoretical, di ba? Uh, At saka po, more the... on kung ano yung national protocols natin. Yes, yes, pero kung yes. sakasakali, uh -huh. would violate our SEP uh, guidelines. No, um, uh, uh, just as I've stated in the other uh, discussions on other treaties, although entering a treaty, theoretically, there's a surrender of uh, some sovereignty. It's not, it's not really a, a surrender of that much of our sovereignty. So, uh, in my honest opinion, okay, uh, the Philippines can adopt measures uh, necessary to protect uh, public welfare objectives, the protection of public health, safety, public morals, environment, and real estate price uh, stabilization. And, uh, the important principle is that our regulation would be non-discriminatory. Pero to, re uh, to react to, kasi I think the, uh, uh, the good senator also mentioned future pandemics, to react to uh, a situation found in our uh, territory, territorial jurisdiction, we have, we still have, we never surrendered the necessary sovereignty for us to react to to these emergencies and other uh, uh, pandemics, uh, Mr. President. In which case, uh, Mr. President, good sponsor, baka that makes my case also on another point, na kung meron namang uh, mga provisions dito sa RCEP that the good sponsor might consider uh, violative of or potentially violative of uh, our national sovereignty. Again, parang surplusage siya na magkaroon ng ganong policy environment dito sa ating bansa in terms of our international commitments na wala naman sa existing free trade agreements natin or wala naman sa existing um, uh, economic partnership uh, agreement. So, bumabalik-balik kasi ako dun sa punto, good sponsor, Mr. President, na wala naman talagang malaking uh, value added na idinadagdag ngayon ng RCEP. In terms of benefits sa atin, ha, hindi ko po alam kung benefits sa ibang mas malaking bansa dyan, but in terms of benefits sa atin, that we are not already enjoying or could already enjoy under existing free trade agreements and economic uh, partnership agreements plus may dagdag na potential harm lalo na sa ating agricultural sector at this point in time given yung level of uh, unpreparedness nila at yung dihamak na level of superior preparedness ng mga ibang RCEP countries na papasok sa agricultural trade sa atin plus itong mga RCEP countries na hindi lang developed agricultural economies din, pero sila di hamak na napaka-protectionist para sa agrikultura nila. So good sponsor, I'll just go to my last question, Mr. President. Pro possibly similar dun sa itinanong din ni uh, San Francis, no? the good gentleman from Cavite kanina. Uh, Mr. Sponsor, do we have a list of laws that need to be adjusted after ratifying RCEP? Kasi po yung advocates, may finlag po silang ilan sa mga importanteng measures na ito. Halimbawa po, yung ban on tobacco and e-cigarette advertising on the internet and satellite TV uh, from companies from other RCEP countries, uh, pati sa pamamagitan ng 2020 Executive Order 106. This also applies to our other bans or restrictions on advertising, for example, of prescription medicines to consumers. Uh, pangalawa po, 
uh, our financial and other regulations restricting data from being transferred abroad because of the requirement do naman po sa annex ng RCEP on financial services requirement po doon to allow data to be transferred anywhere in the world if a bank or insurance company from another RCEP party needs to do so. And lastly po, some of the laws and regulations at the LGU level may also be considered to violate RCEP. Halimbawa po, mismong yung isang binanggit natin kanina, the Bangsamoro Organic Law, RA 11054, allows the Bangsamoro government to ban the import use, etc. of toxic substances. Similarly, the Act to Establish the Cordillera Autonomous Region, RA 8438, specifies that the regional government shall adopt measures to prevent the manufacture, import, distribution, or sale of inputs found to be biologically or environmentally harmful. Also, the Bangsamoro Organic Law allows the Bangsamoro government to ban the deposit, disposal, or dumping of toxic or hazardous substances. So, lastly, good sponsor, ano po yung mga iniisip nyo tungkol dito? Meron po bang komprehensibong listahan ng mga batas na pwedeng mag-refer to para din gabayan yung ating kongreso? Okay. Uh, from our hearings and from the discussion, uh, isang batas lang po ang parating nasasabing kailangan amyandahan due to RCEP. Mm -hmm. due to our set. Nothing prevents us from further improving our laws or enacting new laws uh, because of new insights that we have gained. But uh, pursuant to our set, uh, only, the only law that the Philippines needs to amend would be the intellectual property code of the Philippines because we made a... Uh, Commitment on intellectual property on the protection of sound mark. Uh, hindi pa po yan uh, accommodated sa ating batas. So that's why we have to, uh, to, we have to amend that. Uh, that is the due to RCEP. So yun po yun, ano? So due to RCEP. But again, ulitin ko, uh, all of these observations like Senator Tolentino pointed out uh, interrelated conventions which might help uh, aggrieve parties in international uh, contracts or trade uh, trade uh, agreements yon that would be addressed to the wisdom of the nation if you want to uh, join the, the conventions but the RCEP does not need our joining these conventions or does not mandate our joining these conventions ganun din po sa uh, laws mentioned by the good senator uh, RCEP does not mandate that we enact or amend uh, those laws if existing, especially ordinances, we, can, uh, we cannot touch them. Uh, but upon the study of RCEP, if we find it now wise uh, to adjust some laws or adjust some ordinances, nothing prevents us from doing so. So, so, so let us do it. Now, uh, outside of this uh, observation that only one law needs to be immediately acted upon the intellectual property code uh, to implement uh, philippine rcep commitments the only other legal enactment required from the philippines is the executive order to implement the country's tariff commitments so certain agencies such as the bureau of customs would also need to issue necessary uh, custom circulars to cover implementation arrangements of RCEP tariff commitments. Kasi dito rin sa, parati tayo nakafocus sa tariff uh, dito sa RCEP, but there are other chapters, no? The, and then, isang ang maganda dito, uh, we are forcing our customs to, to streamline its procedure and to modernize uh, its procedure and processes. Kasi, Common rules na sana itong RCEP, eh. the, this 30% of the world's population, 15 countries, oh, common rules na kayo even sa import, import license requirements, customs uh, procedures, try to harmonize uh, everything para so that the, so that the uh, exporter from the RCEP member country will only need to know one set of rules. We'll only need to be familiar with one set of documents. Ganun po yun. So, 
So, yun po. So, to summarize, uh, law, intellectual property code, we, we have to do it. And then uh, executive order from the president to, add to, to, to comply with our tariff commitments. And Bureau of Customs, uh, issue circulars to modernize uh, or, or update your uh, procedures it to be compliant with RCEP. Salamat po, good sponsor, uh, Mr. President. In closing Mr. po, President, uh, my interpolation. Uh, ah, yes, Mr. Permission of uh, the uh, good sponsor, uh, Senator Tibera, uh, Mr. President. If yes, go ahead, Senator, Senator Tolentino. Perhaps the go good sponsor should likewise uh, mention, and I reiterate the importance of the Convention on the Use of Electronic Communications in International Contracts, because this was mentioned in RCEP, Article 12.10, and we are still not a signatory to this very vital convention. So while it, while the wording was taking, uh, taking into account to that effect, I think this is a very vital uh, convention that we should be a part of, Mr. President. Just a manifestation. Uh, I fully agree, Mr. President, with the manifestation of uh, the good senator from uh, Cavite. Because uh, RCEP, uh, is the is ASEAN uh, led or ASEAN initiated? Therefore, the Philippines was part in the drafting of uh, in the eight year drafting of this document, and we mentioned the said conventions, and yet we are not party to the said conventions. Then that means we we value, we got insights, we got valuable insights from the said conventions. So we we must rethink uh, our why we are still not yet a member to this convention. So I agree fully. Uh, with Senator Tolentino, Mr. President. Salamat, good sponsor, Mr. President. In closing po, I would submit that in terms of the costs, the probable costs, and the promised benefits of the RCEP, na uh, hindi pa tayo handa to really benefit from the RCEP in the same way na mukang hindi pa rin tayo fully nag-capacity building para mag-benefit sa GATT WTO na pinasuka natin a long time ago. Hanggang ngayon, hindi pa tayo ganap na nag-benefit doon. And vulnerable sectors, including our agricultural sector, also continue to pay that cost. Fast forward ngayon sa RCEP, looking at the probable cost of RCEP, eh, I really find merit good sponsor, Mr. President, sa panawagan ng ating mga malalaki at maliliit na agricultural groups na i-consider natin ang similar course of action uh, ng isang malaking bansa at ekonomiya sa ating rehiyon na i-defer muna ang action sa pagpasok sa RCEP dahil hindi pa handa yung vulnerable agricultural sector na ito na uh, hindi para mm, makinabang let alone makinabang, pero kahit na hindi pa sila handa para sa damage ng uh, kompetisyon ng malalakas at protectionist na agricultural economies na magagawa sa ating uh, agricultural sector. So maraming salamat, a good sponsor, sa pasensya ninyo sa aking mga tanong. Um, I, I, I submit. Salamat po, Mr. President. Uh, just to respond, uh, Mr. President. Uh... Yes, go ahead. The agency which led the negotiations has, has, uh, has uh, guaranteed that they really took into account the interest of our agricultural sector. Uh, actually, they have the sensitive list, high, highly sensitive list. We have the exclusion list. Uh, yun po yung resulta po ng consultation and pag-iingat, kasama na pong pag-iingat doon, so that the possible... Well, uh, negative effects of the agreement would be minimized if not uh, eliminated. But the, uh, siguro the appeal would be to look at the overall effect of the RCEP on the, on the country, uh, like uh, GDP growth of over uh, 6%, FDI growth of 49%, exports will be up by 15%. Yun, uh, studies and projections, uh, doon po sila nakabase. And uh, they took all the necessary uh, precautions, uh, uh, Mr. President, and uh, that is what they uh, assured me in the 8 to 10 years that this was uh, negotiated. 
All right, thank you. Um, yes, uh, Senator De La Rosa, uh, go ahead. Yeah, Mr. President, just uh, uh, may I ask the good sponsor uh, during the hearings kung uh, ano bang sinabi ng Department of, of Agriculture as far as the preparedness or unpreparedness of our agriculture sector in uh, joining RCEP kung saan ba sila pumapabor. I, I don't think eh, isakripisyo nila yung ating mga kababayang magsasaka kung uh, talagang ma-disadvantage yung ating mga kababayang magsasaka dito. They have to, they have, they have to defend them. So, Precisely, I mean, sir. Precisely, yeah. sir. Uh, in all the hearings, we invited the Department of Agriculture in that special format where we had uh, some sort of a debate. Uh, uh, what is the rank of uh, Mr. Padre in the DA? Uh, is it undersecretary? or assistant secretary padre appeared you know assuring assuring uh, the federation of free farmers and the many other organizations which which participated in the hearings that uh, uh that we have a sensitive list a highly sensitive list and an, an exclusion list uh, containing many agricultural products uh, so that they will not be negatively impacted by the RCEP agreement. So, yun po yun. And then, ang, yung additional information nga natin ngayon, yung binanggit ko kanina, uh, seven, uh, 17 tariff, uh, 17, only 17 agricultural tariff lines are really uh, affected by the RCEP agreement. Ang karamihan pa doon, if, if, if I have not yet forgotten, around Ano ba yun, sandali? How many lines? Uh, and then, uh, um, more than 50% of those lines, ano pa? Uh, raw materials. Yung gagamitin pa natin, uh, gagamitin pa natin sa processing or sa final product, which which could be also an exported product. So, makakatulong din, makakatulong po. So, tama po yung assumption po ni Senator De La Rosa that the Department of Agriculture uh, which also participated in the negotiation of this agreement, took pains and took care, uh, took the time and the effort to protect the interests of our agricultural sector. Thank you, sir. All right. <clears throat> the session is suspended. Uh, the majority leader is um, asking for a caucus, so we might go into caucus in the short while. In the meantime, the session is suspended.
in this bill were provisions, the committee report, I'm referring to the committee report, were provisions that overturned the safeguards in the syntax law. And sadly, they were passed by the Senate and carried in the BICAM, which are the following. One, exclusive jurisdiction transferred to DTI. Two, age of access lowered to 18. And three, no clear restrictions on flavors. Here are the details. On the first point, DTA, DTI, a trade agency that has nothing to do with the health care of people, is given the exclusive jurisdiction over any and all issues, requirements, and subject matters related to ESICs. Based on their mandate, DTI is responsible for investments and export promotion, industry development, and MS, MSME development. As I have said, and will not tire of saying, nowhere in their mandate does it say that the DTI can determine the health effects of products, let alone vapor products which are detrimental to public health. Even the industry cannot see thousand flavors were rejected by the US FDA. Does the DTI have the political will and the expertise to do the same, to reject flavors that will be proposed to be carried in the market? We know very well that their mandate is to promote business. <coughs> I submit that they will not have the political will nor the capacity to regulate the flood of flavors that we will be exposed to and our young children. On the second point, the minimum age of sale and purchase is now pegged at 18 years of age. These products will now be accessible even to senior high school students. According to experts, the brain continues to mature until the age of 25. And that early exposure to nicotine through, through vapor products could impair the brain's development. On the third point, other flavors are still allowed despite the restrictions on the descriptors we know very well that the wide array of flavors will make the product more attractive, especially to the youth. So those are the three main points, Your Honor, that were carried in the bicameral report that we continue to oppose. Changes in the bicam report that further relax regulation on e-cigs. These are but a few examples, Your Honor. Sponsorships are now allowed even beyond industry associations and trade events. In the version of the Senate, which was our proposal, originally sponsorships were only limited in industry association and trade events. This was our specific amendment to address events being targeted to all and not just to those who are already within the vaping industry. Now it will be open to all. It also allows companies to conduct corporate social responsibility related activities. Mr. President, under the WHO Framework Convention Tobacco Control, principle number six, corporate social responsibility activities should be prohibited. We are now in clear violation of an international agreement that we have historically honored. Let me end with this, Mr. President. As we honor and throw our support behind the efforts of our health workers <coughs> with the right hand. <coughs> With our left hand, we are giving a free pass to a line of products that directly affect our health. It boggles the mind that as we deal with over 5.63 million deaths around the world and more than 53,000 deaths in the Philippines due to COVID, we allow this industry to promote their products touted as a lesser evil by the industry and its proponents. I will not be a party to a bill that is masquerading as a health regulation. As I said, over 60, 60 health associations and civil society organizations, the Department of Health and former health secretaries have expressed strong opposition to this measure and continuously warn us about these products and the need to regulate the same by the one agency tasked by our laws to ensure that the products that affect our health are regulated. That is the FDA, not the DTI. Once again, I must state for the record that I disassociate myself from this measure. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Majority Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, we'd like to put that on record for our uh, 18th Congress. Um, Mr. President, uh, moving forward, I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill Number 2493. I so move, Mr. President. 
Any objection? Hearing none, consideration is noted. This is a measure that I sponsored yesterday, Mr. President. This is the uh, vintage automobiles and cars. Uh, Mr. President, no member had listed to interpolate the measure. Uh, it's a very simple measure only for uh, being able to propagate uh, vintage and classic cars. Uh, I move that we close the period of interpolation. Um, hearing no objection, period of interpolation is closed. Mr. President, uh, there are no amendments at this point of time. I move that we close the period of amendment. Any objection? Hearing none, period of amendments closed. Mr. President, move to approve on second reading Senate Bill number 2493. So moved, Mr. Any objection? Hearing none, 2493 is approved in the second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I move that we resume consideration of Senate Bill number 2485. Any objection? Hearing none, 2485 is considerations in order. Mr. President, uh, I move to recognize the sponsor, Senator Sherwin Gachalian. This is the Second Congressional Commission on Education, EDCOM. Uh, no member wishes to interpolate this measure, Mr. President, unless there are those who would like to interpolate online. Uh, I think this is a very important uh, uh, measure that we need to tackle right away. I move that we close the period of interpolation. Uh, we, we recognize Senator Pia Caetano, Mr. President. Senator Pia Caetano is recognized. Just a very short statement of support, Your Honor. Uh, the original EDCOM was still, um, uh, how do I put it, operational or uh, uh, what's the correct word, majority floor leader? Operational? The original EDCOM was operating? What is oh, the word? Operating? Or maybe you can ask was the existing? I'm just trying to, recall, I'm trying to think of the right word. Uh, the, the, late, right, huh? the late Senator Angara uh, chaired the, the, the last um, EDCOM, so I was, I was able to participate in some of those. So I just want to express my strong support for uh, the revival of this EDCOM. Um, I am about to release a, a committee report from the committee I chair, the Committee on Sustainable Development uh, Goals, Innovation and Futures Thinking on the futures of education, as I had mentioned to uh, his honor, the chair, the chairperson uh, of the Committee on Basic Education. And in this report, uh, one of the recommendations is the EDCOM. So it, it's still there, uh, taking, taking uh, note of the fact that as we were writing that report, this was already happening. Um, and we really look forward to, to seeing this um, help us navigate the difficult, the challenges that we have seen in the education sector. So that's all I want to say for now, Your Honor. Uh, I really hope that we can um, uh, see progress happen in this sector um, through through this uh, commission that we are going to be um, approving. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you uh, Ms. President. That was a good question. That, yeah, that was a good question, Ms. President. I didn't get an answer from uh, our dear uh, sponsor. The first EDCOM, <laughs> the first EDCOM had expired, no, uh, dear sponsor? Yes. Yes, it's already uh, expired a long yeah. time. That was uh, 1990, so that was, uh, it was about 30 years ago. Wow, we definitely need to, to uh, uh, reinstitute this, especially now during the time of the pandemic. So with that, Mr. President, there being no members who wish to interpolate, move to close the period of interpolation. Mr. President. Any, uh, yeah. any objection? Hearing none, period of interpolation is closed. Thank, Thank you. you. Just in response to Senator Pia's uh, uh, statements of support. Uh, first of all, thank you very much uh, to the good senator for her support. And uh, definitely, I took note of her uh, um, vision on the future of education. So during the uh, hearing on which uh, Senator Pia participated heavily and suggested a lot of concepts that we uh, should include in the bill, one of the um, <clears throat> one of the uh, uh, concepts that we included under the declaration of policy is the digital transformation of education. And we all know that uh, the pandemic brought about weaknesses in the system. One of it is moving into the digital uh, setup uh, under extreme cases. <clears throat> so with that in mind, and with the statement of Senator Pia during the hearing, we included the uh, uh, provision mm. on digital transformation so that the commissioners will look at this, uh, not only fixing the problem, but looking at the future of Philippine education. <coughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, we now open the period of amendments, if there are any, and ask the, ask the sponsor for any amendment. 
Yes, Mr. President, uh, I have a minor amendment, and I believe the good minority floor leader has a very important amendment. Um, with the permission of uh, the body and the minority floor, uh, this is just a very minor amendment. So, Mr. President, I'd like to introduce an omnibus amendment to delete the Arabic numeral 2 after the acronym EDCOM and replace it with, new, with Roman numeral 2 such that EDCOM 2 will be now be EDCOM uh, Roman, Roman numeral 2. I so move, Mr. President. Omnibus. Any objection? Eating none. Adopted. I believe the good minority floor leader has a very important amendment, Mr. President. Senator Dillon, the minority leader is recognized. Yes, uh, Mr. President, thank you very much. Uh, uh, our amendment starts on uh, page three. Page three, Mr. President. Uh, on line 13, insert the following sentence. To address the current learning crisis, comma, the EDCOM 2 shall immediately draw a road, a road map which shall be strategic, inclusive, and adaptable to global tre trends and future challenges and proposing solutions to the issues which are systemic in nature. What does the sponsor I, say? I accept, Mr. President. All right, of course, that will carry the omnibus amendment that it becomes yes. from the second. Yes, yes, yes sir. sir. All right. Any, any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Okay. Uh, At the uh, on again on uh, page three, line thirteen. Um, add another paragraph after the amendment that was accepted uh, and approved, uh, Mr. President. The new part, uh, the additional paragraph will read um, to address the current learning crisis, comma, the EDCOM 2 shall immediately draw, uh, okay, uh, I'm sorry, we have read that already, sir, uh, I, I withdraw that. Um, we now go to section 7. Okay, section 7. One minute suspension, sir, just to clarify. Can I have sir, one? suspended. On page five, <clears throat> on page five, uh, Mr. President, on line 26, insert a new section and renumber the subsequent sections accordingly. A new section seven is being proposed to be inserted on line 26 to read as follows. Section 7, Education, Legislation, and Policy Advisory Council. An Education, Legislation, and Policy Advisory Council is hereby created to provide the Commission with expert advice, with expert assistance and advice, period. The Advisory Council shall always be present in all meetings of the Commission. The Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives 
shall choose recognized experts, recognized experts from the following sectors to form part of the advisory council. Two members from the academe, two members from the business sector, two members from the government education agencies, two members who are heads of L local government units, and two members from civil society organizations and development partners engaged in education. End of the amendment. And may I read into the record uh, the, the rationale for this. Uh, Mr. President, the creation of an advisory council seeks to institutionalize private sector participation in the Congressional Commission. We initially wanted to make them members of the Commission, but we had to avoid questions on its nature as a Congressional Commission with private individuals as members. M members of Congress cannot be part of any body except in an official capacity, hence the need to maintain that it is a Congressional Commission. As we said originally, we wanted the private sector to be members of the Commission, but because of the, consti the constitutional issue as to whether or not uh, the members of Congress can be members of a Commission which is not uh, which is not a, a congressional in nature, then we uh, just we will just we are just submitting an amendment which will create an advisory council composed of the private sector who shall always be present in all meetings of the uh, uh, of the ed, ed, uh, congressional uh, educational committee commission uh, so that their inputs uh, can be heard by the members of Congress who are members of the Educational Commission. Uh, that's our submission, Mr. President. We submit uh, to the uh, sponsor the amendment that we have read. Uh, Does the sponsor the say? Thank you. Thank, uh, <clears throat> first of all, uh, Mr. President, we accept the amendment of the good uh, minority leader. All right. And um, I also share his views that uh, we should invite experts and uh, advisors in education outside the realm of uh, the Senate and House of Representatives. So it's important that the solutions that we will be churning out of this uh, commission is inclusive, holistic, and innovative. And we all know that a lot of the innovative uh, ideas come from the private sector and private initiative. So I welcome this amendment of the good minority leader and uh, we uh, wholeheartedly accept the amendment, Mr. President. All right. Uh, any objection? Hearing none. Adopted. <coughs> I have no more amendments, uh, Mr. President. Uh, thank you to the good sponsor for accepting our amendments. Majority Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, with that, uh, there being no more amendments, move <coughs> to close the period of amendments. Um, ah, before we do that, yes. Mr. Before President. we we adopt the the motion of the majority leader. Yes, maybe no. The secretariat. Can you take a look at section three? Mm -mm. That is page uh, two. Hello. The uh, in number three objectives, it is um, <clears throat> it is the objective of this act to jointly create with the House of Representatives and Edcom the second. <clears throat> what do you mean? This is already a congressional. redundant I hope you. Um, try to uh, arrange the wording or delete talaga we will jointly create it so oh. perhaps you can go to it is the objective of this act to undertake a comprehensive national assessment you know yes 
Ready? You remove uh, from two all the way up to Edson, uh, Edcom the second comma. Yes. Sponsor. Yes, Mr. President, we accept the uh, amendment. All right. Any objection? With the concurrence of the minority leader, adopted. All right, majority leader. Yes, we are now ready to close the period of amendment. Thank you, Mr. President. With that, I move to close the period of amendment. Any objection? Hearing none, period of amendment is closed. And I move to approve on second reading, Senate Bill number 2485. Any objection? Hearing none, 2485 is approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Of the consideration of the measure suspended. Mr. Senator President. Richard Gordon is recognized. Yes, sir. Do I go for an amendment, Mr. President? Just a pahabul lang, kung pwede. On the subject? Uh, on 2485? On the objectives, Mr. President, uh, Section 3. Ah, should I reconsider, Mr. President? Sige, motion to reconsider. Uh, yes, uh, I move to, to reconsider the approval on second reading and open the period of amendments, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, hearing no objection, it's... Uh, Reconsidered. Go ahead, Senator Gordon. I apologize, sir, because I, I kind of got uh, way late. I, I, I'm doing a lot, a lot of other things here. Just on the one line, on the last line, Your Honor, of the first paragraph, it is the objective of this act to jointly create with the House of Representatives and I've come to, to undertake a comprehensive national assessment and evaluation of the performance of the Philippine sector for the purpose of recommending transformative, concrete, and targeted reforms in the sector with the end in view of making the Philippines an intellectual superpower of Asia. What is the amendment? With the end in view of making the Philippines an intellectual power of Asia. Intellectual power uh, to... With the end in view of... Making the, the Philippines an intellectual superpower of Asia, Your Honor. Intellectual superpower of Asia. It's just to really inspire, Mr. President, to make sure that we know where we're going. Because we're so behind, and I think it might provide urgency to everybody. Uh, would, you, would you settle for intellectual power? <laughs> it's okay, Mr. President. So now well, we... well, the, 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 the people around me are... Uh, Alarmed by the word super, Well, you know, sometimes uh, when we challenge people, they're always trying to, they're always uh, thinking that we cannot do it. But if we start aiming high, if you aim for the skies, you hit the tree tops. If you aim for the tree tops, you hit the ground. Uh, we'll leave it to the sponsor. Uh, it's up to you. And I will settle for intellectual power of Asia just to assuage the fears of our colleagues there. But Mr. President, uh... Uh, conceptually, I agree, but just to uh, make it uh, 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 standardized with the other provisions, because we use the word world here, uh, is the uh, good um, gentleman from Olongapo uh, amenable to make it, uh, instead of Asia, the world of the world? Because we so use the world... It becomes intellectual power of the world. <laughs> Well, I just want to say intellectual power of Asia, I think that's uh, being uh, modest, at least because, you know, Hong Kong, Singapore, Korea have been able to do that. The Japanese aim to do that at the turn of the century, early century, last year, last century. I think it might be good to, uh, uh, you know, uh, motivate the teachers that that, is their, that, uh, that we are really uh, trying to catch up. If it, 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 if it goes to the world, that's fine with me as well. Uh, that means that we really have to work harder. Sometimes coming out with uh, with a slogan and uh, you know uh, creating a, creates an impetus towards change, Mr. President. I, I bow to the wisdom of my colleague uh, from Venezuela. I come from a city of Olongapo, which is small, but uh, Venezuela is equally small, slightly bigger than. But I think that's not the point. The point is, we may be small in the Philippines, but we can indeed be intellectual superpower of uh, Asia. If you like intellectual power of Asia, that's fine with me. I don't think there's any reason to debate that. It's motherhood. What does the sponsor say? Intellectual power.
Okay na yun? Yeah, yeah. Well, Intellectual pa power of Asia? Intellectual superpower. Tama <laughs> ba? Is that the amendment, Mr. Well, well I was very... Super I was... Superpower, because that's really the intention. So it's, it's up to you. Statements yesterday. Intellectual power is okay, because it's... Uh, I will bow to the wishes of the Senate President. Yeah, we, we accept, Mr. President. Uh, the, and let me just repeat the uh, amendment, the proposal, if I'm uh, if I got it correctly, with the end in view of making the Philippines making the Philippines intellectual the intellectual power superpower of Asia. Of Asia. Uh, intellectually super intellectual power, intellectual. The intellectual superpower of Asia or the intellectual power of Asia? Can I uh, uh, propose to uh, just delete the word power? Ah, sorry, super, and just retain power. Intellectual okay. power. I accept that, John. I already have accept Acceptable. Okay. All right. Any objection? Chair is done. Adopted. Thank you, Your Honor. Majority Leader. Oh, Thank you, Mr. President. Is that, Mr. President, we move to close the period of amendments. Any, any objection? Hearing none, period of amendments closed. Mr. President, I move that we close the, I mean, the approve the measure for second reading. So move. Any objection? Hearing none, 2485 is approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the measure suspended. Mr. President, uh, we have a simple resolution. Uh, this is a resolution sponsored by Senator Cayetano, commending and congratulating Rachel Marshall Donare for being the first woman in Filipina to receive the honorary World Boxing Council Trainers Belt. Mr. President, I move that we uh, consider proposed Senate Resolution Number 983. Any objection? Hearing none, consideration is in order. I move that uh, we ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure. Um. Secretary will read the title of the resolution. PS Resolution Number 983, Resolution Commending and Congratulating Rachel Marshall Donaire for being the first woman in Filipina to receive the Honorary World Boxing Council WBC Trainers Bell. May we recognize a distinguished colleague sponsored the measure, Senator, uh, fellow athlete, Mr. President, Senator Pia Caetan. Senator Pia Caetano is recognized as possible the measure. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, it is my honor to sponsor Senate Resolution Number 983, commending and congratulating Rachel Marshall Donaire for being the first woman in Filipina to receive the honorary World Boxing Council WBC Trainers Belt. The WC Trainers Belt is given to boxing coaches and trainers who are recognized for their valuable work alongside legendary boxing champions. Rachel Marshall Donare is the woman behind the defensive strategies of renowned Filipino boxer Nonito, the Filipino Flash Donare Jr., who is a four-division conqueror and a three-time bantamweight champion. This placed Rachel Donare in an unprecedented position as she became the first ever woman. Let me just repeat that. As she became the first ever woman head trainer to coach a world champion. Nonito Donaire paid tribute to Rachel Donaire, his wife, and emphasized her vital role in his victories. He described his wife as being the only one he could hear during the night of the championship. In December 2021, after Nonito Donaire successfully defended his WBC bantamweight world title, Rachel Donaire was also nominated by the WBC for Trainer of the Year. Rachel Donaire acknowledged the importance of this recognition from WBC and expressed her hopes that such an achievement would push a lot of other women to step up and be part of camps to be head trainers. Rachel Donaire also excelled in her own sport, which is Taekwondo, wherein she is a member of the U.S. Taekwondo national team and eventually became a military Taekwondo champion in 20. 2002 after joining the U.S. Air Force. She is a living proof that women have the same ability as men to excel in competitive sports and are equally qualified as coaches. Rachel Donary is a leading example of a strong Filipina. 
She inspires fellow women by her ability to excellently juggle her role as a mother, wife, athlete, manager, strength and conditioning coach, and Nonita Denaire's head coach. I am proud and honored to sponsor this measure, commending and congratulating Rachel Denaire for forging her own path, a path till now was untrodden by women. Thank you, Mr. President. Yeah, we're good. Mr. President, I support uh, this uh, particular measure. Uh, we should have more women in all sectors, not only as fighters or, or sports or the athletes themselves, but as uh, educators, as trainers, uh, or sports specialists. So with this, Mr. President, I, I move that we adopt uh, proposed Senate Resolution number 98. Okay. Uh, any objection? Hearing none, a PS Resolution 983 is hereby adopted. And if I can be made a co sponsor yes. as well, and together with the presiding officer and Senator Gutelian and Tolentino. Yes, so so recorded. Mr. President, Mr. Joel Villanueva and Senator Nancy Bina as well. With the permission of the author, of course. And Senator Villar as well. So uh, moving forward, Mr. President. The bills of Senator Grace Post, she had asked me, um, she's just, uh, she's, she can't be online till 8.30. So if we move forward, Mr. President, we move on to the other bills. Um, we have uh, one item, if we don't take up Senator Grace Post measure, Mr. President, until the later hour, we have the Creatives Industry Philippines bill. Um, is Senator Coco Pimentel, yes, our distinguished colleague is, is he ready to defend the, the measure, Your Honor? Yes, yes, Mr. President. Um, maybe I can start off the ball rolling, Mr. President, if I move to a, uh, consider a Senate Bill number 2455. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, consideration is in order. Mr. President, I just, if, if a good sponsor, may recognize Senator Aquilino Coco Pimentel, and if you can just answer a couple of clarificatory questions to start the ball rolling on this particular measure. Senator Coco Pimentel is recognized to sponsor the measure. Mr. Majority President, uh, may I also be recognized to ask a few questions? Yes, the majority leader is... Uh, My friend. dear friend and uh, neighbor in Cagayan de Oro allows, will allow me to just ask a few clarifying questions. Friendly yes, questions. With, yes, with pleasure, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, we just want to ask what really is the purpose of this measure so that we can really understand the, this creatives bill. A lot of people have lobbied with me, directors, film directors, artists, des web designers, uh, uh, many, many you know, fields of art and uh, crafts have uh, reached out to me, even actors uh, and the like. Uh, what really is this advantage to them, uh, Your Honor, Mr. President? I'm sure they have lobbied, lobbied in favor of the bill. <laughs> yes, in favor, yes, in favor, sir, in favor. Yes, yes, lobbied uh, in favor. Yes, Mr. President. Uh, uh, we, we are actually going to recognize uh, a, cert, a, a certain sector in our uh, <clears throat> economy and call this the creatives industry. Uh, we will be using the Unctad uh, categories, uh, nine, and tawag po nila dyan, domains. So nine, nine activity domains. If you fall under this domain, you are you are now part of the so-called creatives industry. Uh, and then we will now be we will now be uh, cre uh, concentrating on this particular uh, segment of our economy, uh, which we feel. Uh, have proven to be resilient even during COVID. Some some of them even thrived during COVID. Although some although some got hit, but we want to uh, place our bets on this sector of the economy that they will uh, lead us to a more progressive economy, more earnings for our country uh and better uh promotion re reputational boost for the philippines and uh at, at, but at this point if she does not mind i, I could i could see the main author 
online if she wants to add uh, to my to my uh, response uh, senator if senator marcos wants to add uh, i would welcome her inputs uh, mr president yes thank you very much and uh, certainly mr president majority leader uh, the recognition of the creative industry uh, will give a very serious boost to a growth point in our eco economy, particularly uh, following the uh, damage that has been wrought by COVID. So we know today, uh, ang dami dami po nago online at uh, na discovered yung uh, ibat ibang talent ng kabataan. So importante po to sa ating lahat. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. President. Yes, actually, uh, one of those uh, who would lobby in favor of the measure is the principal author as well in the House of Representatives, uh, Congressman uh, Topper de Venetia, Christopher de Venetia. Oh, yes. Also, yes, who also is a uh, theater personality. I believe he's a theater director. So this will give a incentives, package of incentives, recognizing the work of the creatives field or creatives industry. Is that correct, uh, Your Honor? Yes, Mr. President, and uh, and we are actually now recognizing this new <clears throat> new sector of the economy. Tawag nga natin dyan, the creatives industry. And uh, the the goal actually, and I think Senator Gordon will will like this. No, uh, in the bill, we envision Filipino excellence in the creative industries. Yan yung nine nine creative domains. No. But actually, as I stated in my uh, sponsorship speech, this is short of saying that we envision world domination by Filipino creatives. Oh. Yeah. I think Senator Gordon will uh, like the like the objective of this bill, uh, Mr. President. Very good, very good. He will like that if you include that in the definition. Uh, yes, maybe we recognize Senator Cayetano, Mr. President. Right. There. If I may just add, with the permission of the gentleman, uh, in our in our future studies and in the committee, uh, we have always uh, recognized that we need to teach our children 21st century skills, and yet we are still teaching them, parang 18th or 19th century skill. Yung as as I put it in the futures of education committee report that I mentioned earlier. Um, you know, this is very generalized type of education and focus on the three R's, you know, reading, writing, and arithmetic. And what is the 21st century uh, education now focuses on the four C's. And one of the four C's is creativity. So this is really acknowledging um, a skill and talent Filipinos have already been demonstrating worldwide. But by ensuring that they now have a voice, um, recognizing them as a sector, uh, we, will, we will be able to support it even more. But what I wanted to bring into the discussion is that even in the area of education, and our chairman of the Committee on Basic Education is here, we need to ensure that that creative aspect is also developed. Because even without much support, that talent is already shining among the Filipinos, Your Honor. Just wanted to share that. Thank you. Yes, I, I agree with the good senator, Mr. President. Uh, but some, uh, yeah, but some activities under the creative domain need need uh, some some formal education, like uh, uh, computer coding, mga ganyan. Uh, yeah, kailangan yun. Kailan ituro po yun? Oh. Uh, kasama po yan. So I, I fully agree with, 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 with the good senator from uh, Taguig. And uh, I'm sure we have a dear, we have one colleague that will appreciate this because she used to be a theater actor, actress, and she was a very good one. She's online now smiling. See Senator Risa on the virus. Actually, we were getting a lot of lobby support as well from the theater, uh, theater uh, outfits and production houses. So uh, I don't have. I no longer have any further questions. I'm here in full support of the measure. Uh, my kinakapatid, Mr. President, is uh, uh, Congressman De Venetia, uh, and uh, we'd like to recognize now, uh, Mr. President, uh, our distinguished colleague, Senator Risa Ontiveros, uh, for a few state for a few remarks. Senator Ontiveros, recognize. 
Salamat, Mr. President. Uh, for the reasons stated by uh, the good majority leader earlier, that uh, I did have a very good and unforgettable uh, experience in theater and music as a teenager in high school, I would like to express my support uh, for the bill to the good sponsor. Salamat po, Mr. President. Salamat, good sponsor. I believe, uh, but before I recognize Senator Pia, I believe the good lady senator from Panay, you played the uh, sound of music. Was it sound of music? <laughs> That's right, uh, good majority leader, Mr. President. Sound of music uh, of repertory Philippines a long but time ago, in 1980. Yeah, I watched okay. that. I watched that uh, as a single boy. I uh, may recognize that. Not, not as Mr. long ago, Mr. President, as uh, I played Anne Frank. Ah, uh, yes, that's right. Even uh, Senator Marcos used to also be into uh, the arts, of course. With the same company, Repertory Philippines, Paul. Wow, very good. Senator Cayetano, Mr. President, yes. wish to be here. Mr. President, I just wanted to put on record that. Um, I also was one of those who lobbied with the uh, sponsor, <laughs> Senator Coco, <laughs> because um, Senator as uh, Congressman Tof de Venecia and I had discussed this uh, at length. And in fact, um, my brother uh, Alan was the Speaker of the House uh, when they created that committee on creatives. Um, while while uh, well, it, it's currently it's currently the committee that uh, Congressman Tof chairs. So on that note. Um, uh, I'm happy that uh, Senator Coco uh, was able to take this up, and uh, I just would like to be. I, I I had my own version that I was working on, but since he proceeded with with uh, the bill that he had, I, I will just um, express my support and uh, ask to be made a co-author. Thank you very much, Madam um, uh, Madam's uh, colleague, and of course to our president. Thank you so much uh, for our sponsor. I, I, uh, we agree. We agree, Mr. President, to the co-authorship of Senator uh, Cayetano and every and uh, I, everyone else who wants to be a co-author, Mr. President. I'm, I, I'm not sure if I'm a co-author. I think I filed also. I think I filed also. That's right. I filed the measure uh, as well. And those who want to be made a co-author uh, of this measure uh, as well, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the the brother of Senator Cayetano was a no. The uh, you have a director, right? Lino is yeah. a director. That's right. He's a film director and a TV director. So, uh, Mr. President, I'd like to ask my colleagues if anyone wishes to interpolate this measure. If not, I'll close the period of interpolates. I may recognize Senator Tolentino. Yeah, before, before we recognize Senator Tolentino, may I ask uh, the sponsor, <laughs> where, what category here uh, do, do the composers fall in? <laughs> I forgot, Mr. President, that the presiding officer was one of the greatest, uh, one of our greater uh, music producers of the country. Kasama po sila dito, Mr. President. Saan dito? I do not know that's us. Creative firms, artists, artisans, creators, content providers, and other gifted citizens to their intellectual property and creations. Doon ba sa other gifted citizens? Content providers po, because considered copyright po yung uh, music. Content providers. Apa. Creators. Content, correct. Yes, content. Yeah. What we can do, Mr. President, is just close the period of uh, interps and then we can open the period of uh, uh, amendments another day so that you can study. We can Mr. open President. it tomorrow. The, the, we're talking about creative industries. Okay. We'll just close the period of interpolation. Uh, no, Senator Tolentino wants to. Uh, no. just, Go ahead. Just one question, Mr. President. Although I have yet to uh, really scrutinize the, the measure, just one question. Will there be creative hubs uh, if this bill would be approved? I, I'm referring to certain localities that would perhaps cater to the movie industry, another locality for the music industry, etc., etc. Similar uh, to your Silicon Valley, but yeah, referring to the creative industry. Uh, th that that might be the uh, possible uh, result or outcome, but the bill does not mandate that, uh, Mr. President. It, there is a there is a creative industry uh, development council who will now come up with a plan. If that should now become part of the plan, then uh, so be it, uh, Mr. President. They will have to attract. Uh, uh, locators to that particular place if that is the plan but it all depends on the plan sir uh, there will be uh, 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 
how many members? Let me double check. Uh, 18 members, 18. Uh, nine, 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 uh, uh, nine ex officio, and then nine from the private sector, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. And uh, may I likewise request that I be made a co author of this measure as I, I was heavily involved before as former chairman of the Metro Manila Film uh, Festival. Yes. Yeah. Yes, the, yes, yes. And the initiator of the cell phone film festival, Mr. President. Yeah. So, so actually, Me. Mr. actually, Mr. We, we welcome the co-authorship of Senator Tolentino. Actually, Mr. President, uh, in one way or another, uh, we, we can really find a way to link ourselves with the creatives industry. Because we are a creative people, and I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure... <laughs> We have we we have uh, we have expressed our creativity in uh, in some way, uh, Mr. President. I completely. Will, will, will you uh, please? Uh, uh, I'm sure we're going to close the period of interpolation, and perhaps you can study the period of amendments, uh, Your Honor. C can you take a look again on Section Four? Um, I am quite uh, wary about. Uh, the council composition of 18 members. Too big. Ex officio nine, regular members nine. Yes, <laughs> um, I have experienced in the Dangerous Drugs Board, 17 members. Nung hindi na ako chairman, hindi magkakorum. Oo. Even during the time of Senator Lina, hindi magkakorum. Hirap na hirap magkakorum, lalo na nilagyan niya atin ito ng mga secretary. Department of Education, the department, and you might attend So, with 18, I doubt if you'll get a quorum. Bihiram Bihiram Magarona meeting ito. So, I think you should, uh, should really it. study to yes. bring it down to a more um, uh, level that uh, can be easily less uh, than 10. Convinced. Mr. President, convinced. less than 10, yes, at so. least less than 10. May uh, recognize Senator, Senator I mean Marcos. Uh, after Senator Marcos, after Senator Marcos. Yes, thank Senator you very much. Uh, we're in full agreement that uh, the number should be put <laughs> down. It should also be an odd number instead of an even number to uh, expedite voting. Yes. Yes, uh, yes, Mr. President, uh, we are open to that, but uh, it should not be less than nine so that the nine creative domains will be uh, represented. represented. Then private sector, yon, plus... Plus uh, an even number. Sabi kasi ni Amy, the, the, the sum total must be odd. So, plus an even number of uh, ex officio members. Siguro. So, 9 plus 4, 9 plus 2. But uh, at any rate, as the Senate President uh, mentioned, when he was the chairman of the Dangerous Drugs Board, he was able to make such a large uh, board meet and work. So, kaya po. Kaya po, si, kaya po siguro. <laughs> Uh, well, yeah, but uh, we could not do it uh, uh, to follow what the law said. The law said that it should meet once a week. Eh? Uh -huh. I was able to convene them once a month long. Once a month, yes. But sir. when I was not the chairman, kahit once a month, wala eh. <laughs> uh, talagang kasi nagtatawag ako at saka medyo nahiilang sila. Uh -huh. uh, pero... Yes, sir. And... Uh, yes, sir, I'll repeat what I stated uh, earlier. I'm, I'm open to a uh, proposal to improve, to make it more uh, yeah. more practical or to make it more wor workable in, in real life, in real life uh, situation, Mr. President. If, if, I may Mr. President. if I may recommend that uh, in any case, the council can call on the services of the DOST, the NEDA, the DOT, the DICT, perhaps we can we can consider diminishing the number of uh, government uh, representatives. Uh, nine plus four, siguro. Sige, you, we can study that uh, in the period of amendments. Thank Mr. you. President. Thank Senator you, Mr. President. Senator Villaneva is recognized. Yes, Mr. President, thank you. First of all, I agree with the, the statements that uh, you made considering uh, when I was at the helm of TESDA, uh, and at the Secretariat of TESDA, we experienced the same thing. Uh, when we put up the uh, Philippine Qualifications Framework, uh, we are all aware in the education sector how, how many times they can actually uh, meet, especially the secretary. So, one, I agree with that. And uh, we thank the sponsor, principal sponsor, for uh, 
uh, accepting the uh, idea of uh, limiting and uh, looking into this uh, particular matter. Secondly, Mr. President, uh, let me place again on record my uh, congratulations to the good sponsor. I am also a co-author of this measure. Uh, since time immemorial, we have been uh, uh, espousing the importance of creative industries. And uh, if I recall, the World Bank is saying yung uh, job skills mismatch on higher technology occupations should be uh, looked into. And uh, this is uh, the way to go, especially now uh, with, with, with the pandemic uh, uh, still uh, around us. Yung creative industry is uh, uh, booming and uh, we feel na maraming uh, trabaho na malilika at magagawa rito. So maraming salamat, Ginoong Pangulo. And uh, again, congratulations to our authors and principal uh, sponsor. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, with that, uh, we'll move to close the period of interpolation, Mr. President. Senator yeah. Aimee wants, yeah. wants to be recognized. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, uh, yes, thank you, Mr. Sponsor, Mr. President, Majority Leader. I'd uh, just like to highlight the involvement of IPO Phil, given the uh, uh, rather sad reputation of the Philippines in copyright infringement. I think this will also help protect our musicians, our filmmakers, and our other artists in defending their original copyright. Thank you. All Thank right. You uh, any objection? Um, there being none, period of interpolation is closed. To allow our colleagues to come up with the proper amendments, Mr. President, I move to suspend considerations. Consideration is suspended. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'm very happy that we're moving forward with this, this measure. It, uh, you, know, you know, many members of uh, the Senate, Mr. President, by the way, are part of the creatives industry. We have yourself, who's been in the creatives industry for a long time, as well as Senator Lapid, Senator Rivilla, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, those who were in the industries before, Senator Risa Devero, Senator Amy Marcos, uh, the our siblings of our colleagues were part of the creative industry. So I'm glad this is moving forward. Manami Salamat. Mr. President, as I mentioned earlier, I don't think Senator Grace is yet available. We'll move forward to the bills of sent local bills of Senator uh, Joel Villanueva um, and come back to the bills of Senator Grace as soon as he's back online. Uh, but uh, before we do that, on item number 29, we have a bill of Senator Villar, which is a protected area. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 9488. Any objection? Hearing none, motions approved. Mr. President, no member wishes to interpolate the, the bill on the protected area in Masbate and move to close period of interpolation. Any objection? Hearing none. Motion is approved. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I move to recognize the sponsor and open the period of amendments. Senator Sinja Villar is recognized for the period of amendments. You're muted, Senator Villar. Mr. President, to me, uh, we are prepared to make the committee amendments. You may proceed. <clears throat> uh, Mr. President, the following are the committee amendments. On page 5, line 20, between the conjunction or and the world duly, delete article a and in lieu thereof insert the phrase his dash her i so move mr president any objection hearing none adopted uh still on page five line 25 after the word congressional delete the letters s in the word districts to make it singular for form i so move mr president any objection hearing none adopted Still on page 5, lines 25, 26, and 27, delete the letter S in the words representatives to make it in singular form. I so move, Mr. President. <laughs> Any objection? Leading none, adopted. In still on page 5, line 26, between the conjunction or and the word Julie, delete the word there and in lieu thereof, insert the phrase his, does, her. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. For number five committee amendments, still on page five, line 30, between the words of and all, delete the article the 
I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Meeting none adopted. On page six, line three, between the acronym in parentheses P and dash P and P, uh, 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 P and P, and the word department, delete the conjunction and an ISO move, Mr. President. Any objection? Meeting none adopted. Uh, still on page six, line four, after the acronym in parentheses D and D, insert the punctuation mark, comma. And phrase and the phrase and the Department of Tourism, uh, 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 parenthesis DOT, I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing not adopted. On page 9, line 24, on the section title, between the words area and fund, insert the phrase integrated protected area. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing not adopted. Still on page 9, line 25, between the words area and fund, insert the phrase integrated protected area. I so move, Mr. President. Wait. Uh, page 9? No. Yeah, page 9, line 25. Line 25. Between the words area and area fund, and insert, fund. fund. Insert, insert the phrase integrated protected area. All right. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Still on page 9, line 25, after the word fund, insert the acronym in parentheses TNBA-IPAF. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Still on page 9, line 28, delete the word fund and in lieu thereof, insert the acronym TNBA-IPAF. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. On page 10, line 7, between the words all and other, insert the word taxes and. I so move, Mr. President. Line? Page 10, line 17. Line 17. All right. Yeah. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. Lastly, on page 11, lines 3 and 4, delete the phrase with the provisions. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing not adopted. There are no further committee amendments, Mr. President. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. And Mr. President, with that, I move to close the period of amendments. Any objection? Hearing not, period of amendments closed. President, uh, I move that we approve on second reading House Bill number 948. Any objection? Hearing none. House Bill 9488, taking into consideration Senate Bill 1711, is approved on second reading. Thank you, Mr. President. <laughs> consideration of measures suspended. Yes, congratulations to Ma'am Cynthia. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. President, Mr. Majority Leader, <laughs> Leader, and all our members. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank President, you. moving forward, I move that we have, uh, consider House Bill number 7841. So move. 7841. Any objection? Hearing none, consideration is in order. President, no member wishes to interpolate the school measure. It's a it's college. I move that we close the period of interpolation. Any objection? Hearing none, period of interpolation is closed. President, move to recognize the sponsor and open the period of amendments if there are any. And who is this sponsor? I sent to Joel Villanueva, my Villanueva is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. There are no committee or uh, individual amendments as far as uh, this representation is concerned. Therefore, move to close the period of amendment. Hearing no objection, period of amendments closed. Uh, Mr. President, uh, before I, I move to approve it on second reading, may I just clarify from Senator Villanueva, Mr. Mm -hmm. President, I have a list here from number... 30, which is this one, to number 55, wala pong amendments ito. We can move faster. Yes, that, wala po lahat. Okay, so that for, therefore I can move faster, Mr. President. Uh, with that, Mr. President, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 7841. Number 30? Yes, number 30 po hanggang number 55. Uh, wala pong amendments para mabilis lang po ang ano. Uh, okay. Yes. We can move for the closure of interpolation and amendments at the same at time. At the same time, yes, sir. All right. Uh, so 9075, what? Second reading? Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. Any objection? Any none? Approve the second reading. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I move to suspend the situation the same. Situation suspended. And just for the record, Mr. President, uh, for all our colleagues that are listening in, these are all universities and colleges. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, all, all universities and colleges. So moving forward, Mr. President, I move that we consider House Bill number 9075. Uh, isn't that what we approved now? No, sir. We uh, approved uh, the, other the other one. one. All right. Seven four. Uh, Any seven objection? Four. Hearing that consideration is in order. Thank you very much, Mr. President. This is in the province of Cebu, Pinamanguhan, Namangahan. Uh, Mr. President, no member wishes to interpolate the measure, and there are also no amendments. I move to we close the period of interpolation and amendment. Any objection? With the permission of the body. Hearing none. Pe period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 9075. Any objection? Hearing none, 9075 is approved on second reading. President, Thank move you. to consideration. Consideration is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we uh, consider House Bill number 9150. Consideration 9150. It's a campus in Balamban, Cebu. I move that uh, there being no members who wish to interpolate and uh, propose amendments, we move that we close the period of interpolation and amendments with the permission of the body. Hearing no objection, the period of interpolations and amendments are closed. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 9150. Hearing no objection, 9150 is approved on second reading. I move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the measure suspended. Mr. President, I move that we consider House Bill number 9179. Hearing no objection, 9179 for consideration is in order. This is in the, the province of Cagayan State University. Mr. President, no member wishes to interpolate and propose amendments. I move that we close the period of interpolation and amendments with the permission of the body. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Move to uh, approve on second reading House Bill number 9179. Hearing no objection, 9179 is approved on second reading. I move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 9347. Any objection? Hearing none, 9347 is consideration in order. It's a university in Mar Mar Maragon, <clears throat> Cavite. Mr. President, uh, there being no member wishes to interpolate and propose any amendments, I move to close the period of interpolation and amendments with the permission of the body. Hearing no objections, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Mr. President, I uh, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 9347. Any objection? Hearing none. 9347 is approved on second reading. Mr. President, move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 8131. Hearing no objection, consideration of A131 is in order. This is a establishment of a PUP in Nueva Ecija. Mr. President, no member wishes to interpolate and propose amendments. With the permission of the body, I move to close the period of interpolation and amendments. Hearing no objection, period of interpolation and amendments are closed. Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 8131. Hearing no objection, um, 8.31 is approved with second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we assume consideration on House Bill number 8040. Any objection? Hearing none, 8040 is consideration in order. Uh, Mr. President, this is a college in Cebu. I move with the permission of the body, no member wishes to interpolate, and I may propose amendments. I move that we close the period of interpolation amendment. Any objection? Hearing none, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 8040. Hearing no objection, 8040 is approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Mr. President, I move to be resume consideration of House Bill number 7879. Hearing no objection, consideration of 7879 is in order. This is in Eastern, Universe, uh, Eastern Philippines University, Mr. President. <laughs> I move that being a member, we should interpolate and uh, Propose amendments with the permission of the body. I move to close the period of amendments, interpolation, and amendment. There are no objections because the period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Mr. President, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 7879. Hearing no objection, 7879 is approved on second reading. Move to suspend. Situation is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume <laughs> consideration House Bill number 8985. Any objection? Hearing none, 8985 consideration is in order. President, no member wishes to interpolate nor propose amendments. I, uh, I, with the permission of the body, I move that we close period of interpolation amendments. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. 
I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 8985. Any objection? There being none, 8985 is approved on second reading. President, I move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure suspended. Mr. President, I move that we approve consideration of House Bill number 9180. Any objection? Hearing none, 9180 is in order. Mr. President, uh, no, be, there being no member wishes to interpolate, move to close the period of interpolation and amendments as there are no amendments. The Hearing period. no objection, period of interpolation and amendments are closed. Move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 9180. Hearing no objection, 9180 is approved on second reading. Mr. President, I move that we suspend consideration. Consideration suspended. Mr. President, I move that we assume consideration of House Bill number 5738. Any objection? Hearing none, 5738 is in order. Mr. President, there being no member to interpolate, move to close the period of interpolation and no amendments, close the period of amendments. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 5738. Any objection? Hearing none, 5738 is approved on second reading. Mr. President, move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we approve on second, uh, I mean, sorry, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 5739. Hearing no objection, consideration of 5739 in order. Mr. President, uh, there being no member who wishes to interpolate and amend, I move to close the period of amendments and interpolation. So moved. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 5739. Hearing no objection, 5739 is approved on second reading. Move to suspend. Consideration suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 4957. Hearing no objection, consideration of 4957. President, no member wishes to interpolate and amend the matter or move to close the period of interpolation and amendments. Hearing no objection, period of interpolation, saying amendments are closed. Move to approve on second reading, Mr. President. 4957, hearing no objection, is approved on second reading. I suspend consideration of the <clears throat> Consideration suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 4958. Any objection, hearing none, consideration of 4958 in order. President, I move that uh, there be no members who wish to interpolate and uh, amend. Move to close the period of interpolation amendment. Hearing no objection, period of interpolation and amendments are closed. Mr. President, I move that we approve on second reading House Bill number 4958. Um, second reading? Yes. yes uh, motion is approved. Mr. President, uh, there are moved to suspend. Consideration suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 6974. Any objection? Hearing none. 6974 is in order. Mr. President, there being no member wish to interpolate and amend, I move to close the period of interpolation amendments. Permit Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Mr. President, move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 6970. <laughs> Hearing no objection, 6974 is approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration is suspended. Mr. President, move that we resume consideration, House Bill number 7017. Uh, hearing no objection, 7017 uh, in order. Mr. President, with no member wish to interpolate, move to close the period of interpolation, no amendments as well as well as period of interpolation. Um, hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 7017. Hearing no objection, 7017 is approved on second reading. Mr. President, uh, move to suspend. Consideration suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 7018. 7018. And hearing no objection, consideration of 7018. President, that there be no interpolations or amendments, move to close the period of interpolation. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 7018. Hearing no objection, 7018, approve on second reading. Move to suspend. Situation suspended. President, I move that we consider House Bill number 7447. Hearing no objection, 747 consideration. President, there be no member to interpolate, move to close the period of interpolation as well as period of amendments. Permission to vote. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. President, move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 7447. Hearing no objection, 7447 is approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration is suspended. President, I move that we approve, I uh, will consider rather, House Bill number 7516. Any hearing no objection, 7516 in order. President, there being no interpolators or amendments, move to close the period of interpolation amendment. Hearing no objection, period of interpolation, and amendments are closed. Move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 7516. Hearing no objection, 7516 approved second reading. 
Move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 7695. Hearing no objection, uh, 7695 is uh, considered. Mr. President, uh, um, can we move to close the period of interpolation amendments? Is there none? Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 7695. Hearing no objection, 7695 is approved on second reading. I move to suspend. <laughs> Consideration suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 7969. Uh, hearing no objection, 7969 is in order. Move to close the period of interpolation amendments as there are not. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Move to approve on second reading, 7969. Hearing no objection, 7969 is approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we uh, resume consideration of Bill number 8446. Hearing no objection, 8446 in order. There be no interpolators or amendments, move to close interpolation and amendments. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Move to approve with second reading, House Bill number 8446. Hearing no objection, 8446, approve with second reading. Uh, move to suspend. Situation is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 8453. Consideration of 8453 is in order, no objection. There be no amendments and in interpolations. Move to close the period of interpolation amendment. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 8453. Hearing no objection, 8453 is approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration suspended. Mr. President, I move that we assume consideration House Bill number 8656. Any objection? Hearing none, 8656 in order. President, uh, move to close the period of interpolation amendments. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 8656. Hearing no objections, 8656 approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we assume consideration of House Bill number 9342. Uh, hearing no objection, consideration of 9342 is in order. President, I move that we close the period of interpolation amendments as there are none. Hearing no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. Mr. President, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 9342. Hearing no objection, 9342 is approved on second reading. Mr. President, finally, move that we resume consideration House Bill number 10283. Hearing no objection, consideration of 10283 is in order. Mr. President, I move that we there be no interpolators or amendments, move to close both. There being no objection, period of interpolations and amendments are closed. President, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10283. Hearing no objection, 10283 is approved on second reading. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, move to suspend. Consideration suspended. Uh, okay, Mr. President, I'll just ask the sponsor. You have five other measures. One, two, three, four, five, six. These have amendments, uh, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Yes, uh, Your Honor. Have you have amendments. Do Great. It, uh, uh, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Mr. Is, session suspended for uh, one minute. Mr. President, uh, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 3738. There being no member wishes to interpolate, move to close the period of interpolation, Your Honor. Without Sorry. objection, House Bill 3738 is approved on second reading. <laughs> I close the period of, inter uh, period of interpolation. is closed. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, I move that we open the period of amendments and recognize the sponsor for amendments. Sponsor is recognized, uh, Senator Villanueva. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. President, I, I don't, I don't seem to uh, 
uh, locate the particular number on my uh, screen. Oh, and this is three seven three eight. Three seven three eight. My apologies. It's item number fifty six, sir. By your honors. Ah, does this have an amendment, Your Honor, Mr. President, Mr. Chairman of the committee? House Bill number 3738, Senator Joel. No amendment. I can't hear you, sir. Uh, may I ask for one minute suspension, Majority Leader? I'm sorry. Okay, Session. Yes, um, Mr. President, I withdraw. Uh, I move that we suspend consideration of Bill number 3738, as I believe a colleague of ours will want to interpolate this measure. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 3738 suspended. Yes, Mr. President, uh, I move that we resume consideration of Bill number 9518. Without objection, consideration of House Bill number 9518 is in order. President, no member wishes to interpolate the measure. Move to close the period of interpolation. Without Thanks. without objection, period of interpolation is closed. Huh. I'll just finish this. I think we might do with that. Yeah, I'll just finish the batangas. Yeah. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. President. Mr. President, um, I think we close the period of interpolation. I move to close the period of interpolation of the measure. No member wishes to interpolate. Without objection, period of interpolation is closed. President, move to open a period of amendments. And if I may, I, I can read the amendments on behalf of the sponsor as I have the list, Mr. President. Majority so, Leader will uh, proceed with the period with the amendments on behalf of the sponsor. Thank you. On page 4, line 48 on section 11, administration, insert a new paragraph which shall read as follows. The university president shall be assisted by the vice presidents who shall be designated by the Board of Regents upon the recommendation of the president. Subject only to certain limitations insofar as del delegated by the president of the university and authorized board of regents. So moves. Any objection? Hearing none. Mr. President, on page 4, line 53 on section 11, administration insert a new paragraph which shall read as follows. The chancellor shall be assisted by the vice chancellors who shall likewise be designated by the board of regents upon the recommendation of the president of the university. Subject only to certain limitations in so far as defined in the University Administrative Manual. So moved. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment adopted. Finally, on line 14, on page 14 rather, 
line 29, section 37, transitory provisions, delete the entire section and in lieu thereof, opt, adopt in total section 37 of, the, of Senate Bill number 2111 and add the phrase subject to one reappointment provided that such a reappointment is in pursuance to the guidelines stated in section 11 of CHED Memorandum Order number 16. We shall now read as follows. Section 37, transitory provisions. To provide strategic direction and leadership as the Batangas State University transitions transition to its pioneer status as the National Engineering University and to ensure that the attainment of its distinctive and purposeful mandate as such as declared and provided for in this act. The incumbent president of the Batangas State University shall serve as a new, uh, a new term as its first president as the, as the National Engineering University, subject to one reappointment, provided that such reappointment is on pursuant to the guidelines stated in Section 11 of CHED Memorandum Order Number 16, Series of 2009. So moved. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment adopted. There being no other amendments, I move to close the period of amendment. Without objection, period of amendment is closed. President, I move to approve. On second reading, House Bill Number 9518. Without objection, House Bill 9518 is approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration the same. Period of the, the consideration of House Bill number 9518 is suspended. Yes, Mr. President. I'll ask for a one minute suspension, President. Yes, suspended one minute. All the the bill. Uh, I move that we. This is the uh, House Bill number thirty-seven, thirty-eight. I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number thirty-seven, thirty-eight. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight. That's number fifty-six on their item. Consideration of House Bill number thirty-seven, thirty-eight is in order. Mr. President, I move that we open the period of interpolation, recognize the sponsor, Senator Villanueva, and to ask a few questions, Senator Pia Caetano. Sponsor Senator Villanueva is recognized as well as uh, Senator Cayetano. Thank you, Mr. President. I, I know our, our dear sponsor isn't feeling well, so this is not, um, this is more like a manifestation of my question. So his honor and his team can just take note of my questions, find the answers, and uh, you know, they can even submit it to my staff, um, but I would like to put those answers on record when they are available. Um, but we don't want to inconvenience our colleague at this point, so let me just proceed. Um, Your Honours, Mr. President, there's history uh, here because I was the chairman of the Committee on Education. When this first came up, very similar issue, um, it, in, it started with the desire, and it was a very successful endeavor, um, it was an, a successful amalgamation between MUST and MOSCAT. Let me just read it for the, de the details. No? So, the University of Science and Technology of Southern Philippines is a state university established in 2016 by virtue of Republic Act 10919 through the amalgamation of Mindanao University of Science and Technology, MUST, and Cagayan de Oro City, and Min Misamis Oriental and Misamis Oriental State College of Agriculture and Technology, MOSCAT, in Claveria, Misamis Oriental. So, Your Honor, that, that was that law, RA, RA 10919. And even at that time, the desire of the authors and uh, the late President Rotoras, who had become a good friend because he was the president of PASUK and the uh, he was actually murdered in office, uh, Mr. President, um, and I went there to, to express the uh, sentiments of the Senate uh, because, as I said, he had become a good friend representing PASUK. Um, they really desired to call it USTP, University of Science, University of Science and Technology of the Philippines. But the position then of CHED um, was that uh, they, they would, and I think it, it's not an unreasonable request, 
uh, that to be called the University of Science and Technology of the Philippines would mean that you are the best science and technology university in the Philippines. Kasi ho, bakit naman natin babansagang the University of Science and Technology of the Philippines if you're not the best? It's as simple as that. And at that point, um, uh, definitely, they, I, I believe that they were recognized as the best, if not one of the very best, in southern um, Philippines. And that's why the name was, the name became University of Science Technology of Southern Philippines. Pero nandun nga ho yung history that they wanted to be called University of Science and Technology of the Philippines. So here we are, fast forward, and I understand from my staff that there was no opposition on the side of CHED. Now, I do not know if um, the current uh, leadership of CHED is not aware of the issue or if this issue has been resolved. Are they the best? So that's all I need to know from uh, our... Um, distinguished uh, sponsor, are they the best? Because if they are, by all means, I will be the number one supporter to give them that name, if only in memory of my dear friend, the late President Rotoras, who really worked so hard to build up that university. And I, I need to put on record that I have had various um, partnerships with the university because as an athlete and as an advocate for women empowerment and sports, I actually hosted a lot of my events in a uh, USTSP. So, ako dapat talaga yung mauuna to, um, to support this. But I also, be, I also need to be true to our calling and, and um, you know, give due recognition uh, to the universities as required. So, on that note, um, I don't even have notes. But in general, I would just like uh, to be provided with evidence that they are the best science and technology uh, institution in the whole country. What are their what are their standards? Uh, what 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 are the standards that they set, and have they achieved those standards? I, I would just surmise, for example, in the area of research, are in are they one of the top research um, SUCs when it comes to research? If so, what what areas? I mean, there there are many fields of science. What what areas? I'd like to know. Uh, have these been published in both local and international? Um, uh, what do you call this? Um, journal. Thank you. Thank you, Majority Floor Leader. And then, um, uh, the, uh, have they excelled in board examinations? Uh, are there are there graduates sought after in in companies that excel in that that focus on science and technology? How about their professors? Are their professors the creme de la creme uh, when it comes to science and technology? Do they have one of the highest number of professors with masteral and PhDs. So off the top of my head, Your Honor, those are some of my questions. And uh, uh, I, I don't want uh, his own, I see his honor, um, the sponsor vigorously nodding his head, don't exert too much effort. <laughs> I know you can hear my questions. Um, and maybe I'll submit a few more. Maybe his honor's office can also come up with similar questions. Because if the answer to my questions is yes, they are on the top, then I want to co-sponsor this measure, Your Honor. If not, then I, I will beg for the sponsor and our colleagues' um, reasonable understanding as to who do we bestow this name upon. Maybe it's really for them, but maybe it will come in a few years when they achieve certain milestones. I don't know. Those are just the po uh, questions I want to pose. And on that note, um, a Majority Floor Leader, I can, I can um, ask for a suspension to give His Honor time to get the answers. Thank you. Mr. President, Mr. President, uh, Mr. President. Uh, the sponsor perhaps would like to respond, subject likewise to the submission of the documents required by uh, Senator yes. Cayetano. Yes, just very quick, uh, Mr. President. I uh, totally understand where our distinguished colleague, Senator Pia Cayetano, is coming from. It's uh, very reasonable, very valid. Um, I wish I would be able to answer right away the uh, questions are uh, being raised here, but uh, let me just put on record during the time that we were deliberating on this uh, particular measure, uh, Ched was there and uh, other uh, uh, the executive director of Ched was there, if I if I recall it right. And uh, uh, unfortunately, Mr. President, we we didn't get anything from them as to uh, the. Uh, the uh, standards that they are setting in uh, as far as uh, getting the title is a uh, concern. But uh, again, we understand and uh, 
we will comply with the request of our dear colleague. It's again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's very valid and reasonable. And uh, we will uh, uh, provide with uh, perhaps some documents or journals or whatever we can uh, get uh, from the, uh, uh, this uh, particular institution and uh, also from the Commission on Higher Education. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, dear colleague. Thank you, Senator Villanueva. Majority Leader. Mr. President, I move to suspend consideration of the measure. Consideration of House Bill number 3738 is suspended. Thank you. Um, so uh, would the uh, good uh, sponsor still want to take up the others or we'll take it up? We can move it tomorrow, sir. Uh, House Bill uh, number 58, 59, 60, and 61. What does the sponsor say? I don't mind, yes. Mr. President. Uh, it's your call, Mr. Majority Leader. I, will, I am at... Uh, your disposal, ah, Mr. President. You, you have already your, no, your amendments na sign na po? Ah, wala pa, sir. Wala pa. This time, sorry. Ah, okay. Wala pa. This Bukas time. na lang siguro. Okay. Yeah, tomorrow na lang. That, kasi mapapagod ako po kung ako na magbabasa ng amendments. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Thank you, Mr. Majority. No, it's either. okay. Yeah, no problem. Thank you. So, uh, moving forward with the agenda, I, I saw that Senator Grace Poe is back. Um, uh, may, may, may I just yes, I'm here. I'm here, Majority, uh, Mr. President. One minute suspension. Yes, one minute suspension. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. So President, moving back on our agenda, uh, as she's already here to discuss on the, co the protection to consumers and financial products and services. Mr. So President, I move that we assume consideration of Senate Bill number 2488. Without objection, consideration of Senate Bill 2488 is in order. Mr. So President, uh, may I recognize the sponsor, Senator Grace Poe, and I'd like to ask my colleagues if there are any interpolators on the line for the uh, uh, an act affording more protection to consumers of financial uh, products and services. Senator Grace, all the sponsors recognize. And the I minority have, see president. the hand of the minority leader, uh, Senator Mr. Trilog. Mr. Yeah. President, uh, I'm sorry, we have other pending uh, local bills. The FCPA is a little bit uh, okay. more detailed. Can all we right. take that up tomorrow? Or okay. I, don't, I, My I think that was what uh, the minority leader was going to suggest, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, yes. Okay, I thought when I got the, the, the note, it said page three. So I thought this is going to start from the first, your first bill. Okay, I move to suspend consideration of the measure. Go on consideration of Senate Bill number 2488 is suspended. Thank you very much, Mr. President. So we'll just go to all the local, uh, these, are, these are franchises, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. President, I move that we, I may ask, the, I may ask this response before we take it up. Uh, Mr. President, uh, are all these measures, do all these measures have amendments? Uh, Mr. President, uh, there are actually, except for five, all of them, so 30, I suppose, oh no, 30, uh, 33, 33 have no, uh, 33 have no amendments, and then the rest of the five, Oh, I'm talking about the little. franchises. The franchises all have amendments, Mr. President, right? No, not all, not all. Oh, out of the 38, only 33 have amendments. I mean, only only five have amendments. More than 30 have no amendments. So perhaps, Majority Leader, we can start with the measures without amendments to uh, abbreviate. May we know, Mr. President, to, to uh, speed up the process, may we know the uh, bills that have amendments, ma'am? Uh, the, the ones that have amendments are... Uh, I think I have it. I think I have it, uh, Madam. Yeah. House Bill 8654. Uh, uh, House Bill 8654. House Bill... Uh, sorry. I have it now, Madam Sponsor. If you don't... Okay. You can move it. I believe it's uh, number 9 uh, to number 23. In the in the in the uh, order of business, in our agenda, I have no amendment. Yes. Uh, okay. So, well. Anyway, just just uh, go along, Mr. President, and, and I will okay. see if it's yeah. 
What right. house bill is it? Yes. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 10192. Without objection, consideration of House Bill number 10192 is in order. President, no member wishes to interpolate the measure and proposed amendments. I close, to, close the period of interpolation amendments with the permission of the body. Without objection, period of amendments closed. Period of interpolation is closed. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10192. Without objection, House Bill 101. 9-2 is hereby approved and second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration of House Bill 10192 is suspended. President, I move that we issue consideration of House Bill number 10196. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 10196 is in order. President, there being no amendments and uh, interpolations, move to close period of interpolation and amendments. Without objection, periods of interpolation and amendments by close. Move to approve and second reading House Bill number 10196. Without objection, House Bill number 10196 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Because I move that we pursue consideration of House Bill number 10123. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 10123 is in order. Mr. President, I move that we close the period of interpolation amendments as there are none. Without objection, period of interpolation and amendments are closed. President move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10123. There being no objection, House Bill 10123 is hereby approved on second reading. To suspend. Consideration of the measure is suspended. President move to approve, uh, assume consideration of House Bill number 10124. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 10124 is in order. Move to close period of interpolation amendments as there are now. Permission to buy. Without objection, periods of interpolation and amendments are hereby closed. Move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10124. Without objection, House Bill 10124 is approved on second reading. President, move to close, uh, to in, uh, uh, suspend. Consideration of the measure is suspended. President, I move that we assume consideration House Bill number 10125. Without objection, uh, consideration of House Bill 10125 is in order. President, I move that we close the period of interpolation amendments that there are none. Without objection, periods of interpolation amendments are by close. Move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10125. Without objection, House Bill 10125 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend. Period. Consideration of House Bill 10125 is suspended. President, I move to approve, I mean, move to assume consideration rather of House Bill number 10211. Without objection, consideration of one, House Bill 10211 is in order. President, there be no interpolated amendments. Move to close the period of interpolation amendments. Periods of interpolation and amendment, amendments are closed. President, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10211. Any objection without objection? House Bill number 10211 is hereby approved on second reading. President, move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. President, move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 9424. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 9424 is in order. Mr. President, I move that we close the period of interpolation amendments as there are none. There being no objection, consider period of interpolation as well as the period of amendments are hereby closed. Mr. President, I move that we approve on second reading. House Bill number uh, 9424. Without objection, House Bill 9424 is hereby approved on second reading. President, I move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the motion is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 9438. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 9438 is in order. Mr. President, I move to close period of interpolation amendments as there are none. Without objection, periods of interpolation amendments are by closed. Mr. President, I move that we approve on second reading House Bill number 9438. Any objection? Hearing none. House Bill. 9438 is hereby approved on second reading. I move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the motion is both measure is suspended. Mr. President, Mr. President, move to uh, resume consideration of House Bill number 9439. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 9439 is in order. Mr. President, there being no interpolation amendments, move to close period of interpolation amendment. Periods of interpolation and amendments are hereby closed. Move to approve on second reading House Bill number 9439. Without objection, House Bill 9439 
is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the measure, House Bill 9439 is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 10182. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 10182 is in order. Mr. President, I move that we close the period of interpolation amendments as there are none. Periods of interpolation amendments without objections are closed. Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10182. Any objection? Without objection, House Bill 10182 is hereby approved on second reading. Okay. President, move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure is suspended. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 10182. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 10183 is in order. President, uh, move to close the period of interpolation amendments. Is there none? There being no objection, periods of interpolation amendments are hereby closed. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 1018. Without objection, House Bill number 1018 is hereby approved on second reading. I move to suspend considerations. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. President, I move to be approved on, I mean, rather, resume consideration House Bill number 10193. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 10193 is in order. President, move to close the period of interpolation amendments. Is there none? There being no objection, House the, uh, period of amendments as well as the inter interpolations are hereby closed. Let's move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10193. There being no objection, House Bill number 10193 is hereby approved on second reading. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration House Bill number. We, 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 we have to suspend first. Yes, suspend consideration. Uh, house, house, uh, consideration of House Bill 10193 is hereby suspended. suspended. President, move to resume consideration of House Bill number 10193. Without objection, House Bill number 10194 is in order. President, I move that we close period of interpolation amendments as there are none. There being no objections, how, uh, period of interpolation as well as amendments for House Bill 10194 are hereby closed. President, I move that we approve on second reading House Bill number 10194. Without objection, House Bill number 10194 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration the same. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 10195. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 10195 is in order. Mr. President, um, I move that we close the period of interpolation amendments as there are now. Without objection, periods of interpolation as well as the amendments are by close. President, I move that we approve on second reading House Bill number 1019. Without objection, House Bill number 10195 is hereby approved on second reading. President, I move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the measure is suspended. President, I move that we resume consideration House Bill number 10197. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 10197 is in order. President, I move that we close period of interpolation amendments as there are not. Without objection, periods of interpolation as well as amendments are hereby closed. As the move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 10197. There being no objection, House Bill number 10197 is hereby approved on second reading. Mr. President, I move that we suspend consideration of this. Consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. And my dear sponsor, I believe these others have amendments, correct? So I will go yes. for the period of amendments. Mr. President, I move to resume consideration of House Bill number 9384. Consideration of House Bill 9384 is in order. Mr. President, I move that we close the period of interpolation as there are none. Period of interpolation is closed without, without objection. Mr. President, I move to open the period of amendments and recognize the sponsor, Senator Pope. Sponsor, Senator Grace Boy is hereby recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. For House Bill 9384, on page 1, line 14, add a new section 2 to read as follows. Section 2, Section 4 of Republic Act No. 11538 is hereby amended to read as follows. Pursuant to Republic Act No. 8370, otherwise known as the Children's Television Act of 1997, the grantee shall allot a minimum of 15% of the daily total airtime of each broadcasting network or station to child-friendly shows within its regular programming. Renumber the, section, the succeeding sections accordingly. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none. Amendment is adopted. 
There are no other amendments, Mr. President. Majority Leader. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to close the period of amendment. Without objection, period of amendment is closed. Move to approve uh, second reading, House Bill number 9384. There being no objection, House Bill number 9384 9 is hereby approved on second reading. President, move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 10212. Without objection, consideration of House Bill number 1012 is in order. President, the member wishes to interpret Move the close period of interpolation. Without objection, period, periods of interpolation and amendments are hereby closed. President, move to uh, uh, open the period of amendment and recognize the sponsor for the amendment. I, I reconsider, the chair reconsider, the, reconsider uh, the earlier uh, statement, a uh, period of amendment is open. The Thank sponsor, you, Senator Grace Boy, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. From page 3, line 46, to page 4, line 2, delete the entire section 11 on the dispersal of ownership. Renumber the succeeding sections accordingly. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, said amendment is adopted. There are no other amendments, Mr. President. Move to close the period of amendments, Mr. President. Period of amendments without objection is hereby closed. Mr. President, uh, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10212. Without objection, House Bill number 10212 is hereby approved on second reading. Mr. President, move to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is suspended. Moving forward, Mr. President, I move that we assume consideration of House Bill number 8971. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 8971 is in order. Mr. President, I move that we, close, we move to close the period of amendment, uh, interpolation as there are none. Without objection, period of interpolation is hereby closed. Move to open the period of amendments and recognize the sponsor. Senator Grace for the sponsor is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. On page 5, lines 15 to 18, delete the entire section 9 on the renewal or extension of franchise. Renumber the sections accordingly. I so move, Mr. President. There are no other amendments. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. Mr. President, I move no. that. Uh, uh, no. Majority Leader? No more amendments, Mr. President. Uh, there are no. One minute yeah. suspension. Uh, no. There are no more amendments. The chair would like to clarify from the sponsor. Are there committee amendments involved here? Oh, um, I'm sorry. Again, in 8971, going back, I... Yes, yes. I, there's one more. Uh, on page 6, line 32... Majority right leader, so, so we reopen the period of amendment. Yes, Mr. President. Yes. Uh, on, page, on page 6, line 32, replace the word common with outstanding capital. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. Um, on page 7, starting on line 8, delete the second provi proviso that begins with the word provided and ends with the word workforce in line 11. On the same line 11, replace the word no. finally with the word further. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. On the same page, lines 17 to 20, delete the second sentence that starts with the phrase, in addition. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. There are no other amendments, uh, Mr. President. Well, Mr. President, move to close the period of amendments. There being no other amendments, period of amendment is hereby closed. President, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 8971. Without objection, House Bill number 8971 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Mr. President, move to resume consideration House Bill number 8971. Without objection, consideration of House Bill number 8975. 75 is in order. President, no, I move to close the period of interpolation as there is none.
Period of interpolation and amendments. No, period of interpolation is hereby closed without objections. Move to open the period of amendments. Recognize the sponsors. Senator Gray Spot, the sponsors recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. On page four, lines 25 to 28, delete the entire section nine on the renewal or extension of franchise. Renumber the sections accordingly. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. On page five, line 28, replace the word common with outstanding capital. I so move, Mr. President. Replace the word common with outstanding capital. Any objection? Hearing none. Amendment is adopted. On page six, starting on line five, delete the second prov proviso that begins with the word provided and ends the word workforce in line eight. On the same line eight, replace the word finally with the word further. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, adopted. On the same page, lines 14 to 17, delete the second sentences as the second sentence that starts with the phrase in addition. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment adopted. There are no other amendments, Mr. President. Majority Leader. President, I move that we approve and second, I close the period of amendment. Without objection, period of amendments closed. President, move to approve and second reading House Bill number 8975. Any objection? Hearing none, House Bill number 8975 is hereby approved on second okay. reading. Move to suspend consideration of the second. Consideration of House Bill number 8975 is suspended. Let's move to uh, resume consideration of House Bill number 10169. Without objection, consideration of House Bill 10169 is in order. Move to close period of amendments, Mr. President, as there is none. A period of interpolation. Without objection, period of interpolation is hereby closed. Any Let's amendments, to open, uh, Majority Leader? Yes, move to open the period of amendments and recognize the sponsor. Sponsor Center Grace Boy is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. On page four, line 25, replace the word common with outstanding capital. I so move, Mr. President. Page four. Line 25. Line 25. Replace the word common with outstanding capital. I so move. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment adopted. There are, no other, there are no other committee amendments uh, or individual amendments. No individual Most amendment. Period, period of amendments, President. Without objection, period of amendments hereby close. President, I move that we approve on second reading House Bill number 10169. Without objection, House Bill number 10169 of committee and committee report num of committee report number 392 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll ask our dear sponsor, Senator. Uh, uh, Grace Paul to rest a bit and we'll just uh, uh, take up the bills of Senator Gacheli and go back to you um, <laughs> with your permission. So yes. after this, we're going to Majority leader. number 62. Where are we now? President, number 62 of our uh, agenda. These are schools. Oh, 61 rather. Number 61, sorry. Number 61 on page 12 until... Uh, these are the bills of Senator Gachelian. These are schools. My, my, no amendments, Mr. President, if I may ask. None of them have amendments. My page here is 13, not 12. Number 61? Yes. Okay, so I can it's 12, sorry. <laughs> okay, number 61. Majority Leader. With the permission of our minority floor leader and the body, uh, uh, Ito Frank, if it's okay, may I ask for one minute suspension? Session suspended for one minute.
Question resume. Mr. President, with the permission of the body, these are several enumerated uh, elementary schools. Uh, there being no, I move that uh, House Bill Number One Zero Three Four Five. We close the period of interpolation and amendments for the aforementioned measures. House Bill Number One Zero Three Four Five. House Bill Number One Zero One Eight Five. House Bill Number One Zero One Nine Zero. House Bill Number One Zero Two Nine Zero. House Bill number 10293, House Bill number 10326, House Bill number 10328, and House Bill number 10291, House Bill number 10292, House Bill number 770, House Bill number 81. Ah, sorry, Sumo Bernaco. Until what day? Until which one? 10292. Until 1029. Number 69, your uh, <laughs> num magic number. Yes, until 10292, Mr. President. Uh, with the permission of the body, I move to close the period of interpolation amendments for these aforesaid measures. Is there none? Are there objections for the closure of the period of interpolation as well as amendments for 11 measures emanating from the lower house? Uh, there being Mr. none. Mr. President, there, these are nine measures. Nine, nine measures. measures. Yeah. Nine measures coming from the lower house. Uh, there is a motion here to close the periods of interpolation as well as amendments. Any objections? Hearing none. Same is approved. Thank you, Mr. President. Now we will take it up one by one for second reading. Mr. President, move to uh, uh, approve House Bill number 10345 for second reading. There is a motion here to approve House Bill 103. Three, four, five, and objections, hearing none. The same is hereby approved. Move to suspend consideration of the measure. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Mr. President, move to uh, approve House Bill number 10185. So moved. Without objection, House Bill number 10185 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the measure. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Mr. President, move to approve on second reading. House Bill number 10190. Without objection, House Bill number 10190 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure is suspended. As move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 10290. Without objection, House Bill number 10290 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the measure is suspended. As we move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 10290. Without objection, House Bill number 1093 is hereby approved. 102, on sec brother, 10293. 10290. 1093. 1093. 1093. 1093. Reflective of Committee Report 489 is hereby approved on second reading. Thank you, Mr. President. Move to uh, suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure suspended. Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10326. Without objection, House Bill number 10326 is hereby approved on second reading. I move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure is suspended. Mr. President, I move to uh, approve on second reading House Bill number 10328. Without objection, House Bill number 10328 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the motion, a measure without objection is hereby suspended. Move to approve on second reading House Bill number 10291. Without objection, House Bill 10291 is hereby approved on second reading. Mr. President, uh, I move to suspend consideration of the same. There being no objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Mr. President, I move that we pursue uh, the approve on second reading House Bill number 10292. Without objection, House Bill 10292 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. There being no objection, consideration of House Bill 10292 is hereby suspended. Mr. President, uh, the next item, they have, uh, the next items have uh, amendments, so I will uh, just close the period of um, uh, interpolation. Mr. President, I move to resume consideration of House Bill number 770. So move. Consideration of House Bill number 77. Seven zero is in order. Move to close the period of interpolation, Mr. President. There, are none. there being no objection, period of interpolation is by closed. 
President, I move to recognize the sponsor and open the period of amendments. Thank you, Honorable Senator uh, Sharon Gajalian is hereby recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Floor Leader. On page one, <clears throat> section one, lines one to three, delete the first sentence and replace it with the new sentence to read as follows. There is hereby established a cultural center and museum in the province of Kalinga to be known as the Kalinga Cultural Center and Museum to promote culture and the arts. So move, Mr. President. Without objection, amendment is adopted. On the same page, line three, after the phrase for the, delete the word collection and replace it with the word protection. So move, Mr. President. There an objection, hearing none, amendment is adopted. On page, on the same page, line four, delete the phrase and enhancement and replace it with the phrase presentation and promotion. As a move. There being no objection, amendment is adopted. Still on page one, lines eight to 12, delete the entire section two and replace it with a new section two to read as follows. Section two, the Kalinga Cultural Center and Museum shall be a collaboration between the provincial government of Kalinga and the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, NCC, uh, open parenthesis, NCCA, close parenthesis, with its concerned affiliated cultural agencies and pertinent academic and private sector partners and members of the community with its site, structures, governance, organization, operations, and development to be provided for by mutual agreement between the parties to be executed and published within one open parenthesis, new, Roman numeral one, close parenthesis, year from the effectivity of this act. So move, Mr. Are there objections? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. Thank you. Mr. President, uh, let me just uh, correct myself. It's uh, Arabic numeral one. And uh, you are you are referring now to the last line. Yes, the, the last line. Within your... one, I, I made a mistake, Mr. President. One open parenthesis fig, uh, numeral close parenthesis. Yes. It's not uh, Roman numeral, but Arabic uh, Arabic numeral one. Yes, we note that. Any objection? Hearing none. Same. Amendment is adopted. Still on the same page on section three, lines four and five. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, still on the same page on section three, lines 14 and 15. After the word two, delete the phrase implement its activities and functions, the Kalinga Heritage Museum and Cultural Center, and replace it with the phrase fulfill its purposes and achieve its objectives, the Kalinga Cultural Center and Museum. So move. Right. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment adopted. On page two, line 14, after the word region, delete the period and replace it with the semicolon. So move. An objection, hearing none, amendment is adopted. On the same page, after line 14, insert the new subparagraph H and I to read as follows. Letter H. Conduct performances on Kalinga music, dances, arts, literary, literary works, epics, stories, historical accounts and legends, uh, semicolon N, letter I, carry out any other relevant and appropriate activities. So move. Are there objections, hearing none, amendments adopted? On the same page, line 14, on the same page, section four, line 17, after the word construction, delete the phrase N, establishment, and replace it with the phrase or establishment, or both. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment adopted. On the same page, line 18, delete the name Kalinga Heritage Museum and Cultural Center and replace it with the name Kalinga Cultural Center and Museum. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. Still on page two, on section five, line 21, delete the name National Commission for Culture and the Arts and replace it with the acronym NCCA. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. Still on the same page, on section 6, line 26, after the preposition with, insert the phrase, the provincial government of Kalinga, 
comma other. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, <coughs> amendments adopted. On the same page and line after the word government, insert the phrase and private stakeholders. I so move, Mr. President. Without objection, amendments adopted. Still on page two on section seven, line 29, before the word this, insert the phrase notwithstanding the non-issuance of the implementing rules and regulations. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. Finally, amend the title to read as follows. An act establishing the Kalinga Cultural Center Museum, the province of Kalinga, defining its purposes and objectives and appropriating funds, therefore. So move, Mr. President. So we will no longer mention the city of Tabuk. No more, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. Majority Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. I move that we close period of amendments. Any objection? Hearing none, period of amendments closed. Does it move to approve and second reading House Bill number 7770? Without objection, House Bill number 7770 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. President, move that we resume consideration. House Bill number 8133. Without objection, consideration of House Bill number 8133 is in order. Number, uh, Mr. President, I move that we uh, close the period of interpolation as there is not. Without objection, period of interpolation is closed. Mr. President, I move to open the period of amendments and recognize the sponsor. Honorable Sherwin Gachalian, sponsor, is hereby recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. Thank you, uh, Majority Leader. In lines 9 to 14, delete the entire section 2 and replace it with a new section 2 to read as follows. Section 2, there is hereby established a cultural center and museum in the Gupan City province of Pangasinan to be known as the Edades and Bernal Cultural Center and Museum in honor of the city's distinguished national artist, Victorio <coughs> Edades and Salvador Bernal <coughs> with the general purpose of with the general purpose and objective of presenting and promoting culture and the arts, as well as creative industries in the community. As I move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. In, in line 16 and 17, delete the entire section 3 and replace it with a new section 3 to, lead, to read as follows. Section 3, the Edades and Bernal Cultural, Cultural Center and Museum shall be a collaboration between the city government of the Gupan and the National Commission for Culture and Arts, open parenthesis, NCCA, close parenthesis, with its concerned affiliated cultural agencies and pertinent academic and private sector partners and members of the community with its site, structures, governance, organization, operations, and development to be provided for by mutual agreement between the parties to be executed and published within one, open parenthesis, Arabic numeral one, year from the effectivity of this act. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. After the new section three, insert the new section four to read as follows. Section four, the city government of the Gupan shall provide the land necessary for the construction or establishment or both of the main venue and ancillary offices and facilities of the Edades and Bernal Cultural Center and Museum. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. In line 25, after the preposition with, insert the phrase, the city government of the Gupan, comma other. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. Same line after the phrase of the, change the first letter of the word government from uppercase to lowercase, then insert comma after such word. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. In the same line after the conjunction and, delete the phrase the city government of the Gupan and replace it with the phrase private stakeholders. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. In line 29, before, before the word this, insert the phrase notwithstanding the non-issuance of the implementing rules and regulations. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. Renumber the sections accordingly. So move, Mr. President. Amendment is adopted without objection. Finally, amend the title to read as follows, an act establishing the Edades and Bernal Cultural Center and Museum in the Gupan City, province of Pangasinan, defining its purposes and objectives and appropriating funding for. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? 
Hearing none. Amendment to the title is hereby adopted. That's it, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, Majority Leader. Move to close the period of inter uh, amendments. Without objection, period of amendments closed. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 8132. Without objection, House Bill number 8133 is hereby approved on second reading. President, I move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the motion is measure is suspended. President, I move that we resume consideration on House Bill number 8287. Without objection, House consideration of House Bill number 8287 is in order. President, I move to close period of interpolation as there. Without objection, period of interpolation is Mr. hereby closed. Mr. President. Senator Delon is recognized. Yes, uh, yes. just uh, one question on uh, the period of interpolation on this particular measure, Mr. Yes. President. So we uh, reconsider the closure of the period yes, of interpolation I, I to allow the minority leader to ask the questions. Uh, we recognize you, uh, Senator Delon. Yes. Uh, I, 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 in somewhere in our agenda is a bill which seeks to remain or to rename uh, the, uh, uh, the a cultural center in Cagayan de Oro after our former colleague, our colleague, the That's father correct. of our right. colleague, uh, Aquilino Pimentel, the, 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 Aquilino Pimentel Jr. Uh, in Cagayan de Oro. What is the relation of this? Uh, Yes, Mr. President. That's a great question. If I yes, just realized when right. I glanced over it, it's the Cagayan de Oro Cultural Center. I, I recall we passed a measure, if I'm not mistaken, renaming the uh, yes uh, 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 an amphitheater or a center, cultural center in Cagayan de Oro, Aquilino C. Pimentel Jr. Uh, yes. Yeah, so is there any relation to this, uh, Your Honor, Mr. No, no, no. If I, I think may... it's a convention center. Yes. Ah, okay. So two different buildings. Yeah, yeah. Huh? That convention center has been finished already. This huh? one is a new one, cultural center. So these are different uh, structures. Yes, yes, yes. 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 The convention center, uh, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, is located near the former Lumbia Airport in Cagayan de Oro. Yes, so, so uh, this it's across is, my yes. house, Mr. President. I see it every day. This is a different uh, structure, Mr. President, okay. and uh, it's yet to be uh, constructed. Mr. President. Oh, okay, all right. I hope that clarifies the minority to Yeah. Okay. So there will be two conventions <laughs> center in Cagayan de Oro. This no, is a this cultural, is cultural center. center and museum. Well, uh, museum. 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 Yeah, this is a museum. museum. It's a museum, Mr. No, President. It's, 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 Following the lead of Iloilo, Mr. President, uh, everyone True. wants to put up a museum. And, uh, <laughs> I am just find, trying to find out whether, you know, we have already one, we have one convention center in Cagayan de Oro, which we just renamed uh, 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 Lino Pimentel Junior Convention Center. This um, is a cultural uh, center. center. Yes, Mr. The President. cultural this center and museum. museum. May we know from the sponsor what is the difference? <laughs> Mr. President, the cultural center is um, uh, it's, a, uh, uh, it's a structure that aims to promote uh, local culture, uh, local dances, the arts, the arts, uh, the arts uh, creative arts for that matter. And the museum, this is actually a, uh, just to save on cost, the cultural center will also have a museum component that will uh, host local uh, uh, artifacts, local um, uh, artistic items, Mr. President. So it's a, it's a combination of a cultural center and a museum, Mr. President. And the existing uh, 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 cultural center, which we just renamed uh, Aquilino Pimentel Junior Cultural Center, uh, uh, it, will be, it, will be, it will be hosting the same events? Convention center, yes. you your Honor, if I can be an interlocutor, I was the sponsor of that convention center bill. It's it's supposed to be a venue, a meeting place, yeah. whereas the cultural center is supposed to house artifacts, cultural, yeah. historical, among others, uh, yeah. in Cagayan de Oro. So that's probably the difference, Your Honor. You're going to hold conventions here in the cultural center? No, no. 
No, no, Your Honor. It's cultural center and museum. Okay. Smaller, no? Smaller. I think the convention center is very big, just like yours in Iloilo, but a bit bigger. Yes. Correct, Mr. President. Yes, that's correct. <laughs> no, actually, the cultural center, the convention center of Senator uh, Jelon, which I had an opportunity to uh, visit when he uh, hosted the Philharmonic Orchestra. Yeah, yeah, so that's It's right. a beautiful, I have to put on record, it is a beautiful facility, very large and many, it has many uh, different uh, function halls, differing in sizes. Yung, as, yung amin nga sa Cagayan de Oro, the one that was built by the father of Senator Coco and finished by Senator Coco. Actually, I saw it, it's uh, not as big as the one in Iloilo. Kaya yung peg talaga namin is Iloilo City because of our deep friend. But Mr. President, just to put on record some of the purposes uh, for of this bill is number one, to compile musical notes and lyrics of Higanon, Higaonon. Higaonon and other tribes, uh, ancestral songs, traditional songs and ballads. Then number two, publish and disseminate Cagayan de Oro's literary uh, works, epic stories and historical account. Compile Cagayan de Oro's literature, film and audiovisual recordings and cultural performances in music, dance, oral literature and uh, festival celebration. So a lot of it, uh, um, Mr. President, is to demonstrate Cagayan de Oro's culture, uh, creative arts, as well as uh, uh, its uh, uh, history and traditions, Mr. President. Well, thank you, Mr. President. We have no more questions. Thank you, thank you Minority Leader. Uh, Majority Leader. Move to uh, close the period of interpolation. Without objection, period of interpolation is by close. Uh, President, uh, open the period of amendments and recognize the sponsor. Yeah. Senator. Oh, Senator Gordon, Mr. President, I'm sorry. Uh, Senator Senator Gordon, Gordon, Gordon. Uh, I, I just want to manifest my support for this bill. I've been a great fan of having museums and uh, uh you know centers where we can go back to our roots uh and i'd like to be if the gentleman will permit me to be a co-author of this bill your honor thank you yes, yes it will be an honor mr president yeah. and senator gordon uh will be made uh co uh sponsor, sponsor. actually mr president so, if senator gordon would wish if senator gordon would wish uh we could be made co-sponsors of all the local bills that were sponsored today. Yes, as co-sponsor. Yes, and together with Senator Binay, because she sent me a list also. Together with Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa and Senator Dulon, because it is his uh, last, uh, last few months of work. And I'm sure he would like to associate himself uh, with all these uh, local bills and, of course, our presiding officers. Yes, uh, yes uh, with, the, uh, with the permission of our colleagues, I'd like to be associated with the Kalinga Museum. Yeah. Uh, because I, I visited a site in Rizal, Kalinga, which is uh, called Elephant Hill. Yeah. And th they call that the, the cradle of civilization of the Philippines. Jambang uh, ginawang shooting ng Avengers Endgame? Majority leader. Sino yun? Yung kalaban niya? Thanos. Anyways, uh, Mr. President, uh, have you recognized Senator Gordon? Incoming chairman. Well, I, I'd like to, Gordon. Uh, Mr. President. One second, sir. I think Senator Bato has to mute himself so you can hear him. Senator Gordon, Gordon is raising his hand or? Today. Yes, I was just going to say, I again, I reiterate my support even for the Kalinga or any of these uh, museums, Mr. President, because we really lack our museums. For example, if I ask my good friend and in Ana, she, uh, Miga, Mig Subiri, and for that matter, my good friend Ron De La Rosa, uh, how many times, how many Tribes of Bukidnon are there. Can you name me the tribes of Bukidnon? I think they will have a hard time because there is no... Yes, military. sir. I can name the seven tribes of Bukidnon. We have seven. Yes, I'm sure Bukidnons, you can. Bukidnon, Salaandigs, Umaamnons, Manobos, Matigsalogs, uh, sino ba? The Talaandigs. Talaandigs, Bukidnon, Tigwahanon. Pajabiris. Yeah, Tigwanon. Yeah. Umayamnons, yes. Yes, that's very good, but I'm sure Ron De La Rosa got a fat zero. <laughs> <laughs> So, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But Mr. President, just to... The time is 9-11. I'm always looking at 9-11. Uh, yes. <laughs> the issue is time. The issue is time. The issue is date. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did they it's not, it's not moving to 9-12. Did they approve it already, sir? Uh, I mean, just for the record, did they approve it already on second reading? Okay, na? Not yet. Uh, okay. We're still in the period of amendment. Amendment, uh, Mr. Okay. President. Well, Mr. 
Uh, did we open the period of amendments already? Move we'll open the period of amendments. Yeah. Senator Gatalian is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Well, Mr. President, just to make a distinction, um, uh, CCP is, um, uh, with this bill is equivalent to the CCP here in Metro Manila, and a convention center is equivalent to PICC, Mr. President. So just to make that uh, distinction. But this uh, bill uh, aims to establish a cultural center and a museum. So there's a, uh, a, a artistic and museum component in the bill, Mr. President. So just to put that on record. Mr. Bill, I'll, I'll go into the, uh, uh, Mr. President, I'll go into the- uh, Please proceed. The amendments on lines one to eight, delete the entire section one and replace it with the new section one to read as follows. Section one, there is hereby established a cultural center and museum in Cagayan de Oro City, province of Misamis Oriental, to be known as the Cagayan de Oro City Cultural Center Museum to promote culture and the arts. It shall, ser it, sh it shall serve as the institutional medium for the protection, preservation, presentation, and promotion of the cultural, artistic, archaeological, social, social, historical, religious, and philosophical heritage of the city and its people in view of the richness of their legacies and of their relevance to their contemporary and future aspirations. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. Uh, in lines 10 to 12, delete the entire section 2 and replace it with a new section 2 to read as follows. Section 2, the Cagayan de Oro City Cultural Center and Museum shall be a collaboration between the city government of Cagayan de Oro and the national Commission for Culture and the Arts, open parenthesis, NCCA, close parenthesis, and its concerned affiliated cultural agencies and pertinent academic and private sector partners and members of the community with its site, structure, governance, organization, and operations and development to be provided for by mutual agreement between the parties to be executed and published within one, open parenthesis, Arabic numeral one, Close parenthesis, year from the effectivity of this act. As a move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. In lines 14 to 15, delete the entire section 3 and replace it with the new section 3 to read as follows. Section 3, to fulfill its purposes and achieve its objectives, the Cagayan de Oro City Cultural Center and Museum shall, letter A, compile musical notes and lyrics of Higaonon. Higaonon and other tribes' ancestral songs, traditional songs and ballads, and modern and contemporary music compositions, and collect samples of music, musical instruments of local origin, design, and creation. Letter B, publish and disseminate Cagayan de Oro City's literary works, epics, stories, and historical accounts. Letter C, compile Cagayan de Oro City's literature, film, or audiovisual <coughs> recordings, of cultural performances in music, dance, oral literature, and festival celebration. Letter D, compile again the Oro City's epigrams, proverbs, legends, and the origin, history, and etymology of the city, its words, names of barangays, and other places of interest, and their respective histories. Letter E, gather and document again the Oro City's <clears throat> religious practices and traditions and the background and origin of the local fiestas and festivals. Letter F, compile photographs of and showcase by appropriate exhibits, local landmarks, historical sites, and scenic views, and acquire and display varied range of local arts and artifacts. Letter G, gather specimens of archaeological findings, collect stones, rocks, and other geological materials, and preserve by appropriate methods Samples of flora and fauna indigenous to the city and its environs. Letter H, conduct performances on local music, dances, arts, liter literary works, epic stories, historical accounts, and legends. And letter I, carry out any other relevant and appropriate activities. It's a move, Mr. President. Any objections to the amendments? Hearing none, same the double. After the new section three, <coughs> three, insert section four to read as follows. Section 4, the city government of Cagayan de Oro shall provide the land necessary for the construction or establishment or both of the main venue and auxiliary offices, ancillary offices and facilities of Cagayan de Oro City. 
Culture, Cagayan de Oro City Cultural Center and Museum. As a move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. After the new Section 4, insert a new Section 5 to read as follows. Section 5, the amount necessary for the implementation of this act shall be charged against the current year's budget of the NCCA. Thereafter, proper. budget of NCCA, open parenthesis, close parenthesis, open parenthesis, proper, close parenthesis, thereafter, such amount as may be necessary for its continued implementation shall be included in the Annual General Appropriations Act. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. In line 18, after the preposition with, insert the phrase, the city government of Cagayan de Oro. Uh, other. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. In same line, after the word government, insert the phrase, and private stakeholders. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments adopted. In line 21, before the word this, insert the phrase, notwithstanding the non-issuance of, of the implementing rules and regulations. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. And renumber the sections accordingly. I so move, Mr. President. Without objection, amendment is adopted. Finally, renumber accordingly. Finally, amend the title to read as follows. An act establishing the Cagayan de Oro City Cultural Center and Museum in Cagayan de Oro City, province of Isamis Oriental, defining its purposes and objectives and appropriating funds to report. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Amendment to the title is adopted. That's it, Mr. President. Thank you. Majority Leader. Hello. Uh, yes. Uh, Yes, I move to close the period of amendment, Mr. President. Without objection, period of amendment closed. Move to approve the second reading House Bill number 8287. Without objection, House Bill number 8287 is hereby approved on second. Uh, before we suspend, the Senate Director also wishes to be a co sponsor of the measure. For the record. Move to suspend, Mr. President. Consideration of the measure is suspended. As I move to resume consideration of House Bill number 9607. Without objection, consideration of House Bill number 9607 is in order. Move to close the period of interpolation as there are none, Mr. President. Without objection, period of interpolation is closed. Mr. President, uh, move to open the period of amendments. Recognize the sponsor, Senator Gachalian. Good sponsor, the Honorable Senator Gachalian is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Majority Leader. On page one, lines one to four, delete the entire section one and replace it with a new section one to read as follows. Section 1. There is hereby established a cultural center and museum in the province of Biliran to be known as the Biliran Cultural Center Museum to promote culture and the arts. It shall serve as the institutional medium for the protection, preservation, presentation, and promotion of the cultural, artistic, archaeological, social, historical, religious, and philosophical heritage of the Biliran Island and its people in, the view, in view of the richness of their legacies and of their relevance to their contemporary and future aspirations. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. On the same page, line 6 to 8, delete the entire Section 2 and replace it with a new Section 2 to read as follows. Section 2, the Biliran Cultural Center and Museum shall be a collaboration between the provincial government of Biliran and the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, open parenthesis, NCCA, close parenthesis with its concerned affiliated cultural agencies and pertinent academic and private sector partners and members of the community, with its site structure, structures, governance, organization, operations, and development to be provided for by mutual agreement between the parties to be executed and published within one open parenthesis, Arabic numeral one, year, close parenthesis, year, from the effectivity of this act. Asomo, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. On the same page, delete lines 10 to 12 and replace it with the following. Section 3, to fulfill its purposes and achieve its objectives. The Beliran <coughs> Cultural Center Museum shall. So move, Mr. President. Colon. Colon, yes. Any so objection? Move. Hearing none, amendment is adopted. On page 1, section 3, on subparagraphs A to I, an omnibus amendment to delete the word to. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment adopted. On page 1, line 15, and on page 2, line 10, before the word collect, 
delete the word to. Let's move this one. Any objection? Hearing none. Amendment to that. On page 2, line 12, after the semicolon, delete the conjunction N. As a move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none. Amendment is adopted. On the same page, line 15, after the name Biliran, delete the period and replace it with the semicolon. As a move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none. Amendment is adopted. On the same page, after line 15, insert a new subparagraph. Insert new subparagraphs, J and K, to read as follows. J. Conduct performances on local music, dances, arts, literary works, epics, stories, historical accounts, and legends. And letter K, carry out any other relevant and appropriate activities. As a move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendments are adopted. On the same page, line 17 and 18, delete the entire section 4 and replace it with the new section 4 to read as follows. Section 4, the province, the provincial government of Biliran shall provide the land necessary for the construction or establishment, or both, of the main venue and auxiliary and ancillary offices and facilities of the Biliran Cultural Center Museum. And so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, the new Section 4 as an amendment is adopted. After Section 4, insert new Section 5 to read as follows. Section 5, the amount necessary for the implementation of this Act shall be charged against the current year's budget of the NCCA, open parenthesis, proper, close parenthesis, Thereafter, such amount as may be necessary for its continued implementation shall be included in the Annual General, General Appropriations Act. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, the new Section 5 is hereby adopted. Still on the same page, lines 20 to 23, delete the entire Section 5 and replace it with a new section to read as follows. Section 6, within 60 days from the, accept, from the effectivity of this Act, the NCCA, in coordination with the provincial government of Biliran, other concerned agencies of the government and private stakeholders shall promulgate the necessary rules and regulation for the effectivity, for the effective implementation of this act. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, the new section 6 is adopted. Still on page 2, line 25, before the word this, insert the phrase, notwithstanding the non-issuance of the implementing rules and regulation. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. And renumber the subsections accordingly. So move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none, amendment is adopted. And finally, amend the title to read as follows. An act establishing the Biliran Cultural Center Museum in the province of Biliran, defining its purposes and objectives and appropriating funds therefore. I so move, Mr. President. Any objection? Hearing none. The new title as amended is adopted. Majority Leader. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Move to close the period of amendments. Without objection, period of amendments closed. Move to approve and second reading House Bill number uh, 9607. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Co-author, uh, Mr. President, if I may. I'd like to put the record to co-author Senator Gordon as a co-sponsor. Co co Senator Gordon is made a co-sponsor co of the measure. Yes, sir. So move. Uh, Mr. President, uh, move that uh, they say move to approve. Yes, move to approve and second reading House Bill number 9607. Without objection, House Bill Number 9607 is hereby approved on second reading. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Um, move to suspend consideration. The same. Consideration of the measure without objection is suspended. Thank you, Mr. President. We have several, uh, moving forward, we have several LTO bills here with the permission of our minority floor leader for the low land transportation office bills. Uh, we will just uh, do what we did earlier as well. I will call... Uh, of course, with the permission of the body, all the aforementioned bills for consideration, and then also make an omnibus motion to close the period of interpolation amendments, as there are none, and then move to approve on second reading. Uh, all the measures up to uh, number 94. So this is number 74. Oh, yeah, 90, that's on page 21? Yes, no, 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 uh, page, uh, with me it's page 15, number 74. 17, uh, I think it's 17. Ndipo, number 74. 17. Oh, page 17, yes. So different. we have a new, a different version here. Yeah, page 70, uh, number 74 until number 94 on the agenda. Great. Okay, so uh, Mr. President, with the permission of the body to, uh, to hasten the proceedings and the permission of the sponsor, I move that we resume consideration of House Bill number 2659-1611-3133, 4773, 4786, 4938, 4956, 5277, 
Mr. President, um, it's House Bill number 5882. For what number is that, ma'am? Number yes. 85, that refers to the uh, LTO of the municipality of Tanay. Correct. Five, it's 5882. I think the majority My leader apologies said something if I made else. a mistake on the numbers. Uh, yeah. The Secretariat man is guided accordingly. I so the pleasure of the majority leader. That all members, uh, all, the, all these aforementioned bills be considered. So we have 21 measures here emanating from the House. Yes, Mr. President. The 21 measures emanating to be considered, from, to be considered. Are now considered. Considered. Any Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I also uh, would like to make an omnibus motion to close the period of interpolation and amendments of the aforementioned bills. Without objection, period of interpolation as well as amendments for the 21 measures coming from the House are hereby closed. Thank you, Mr. President. Now we'll do one by one. Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 2659. So move. Without objection, House Bill number 2659 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 1611. Without objection, House Bill 1611 is hereby approved on second reading. Mr. President, I move to suspend consideration the same. Consideration of the, the measure without any objection is hereby suspended. Mr. President, I move to approve on second reading House Bill number 3133. Without objection, House Bill number 3133 is hereby approved on second reading. Mr. President, I move to suspend consideration the same. Consideration of the measure without objection is hereby suspended. Mr. President, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 4773. Without objection, House Bill number 4773 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend. Consideration of the, the measure without any objection is hereby suspended. Move to approve on second reading House Bill number 4786. Without objection, House Bill number 4786 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Move to approve on second reading House Bill number 4938. Without objection, House Bill number 4938 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is suspended. Move to approve on second reading House Bill number 4956. Without objection, House Bill number 4956 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Move to approve on second reading House Bill number 5277. Without objection, House Bill number 5277 is hereby approved on second reading. Let's move to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Let's move to approve on second reading House Bill number 5420. Without objection, House Bill number 5420, the Land Transportation Office of the Dinagat Islands is hereby approved on second reading. Let's move to, uh, move to suspend. Without objection, consideration of the measure is suspended. Let's move to approve on second reading House Bill number 5519. Without objection, House Bill number 5519 is hereby approved on second reading. Let's move to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Mr. President, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 5881. Without objection, House Bill number 5881 is hereby approved on second reading. Mr. President, move to suspend consideration of the same. Without any objection, consideration of the motion, measure is hereby suspended. Mr. President, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 5882. Without objection, House Bill number 5882. Is hereby, this is the Tanai LTO. Yes, I'm not sure. Is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Present move to approve on second reading House Bill number 6169. 
Without objection, House Bill 6169, the Land Transportation Office of Gimbali Luilo, is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Press move to approve on second reading, House Bill number 6440. Without objection, House Bill 6440 is hereby approved. Second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Thank you. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Mr. President, move to approve on second reading House Bill number 6664. Yes, move to approve, uh, Mr. President, second reading. House Bill number 6664. Without objection, House Bill number 6664. The Land Transportation Office of McLean is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. We move to approve on second reading House Bill number 7070. Without objection, House Bill 7070. Milan Transportation Office of the next city of General Trias, province of Cavite, is hereby approved on second reading. President moved to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. President moved to approve on second reading House Bill number 8034. Without objection, House Bill number 8034 is hereby approved on second reading. To suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Suspend move to approve on second reading House Bill number 8130. Without objection, House Bill 8130 is hereby approved on second reading. Suspend move to suspend consideration of the same. Consideration of the measure without objection is hereby suspended. Suspend move to approve on sec second reading House Bill number 8236. Without objection, House Bill number 8236. The LP of the City of Calamba is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the motion measure is hereby suspended. Press move to approve on second reading House Bill number 8653. Without objection, House Bill number 8653 is hereby approved on second reading. Move to suspend consideration. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Press move to approve on second reading House Bill number 9056. Without any objection, House Bill number 9056 is hereby approved on second reading. President move to suspend consideration of the same. Without objection, consideration of the measure is hereby suspended. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Mr. President, to our dear sponsor, Senator uh, Grace Po, uh, may we take up the bills without amendments in the law because so that uh, we can move quicker and the rest we can take up tomorrow, those with amendments? Because there's still the members who are going to sponsor some measures, if that's possible. Um, yes, Mr. President, I'd rather just sponsor a measure if uh, that would be okay, or would you like me to do that okay. tomorrow? Is it tomorrow. fast? Is it quick, the amendments, Mr. President, on the LTO? Are the, are the amendments quick? Because we can also take this up tomorrow uh, yeah. morning. That's up to um, you, Mr. President. Yeah, um, how about the... Because you have about how many LTO offices? I believe, Mr. President, there's still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, uh, 13, 14. Oh, these are FTFRB, LTFRB. Yes. In Iba is LTO and LTFRB. We, we will be here early tomorrow morning. How about uh, the Marina, ma'am? Are all the Marinas, do they have amendments, the Marina bills? So your Marina bills are starting... Uh, Page, uh, rather, Agenda 109 mm -hmm. is the Marina all the way to 111. We can tackle the Marina bills, uh, Madam Sponsor, if it's all right with you. Kung walang amendments, para we can move it quick. Majority Leader, uh, can I ask for a, a minute suspension? Maybe you want a replacement, Mr. President, so yes. that you can also sponsor. As well as a, Maybe uh, ask our distinguished colleague for Venezuela.
Thank you, Mr. President. I promise my colleagues I'll make it quick. We have uh, LTFRB bills pala of uh, Ma'am uh, uh, Grace that have no amendments. With the permission of the body, we'll take up these LTFRB bills. I think they are... Uh, there, there are only three of them without amendments. Uh, which and is then uh, in the agenda, the, which one, ma'am? Marina only has three also without amendments. Yes, Young LTFRB is uh, on number 106 in the agenda. Is that correct, Madam Sponsor? I don't have a copy of the agenda with me. <laughs> yeah, I have 106. I, I, I can take care of it. No worries. Uh, Mr. President, with the permission of the body, I move that we... Um, Consider House Bill number 2590, uh, 4560, and 5488. These are LTFRB measures, Mr. President. I so move. Is there any objection? King none, motions approved. Mr. President, uh, omnibus motion, there are no uh, um, interpolators, no amendments. I move to close the period of interpolation amendments for the aforementioned bits. Is there uh, any objection? Hearing none, motions carried. Does they move to approve on second reading House Bill number 2590? Is there any objection? Hearing none. Motion's carried. Does it move to suspend considerations? Is there any objection? Hearing none. Uh, motion's carried. President, I move that we approve on second reading House Bill number 4560. Is there any objection? Hearing none. Approve on second reading. President, I move to suspend consideration of the same. Is there any objection? Hearing none. Considering uh, 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 motions carried. President, move to approve on second reading house bill number 5488. Uh, is there any objection? Hearing none, motions carried. President, move to suspend consideration of the same. Is there any objection? Hearing none, motions carried. Mr. President, uh, that's it. Uh, no, moving please. towards the <laughs> maritime, Marina. Uh, these are three bills on. Uh, Marina setting up in Calbayo, in Ilocosur, and in Masin City. Mr. President, I move that we resume consideration of. Ah, yes, sir. Mr. President. Parliamentary inquiry. Parliamentary inquiry. Uh, we've been here since uh, 9.30 this morning, starting with the commission appointment. It is already 9.39, 9.40. I don't think uh, that uh, we will be causing any damage to public interest. If we uh, suspend now or, or, or whatever, adjourn now and come back tomorrow at, uh, is it at 10 o'clock? Uh, we are. Uh, May I make a request lang to my minority floor leader? There are just uh, some uh, important measures for sponsorship. I can skip this and just really quick sponsorships, they're omnibus sponsorships, so that if we take them up today, we can pass them tomorrow. Because if I don't take them up today, with the one day rule of this of the tradition traditionally followed by us i cannot take it up tomorrow can i ask for maybe 30 minutes of the time of the our colleagues uh, just if, uh, mr more. president given the lateness of the hour with with uh, due, uh, <laughs> if the lateness of the hour and if these are local bills i would we I, at least on my part i would have no objection to approving the same on this uh, with the, during the day that it was sponsored, as long as these are simple local bills like establishment of LTO and uh, whatever you have, uh, because it's already 40, Mr. President. And uh, but I submit okay, to the, the will of the majority leader uh, if he wants to punish himself. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. President. Actually. Um, I was going to sponsor Sana, have uh, Senator Gordon sponsor uh, citizenship bills because we're actually, these people have been apply, applying for citizenship with us for a long time. And then we are going to sponsor it tonight. But if, if it's all right, then we can take it up then tomorrow, Mr. President, uh, and approve it on second reading uh, tomorrow so that they can be approved on third reading and these are not ng ano. Mr. President, may we recognize Senator Gordon and Senator Binay? Uh, I would like to appeal to my good friend, uh, Senator. Uh, uh, Frank, uh, there are three bills actually. Uh, number one is the bill on citizenship, uh, and number two is the bill on the Office of the Government Corporate Council, where <laughs> we've all been waiting for this for a long time. And number three is the my report on the blue ribbon involving the LTO shenanigans. And I don't think that will be a problem because uh, uh, 11 members have signed that uh, resolution, 
uh, that uh, decision. So yun lang citizenship compared at sa itong kwan. Because tomorrow, I, I hate to say this, but tomorrow I didn't realize that we were going to have a session. I had to agree to go on a speaking engagement out of town tomorrow, and I already have a helicopter waiting at 8.30. Uh, so I would like to make an appeal to all. A session na kayo, at I'll just finish this as quickly as I can. These are not local bills, Your Honor. Siguro, uh, pakiusap pa ko, uh, Tito Frank, just just these bills of Senator Gordon and then we can take a break. That's my commitment. Sure. Uh, as I said, I will submit to the discretion of uh, the majority leader kung gusto niyang pahirapan ng sarili niya, pwede rin sa akin. <laughs> Mr. President? So, Laban para sa bayan. <laughs> yes, uh, Senator Nancy is recognized. Yes, Mr. President, I would also like to make the same appeal to the minority floor leader. I have a just one bill and super short sponsorship speech. <laughs> okay, so let's do it, Mr. President. Uh, with yes. the permission of the body, I'll make it quick. Uh, okay. Let's go towards the sponsorship already with the permission of our colleagues, uh, Senator Grace. We'll take up the rest uh, tomorrow. Uh, Mr. President, uh, na, na read na ba yung... Mix. Yes, uh, Mr. President, I move that we. Uh, where's the OGCC? Para maano na ni. Mix, ako muna sa agenda. Saan po? Senator Nancy wants to be recognized. In the agenda, Ms. Yes, what number are you in the agenda, Madam? Yeah. Uh, yes, I, I'm the not first one in the sponsorship. I can't find you. Ito ko yun. I saw that. Uh, yeah, two, Senate Bill 2484. Let's see. President, I move to resume consideration of... Nabasa na ba ito? May committee report number? Um, Madam Secretary, is the bill of Senator Bina already in the order? Yes. 2484. Mr. President, majority yes, floor 2484. I, two, I move that we transfer from the calendar of ordinary business to special order, Senate Bill number 2484. So moved. Asserting to the record na lang is sponsorship. Is there any objection? Hearing none, uh, measures transfer. President, I move that we consider Senate Bill number 2484. Is there any objection? Hearing none, motion carried. I will ask the Secretary to read the title of the measure. Senate Bill Number 2484, an act converting the Provincial Science and Technology Center in the Provincial Science and Technology Office in every province and appropriating funds, therefore. We recognize our distinguished colleague, Senator Nancy Bean. Senator Nancy Bean is recognized. Thank you, Mr. President. To my honorable colleagues in this esteemed cha chamber, good evening. Since its inception, our Provincial Science and Te Technology Centers, or PSTCs, have continuously provided, disseminated, and transferred scientific and technical know-how and support services to our fellow Filipinos. Malaking tulong ang ginagampa ginagampanan ng ating mga PSTC sa pagpapaabot ng mga programa ng Department of Science and Technology sa ating mga kababayan. Sa klaw nito ang specialized servisyo ng pitong research and development institutes, anim na SNT service institutes, at iba pang mga konseho at collegial bodies na bumubo sa DS DOST. Ang PSTC din ang unang takbuhan ng ating mga kababayan para sa mga scientific at technical na servisyo ng departamento tulad ng setup at SES para sa livelihood programs, RX Box para sa healthcare services, disaster risk reduction, at maging ang DOST scholarship programs. Mr. President, to aid in our country's development, we must equip Filipinos nationwide with the appropriate scientific knowledge and skills as well as technical innovations. Let us use the power of science and technology to uplift the lives of our countrymen. It's, it is in this regard that I stand before you to push for and sponsor Senate Bill Number 2484 or the proposed and an act converting the Provincial Science and Technology Center into the Provincial Science and Technology Office in every province and appropriating funds, therefore, under Committee Report Number 445. This is in substitution of Senate Bill Numbers 887 and 1350, which was earlier proposed in this chamber by Senators Ramon Bong Revilla Jr. and this representation. 
Mr. President, simple lamang po ang layunin ng panukalang batas na ito. Ang kilalanin ang serbisyo na ginagampanan ng ating mga provincial science and technology centers sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay sa kanilang mga kawani ng sapat na sweldo at benepisyo. We need to prevent disillusionment and brain drain by taking care of their staff. It is thus necessary for us in, this, in the legislative branch to help them, especially in their staffing pattern. It is high time that we harmonize and rationalize the compensation and support we give to our PSTC staff to be at par with other government agencies. Matagal na po, dekada na pong inilalaban ng ating mga kasama sa DOST ang kahilingang ito sa loob ng mga nagdaan at kasulukuyang Kongreso, Mr. President. By reclassifying the positions of, science, of senior science research specialists to chief science research specialists, we are bringing the necessary resources and manpower to our PSTCs so that they can fully empower and develop local communities with science and technology. Ayan. Ngayong nasa gitna tayo ng pandemya, basta sa mga nakikita kong palaban sa mga Ayan. epekto nito ay ang tuloy-tuloy na pagbabahagi ng siyensa at teklo- teknolohiya sa ating mga kababayan. Ito ay upang patuloy na maiangat ang kalidad ng pamumuhay ng ating mga kababayan at lumikha pa ng mas maraming sustainable kabuhayan para sa mas maraming pamilyang Pilipino. Makakamit natin ito kung tutulungan din po natin ang mga taong nagtataguyod ng siyensa at teknolohiya sa ating mga probinsya at sa buong bansa. Ipasa na po natin ang Provincial Science and Technology Office Act. Mr. President, it is on the, their behalf that I earnestly urge our colleagues in Congress to support the passage of this bill. Muli, maraming salamat po at magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, Mr. President, move to suspend consideration of the measure to allow our colleagues to study. Is there any objection? Hearing none, uh, measure suspended. Mr. President, I move to transfer from the calendar of ordinary business to special order, House Senate Bill Number 2490. Is there any objection? Hearing none, motion scared. President, I move to, to consider Senate Bill number 2490. And read the title of the measure. Senate Bill number 2490, an act strengthening the Office of the Government Corporate Council, OGCC, by rationalizing and further professionalizing its organization, upgrading positions, and appropriating funds, therefore. Can you recognize the sponsor of the measure, our distinguished colleague, Senator Richard Gordon? We recognize Senator Richard Gordon. I, I will cut short my pre- uh, sponsorship speech uh, so that uh, we do not inflict more suffering upon our majority pro leader. Uh, Mr. President, uh, let me just point out, Mr. President, that there are following bills were passed here, were uh, filed by the following, and this was approved in the House. Uh, House Bill number 989088, approved uh, in the House on June 2nd, 2021. Uh, the one introduced by Senator Bon Revilla, 912. Uh, 963 introduced by Senator Angara, 1029 by our Senate President himself, Vicente C. Soto, and Senator Bill, Senate Bill number 1310 introduced by the Right Honorable Senator Ronald Bato Darak de la Rosa, Mr. President. Uh, let me just point out that uh, uh, this is a bill that will allow uh, some services for the Office of the Government Corporate Council, which is a statutory, a statutory council of all government owned and controlled corporations or GOCCs. Uh, government instrumentalities, exercising corporate powers, GICPs, government financial institutions, EFIs, and government corporate entities, VCDs, and subsidiaries, and corporate offspring, as well as economic zones and water districts, which shall all here and after be referred collectively as government corporations all over the country. The OGCC attends to all the legal requirements of all these government corporations and its legal services makes it possible for government corporations to save at least a billion pesos in terms of retainership, private lawyer's fees, and the handling of its legal, corporate, and administrative requirements. Uh, in Land Bank of the Philippines versus Teresita Luciano, uh, GR 165428, 13 July 2005, the Supreme Court judiciously clarified that the OGCC is the principal law office of GOCCs, and I underline that, the principal law office. The High Court likewise emphasized the absolute requirement for the OGCC to exercise its control and supervision over legal departments of GOCCs. It is the overseer of all legal processes emanating from and from involving all GOCCs. The increase in workload for the OGCC is brought about by the following. 
EO596, promulgated December 2006, 1929, which define government instrumentalities or GOCs, government corporate entities, and making them under the jurisdiction of the OGCCs. The OJ Circular Number 27, 26 June 2018, which mandated the OGCC to be representative of the Secretary of Justice to act as legal advisor and counsel for the SSS and to refer all important legal matters, question, opinion, review of contracts and import, uh, and uh, that are important to OGCC. Memorandum Circular Number 9, 27 August 1998, issued by the President of the Philippines, which directed and enjoined all GOCCs uh, to refrain from hiring private lawyers says legal uh, matters and that all legal matters shall be exclusively referred to and handled by the OGCC. Government uh, number four, Governance Commission for GOCCs, GCG Memorandum Circular 2018-02, 3rd September 2018, GOCC shall ensure that all agreements entered into by them shall be required to have a favorable legal opinion in our contract review or shall be secured by the GOCC before entering into said agreements. Commission on Audit Circular Number 95011, COA Circular 86255, each circular prohibits the GOCC from hiring private lawyers to handle their cases. The OGCC has the authority and legal competence to take action in all important legal questions for the opinion and advise all proposed contracts for review and all important cases for handling of government corporations. The OGCC also represents government corporations in both domestic and international court commercial arbitration. The significance of the OGCC are shown in the following cases. In 2020, the arbitral panel issued a confirmatory award approving the compromise agreement in favor of PISAM, FDC Utilities Incorporated paid PISAM for the unpaid generation payments and other fees. In 2020, the arbitral panel issued a confirmatory award approving the compromise agreement in favor of PISAM, FDC Utilities Incorporated paid PISAM for the unpaid generation amounting to 883 million pesos. Another case is the Philippine Heart Center versus the local government of Quezon City, City Mayor of Quezon City, City Treasurer of Quezon City, City Assessor of Quezon City, GR number 2254091111, March 2020. The Supreme Court declared that the Philippine Heart Center and its properties utilized in relation to the establishment, operation, and maintenance of a specialty hospital in the country are exempt from the real property taxes of the Quezon City government. All the real property tax assessment, as well as the final notices of real property tax delinquencies and the warrant of levy issued by the Quezon City government are void. The July 7, 2011 sale at public auction of the properties of the Philippine Heart Center, as well as the purchase of these properties by the Quezon City government are void. Duty Free Philippines Corporation versus Bureau of Internal Revenue. GR number 197228, 30 August 2016. In this case, the BIR assessed Duty Free Philippines Corporation to pay income and VAT taxes plus surcharges and interest amounting to 1.3 billion. The amount, if it becomes due, will automatically shut down DFPC. The staggering amount, if collected from DFPC, will result in the shutdown of duty free stores at the airports and upset local tourism. Due to the persistent and aggressive handling of the case, the OGCC was able to secure a favorable decision from the Supreme Court, which ultimately found no liability on the part of the FPC. Mega World Corporation versus Land Bank of the Philippines. Uh, Mega World Corporation initiated arbitration proceedings before the Construction Industry Arbitration Commission to claim the unpaid balance for its supposed completion of the Land Bank Plaza. The proceedings reached the Supreme Court. On the 28th October 2021, Report to the Supreme Court, the arbitral tribunal found that the LBP was able to prove that it is entitled to 21.5 million pesos. The favorable decision is an, is an unexpected win and showcased OGCC's efforts and role in protecting the funds and interests of its direct corporations. Moreover, with the enormous changes, especially during the current situation, there is extreme need for OGCC to have its new charter to equip, enhance, develop the office to cope with the demands of the times and to increase its capabilities as our nation's partner in its economic development through its legal services to the GCs. We therefore seek to balance the need to provide better benefits to our lawyers of GOCCs and the need to help financial discipline in managing government coffers. In line with the principle of equal pay for equal work or equal value, OGCC lawyers and administrative staff should be granted the same salaries, benefits, and privileges as their counterparts in the government civil minimums leveling the playing field. There is more than enough reason to pass this new charter of GCC 
to show further strength in the office. It is imperative for this August body to pass Senate Bill 2419 entitled an act strengthening the office of the Government Corporate Council by rationalizing and further professionalizing its organization, upgrading positions, and approaching funds thereof. Thank you, Mr. President. And I hope that the, uh, the uh, Senate will uh, approve this uh, proposed subject. Mr. President, I move that we uh, to allow our colleagues to study the measure further move to suspend consideration. Mr. President. Ah, yes, sir. Mr. President. I recognize Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa, Mr. President. We recognize Senator uh, Bato de la Rosa. May, may I just uh, submit into the records my co-sponsorship speech of, on the proposed measure, Mr. President? Yes, we put that on record, Mr. President. Thank you. So Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. There's Thank a you. pending motion. Thank you. Is, there any, is there any objection? Hearing none, motion's carried. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. President, I move that we uh, transfer some gander and ordinary business to special order committee report number 435. I so move, Mr. President. Is there any objection? Hearing none, uh, motion's carried. President, may recognize, I may ask the secretary to read the title of the resolution. Mm -hmm. Committee report number 435, the alleged misfeasance, malfeasance, and nonfeasance in the implementation of Motorcycle Crime Prevention Act. President, may you recognize the sponsor, Senator Richard Gordon. Senator Richard Gordon is recognized. I shall try to be fast. This has already been approved by the committee, and I hope the uh, body will approve it. Mr. President, I have the honor to sponsor committee report number 145, the alleged misfeasance, malfeasance, and nonfeasance in the implementation of the Motorcycle Crime Prevention Act, public number 11235. Your Blue Ribbon Committee will always act and perform its job in protecting our people from corrupt and inefficient government officials who have failed to implement the law, which we have championed to protect the public from the riding in tandem criminals. Government fails its people when crimes, especially those committed by criminals riding in tandem, continue unabated. These malefactors remain uncaught, unpunished, and allowed to go their merry ways. Impunity is the rule. Based on the records from the PNP, an average of four people are killed each day by riding in tandem or solo riding gunmen. In, in 2021, we recorded 201 victims of riding in tandem incidents. The latest incidents is last month. The latest victim is the mayor of Albarca, Basila. Mayor Darussalam Lahid killed along with his bodyguard in Sambuanga City. He and, his, he and another mayor, Mayor Ali Alwal Sali Akbar Basilan, were walking towards a mosque and four riding in tandem shot them using 45 pistols. On December 2, 2021, here's something that raises the eyebrows. Dr. Raul Andutan, uh, uh, a permanent surgeon and urologist in Cagayan de Oro, was shot dead in broad daylight by riding in tandem and they were paid a bounty of 150,000 to be shared by four people. Two arrested suspects shot and killed the surgeon and urologist. On December 8, 2021, journalist Jesse Malabana in Samar, he was shot dead by riding in tandem after arriving in his native Samar province. He was killed and shot close range in their store in Kalbayag around 6 p.m. This is the fifth incident of journalist killing in the country in 2021, which again, uh, uh, you know, uh, puts the Philippines in a very sordid situation where we have the most journalists killed in the whole world. The first partial committee report, Mr. President, is the unabated riding and tandem killings, non-implementation of Motorcycle Crime Prevention Act, Republic Act 11235. The absence of bigger, readable, and color-coded motorcycle plates, and by the way, it's not really bigger, and it's not really doble placa, has unquestionably contributed to the rampant unabated killings in the country. RA 11235 was passed to protect the public from criminals using motorcycles. It was enacted to protect the innocent from motorcycle-laden criminals by allowing easier identification of a specific vehicles used in many crimes through the requirement of legible, more identifiable license plates which are color-coded as well. Based on the records from the Philippine National Police, an average of four people are killed each day by riding in tandem or solo riding gunmen. Unabated killings perpetrated by riding in tandem revealed PNP statistics 19,277 crimes committed by motorcycle riding criminals from 2016 to 2021, January. Total victims of riding in tandem in 2021 alone, 171 dead, 28 injured, two unharmed. And the latest victim, Your Honor, is a gentleman, uh, an assistant uh, city state prosecutor by the name of Mendoza, who, while he was skipping rope, was killed 
uh, on the last day of, of uh, the year uh, and treacherously killed uh, and shot three times in the head and escaped and the initial report of the policeman is that they walked out. Uh, the suspects walked out. But in reality, after 30 seconds, you saw a motorcycle leaving the premises and they were shown on CCTV from the CCTV ex exiting the subdivision that was just arriving in tandem this place were hardly legible. In fact, Your Honor, when he uh, when he was when he was captured, I was very happy. Ano na yare? Pag sinabi na nung nung mga police na nahuli nila na tuwa ko, pero nung pinaimbestiga ko ang lubabas, and I call on my good friend Ron de la Rosa to help me investigate this. Ang lubabas ay sinasabi nila ay dalawang apidabit ang binigay at dalawang mastermind. Samantala, inadmit na niya na binayaran siya ng mastermind. Kaya ako nagtanong, ang nasabi, hindi nila ma-file dahil dalawang mastermind sa dalawang apidabit ang tinuturo. Eh kung mayroon po bang talagang uh, riding in tandem na master plate at mayroon tayo na tinatawag natin uh, operation center na madadaling mahuli ka agad dyan, eh siguro mas mabilis na huli yun in a uh, flagrante delicto. So it's been deadly for the world, uh, to, for the journalists. Tally of UNESCO and the CPJ ranged from 70 to 23 killings since this administration rose into power in 2016. In 2021, four out of the five were killed in riding in tandem. Uh, there, I, can, I can name you all the uh, ones recently killed, but uh, I'm trying to shorten the speech. I'll just file it in the record. Because of the dismal figure, failure of the LTO to implement RA11235, more people are still getting killed by criminals riding in tandem incidents. The readable plates and the command center could have assisted the PNP greatly in solving crimes and could have deterred the commission of other crimes. With the proper implementation of RA 11235, riding in tandem perpetrators will be easily apprehended since the number plates can be easily read and monitored. Law enforcers will be able to trace the owner of the motorcycle used in the crime because the number plates are color coded and a complete database kept in an operation center, Mr. President that will be jointly operated by the PNP and the LTO uh, will be utilized. When a motorcycle is lost, stolen, or used in a crime, the owner must report it to the operation center, and therefore there will immediately be a report that can issue an all-points bulletin, and we can capture the motorcycle loss or the motorcycle involved in a crime. I submit that LTO did not protect the public and committed injustice by dilly-dallying and affecting the provisions of 11.235 to date, I believe there are about 18,000 motorcycle plates that have not been issued by the uh, by the uh, LTO since uh, 12 years ago, Mr. President. That is a travesty, Mr. President. Travesty to those who try to get their plates, who pay for the registration, who pay the fees, and yet they don't get the plates, and they're able to use the motorcycles uh, to kill people. And it's even a better, a worse tra travesty when they do not implement if the Red Cross can up, put up an operation center where anything that happens in the country can be reported immediately to the operation center of the Red Cross, I'm sure we can cut the riding and tandem in half. I have used this in Olongapo for jeepneys and tricycles with big body numbers and, tri and, and, and uh, uniform drivers, and there is still no crime on board motorcycles and tricycles in Olongapo. The delay in the release of motorcycles, in spite of the fact that the law says within five days, the motorcycle plates and the registration must be given creates corruption because ang nangyayari, nilagyan nila ng mafia yung mga uh, tinatawag nilang uh, mga natitinda, nagpuproduce ng motorcycles at natawag nila ay uh, mer merdo at sila ang nagbibigay. So they relinquish it without, without, without due delegation of authority. They relinquish, they relinquish the power to merdo so, hindi na susunod yung within five days, hindi na kukuha yung plaka. That means we don't get taxes uh, for transfer of motorcycles and we don't get the adequate protection for the motorcycle buyer uh, because kawawa siya, pwede hilahin yung kaja motor anytime. The delay in the establishment of the joint LTO, uh, PNP Operations and Control Center, two years after the signing of the law. This is a very simple function, Mr. President. No functions, operations, and control operations uh, center has materialized. This is non peasants of the highest order, for which the LTO, under the leadership of Assistant Secretary Edgar Galvante, and I hate to do this to Edgar Galvante, he's a friend, 
uh, and he should be held liable because after so many implorations, he has not taken any action. We, we implored him, not just once, not just twice, five times, seven times, we have done that, but he has not taken action. And you know why? The reason is they could not do so because there was a mis uh, 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 a problem when they awarded the plates to another bidder and there was a code that had to be given that became uh, properly intellectual property of the previous bidder so they cannot re repair the plates and they cannot even do that for the Atinatao Nothing Operation Center. The delay in the issuance of the implementing rules and regulations has greatly hampered the distribution of new, bigger, readable and color-coded motorcycle plates. By the way, the plates are not that big. It's very readable and there are no plates in front. I want to clear that because may black propaganda pang ginawa. Hindi ko alam kung LTO yung mga nagbebenta ng motosiklo that are readable and color-coded motorcycle plates. The implementing rules and regulations or 11.235 was signed only on May 11, 2020. It took them one year to sign and release the IRR. This is a direct violation of Section 17 of 11235, which states that the LTO has the obligation to release the IRR with a non-extendable period of 90 days from effectivity or 90 days from 29 March 2019. Certainly, the foot dragging is costing lives, Mr. President, and loss of property. Regulatory capture resulting from the so-called proprietary nature of the order management system, which I spoke of earlier. The digital signature utilized by LTO is proprietary to just one supplier, Tonjes. Hence, no supplier is able to access the order management system other than Tonjes. As a result, Trojan Tonjes has won all the bidings from 2017 to 2020. This is pieces of the highest order for which the LTO, under the leadership of the you know lamented Assistant Secretary Edgar Galvante and Executive Director Romeo Vera, must be held liable. This referred, this referred will be referred to the report will be referred to the Ombudsman to investigate the criminal and administrative capability of the current officials of the LTO. Under the accountability rule failure to implement RA11235, LTO Assistant Secretary, non-implementation of RA12235, liable under RA3019 Anti-Graph and Corrupt Practices Act, Section 3 causing any undue injury to any party, including the government, or giving any private party an unwarranted benefits, advantages, or preference to the discharge and the discharge of his official administrative or judicial functions through manifest partiality, evident bad faith, or gross inexcusable negligence. Penalty is not less than one year nor more than 10 years perpetual disqualification from public office and confiscation. Again, acts performed by Assistant Secretary Adil Alvante allowing Trojan Tony, Don Jess, to install a proprietary and closed system such as the order management system to the detriment of future bidders, thus allowing the regulatory capture of the LTO's order management and therefore delaying all the plates that have to be made, including the performance, the uh, actual implementation of this law. Again, under Section 3E, they're liable. Executive Director Romeo Vera Cruz, failure to answer to the letter sent by joint venture of Columbia Technologies under the Code of Ethics they are supposed to answer within 15 working days uh, from the time they received it. The proposed legislation which we have filed increases the penalty for RA 3019, anti graph and corrupt practices, and act summary proceedings for the speedy dismissal of erring public officers, creation and operationalization of a digital infrastructure of the LTO of OPSEN in the form of, among other, smartphone applications, Mr. President. On that note, Mr. President, I would like to ask the body to approve it uh, immediately so the proper courses of justice and the Ombudsman can take action on the case. I rest my case, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Mr. President, for our colleagues to study the measure. Further move to suspend consideration. Is there any, is there any objection? Hearing none, uh, motion to carry. <clears throat> Mr. President, on the measures of the citizenship, uh, we were not able, apparently the staff were not able to uh, file it today for official business. Uh, Mr. President, we were not able to read it. So, with the permission of the sponsor and the minority floor leader, I was present in the hearings of the uh, citizens uh, for applying for citizenship. Three of them happened to be uh, sponsored or authored by myself uh, out of the five. 
if uh, with the permission of the body tomorrow I can sponsor or read the sponsorship speech of the good gentleman from uh, Zambales since he cannot make it and then we can tackle it uh, after uh, Mr. President with the permission of the group. May we recognize Senator uh, Mr. President. That would be wholeheartedly appreciated because I really cannot uh, escape from my uh, appointment tomorrow. I, I have the sponsorship speech here. Uh, Two of these were sponsored by, of course, this all came from the local, the, the house, and a lot of uh, effort has been made by them, and uh, we took pains to uh, find out, uh, of course, Senator Bacchel authored a couple of them, and uh, Senator Sabiri sponsored three of them, and some of them were sponsored also by uh, the, the majority floor leader of the house, uh, Mr. Romualdez, Mr. President. I, I think these are not difficult matters to decide. Thank you, Mr. President. I am yes. willing to give this to you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. thank you. With the permission of uh, the sponsor, I can be made co-sponsor and sponsors the, sponsor the message tomorrow. But I may take up the Natin Bukas. Thank you, Mr. President. One last na lang, Mr. President, uh, request ni Senator Tolentino because he waited patiently and diligently. It's an omnibus speech for five uh, uh, changing of names, and he was promised to make it quick and insert to the records, Mr. President. And that's it. We go home tonight, Mr. President. Okay. Mr. President, I move that we transfer from the calendar of ordinary business special orders the aforementioned bills, House Bill number 8842, 9451, 6535, 8999. I didn't know, Beto. None of them were obeyed. Oh, in that case, Mr. President, I, I withdraw my motion. Apparently, they were not yet under official business readings earlier. So, with that, I, presume, my apologies to Senator Tolentino. Senator Tolentino, uh, my apologies. Hindi pa pala na official business siya. So we'll, we can take them up tomorrow. Anyway, their local bill, Senator Tolentino, uh, we already have an idea, agreement that, especially due to this uh, uh, lateness of the sessions of Congress, we will just uh, make this... Uh, uh, of course, exemptions on, on the rule. Yes, uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Mr. President. Mr. President. Just one uh, manifestation. I, I, nice, Senator Tolentino. Mr. I, 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 there was a, some omissions here, but uh, just the same. I'd like to thank the majority leader for recognizing my right to speak. I have been waiting here patiently. I've been here since 9 o'clock. I've even attended the Commission on Appointments uh, hearing physically. And I presided... Uh, uh, for the swift approval of several measures, but I'm not taking it against anybody. I, I will be here again early tomorrow morning if that is uh, needed physically, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. I'd just like to remind our committee secretaries, because it's not my job to make sure they're read an OB, right? It's uh, Mr. President. It's the job of the ComSex to make sure that they're filed and then complete signatures of all our committee reports, and then we're read into OB for additional reference of business. Yeah. So we, we just like to remind our colleagues to do that. Uh, please remind your staff to make sure that the bills that we sponsor have been filed for reference of business to be marked on the OB, and then I can transfer it to special, the calendar special business. So we recognize Mr. Senator uh, Grace Poma. Um, Mr. President, it's in the agenda, but I know it, it's quite late, but I just wanted to say that this would have been a short uh, sponsorship for more power. Uh, maybe we can just take this up tomorrow. Yes, we can do this first item on the agenda tomorrow, um, okay. Madam Sponsor. Thank you. Uh, with that, Mr. President, just a reminder, we have a uh, we'll suspend session today, start session tomorrow at 10 o'clock in the morning, but we'll have a short session only until 1 o'clock, uh, I believe, because we have several committee hearings that start at 1.30, I believe there's also a Blue Ribbon. Uh, I'm not sure if the Blue Ribbon will be tomorrow, but I know there are several committees that will start in the afternoon. Yes, okay. there will be a Blue Ribbon, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. President, there will be a Blue Ribbon tomorrow at 3 o'clock. That's right. So I will uh, definitely uh, end session tomorrow uh, before that, uh, Mr. President. Mr. Yes, Mr. Minority Floor Leader, Mr. President. Yes, Mr. Mayor. May we recognize our Minority Floor Leader, Mr. President. If we recognize Senator Drillon. Just a parliamentary inquiry of, uh, from the chairman of the Public Services Committee. Is there a BICAM, uh, uh, BICAM conference committee meeting tomorrow at 10? Uh, will that push through? Uh, no, no, the, the BICAM is on Monday. Ah, okay, sorry. Yes. 
Thank you very much, Ram. Okay. My apologies to Senator Pimentel. They have a bicameral conference committee report, but we can take this up tomorrow anyways, uh, with no problem. But maybe uh, with the permission of the body, just a quick election of the uh, members of a bicam of another measure, uh, Mr. Mr. Our distinguished colleagues, really quick. Mr. President, with the permission of the body, I move that we proceed to the Senate President's designation of the Senate Conference to the Bicameral Conference Committee on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill Number 1155 and House Bill Number 10610. That's the uh, validity, fixing the validity of the period of license to own, permit, and carry registration of firearms, Mr. President. The following members are hereby designated as the Senate Conference to the Bicameral Conference Committee on the disagreeing provisions of Senate Bill Number 115. Five five and House Bill Number One Zero Six One Zero. They are uh, Senator Bato de la Rosa as chairperson, Senator Ralph Recto, Senator Juan Miguel Zubiri, Senator Francis Tolentino, Senator uh, Lito Lapid, Senator Lisa Antiveros. Thank you very much, Mr. President. And Mr. President, I just like to remind the Secretariat we approved a lot of bills on second reading. So can I ask a favor tomorrow when we put out our agenda to clean this? 37 page document and just leave those that we haven't tackled yet. All those that we've passed for third reading, please remove it here already so that we can we can have a smaller agenda for tomorrow. Thank God. All right, Mr. President, uh, I move. And I, before I do that, thank you very much, my dear colleagues. Those who are online, uh, Senator Bongo will take up the hospitals tomorrow. I have a commitment from our colleagues. Wala problema po. And uh, thank you, Senator Go, Senator De La Rosa, Senator Gordon, Senator Villar, Senator Vinay, Senator Risa Devero, Senator Marcos, Senator Vinay, Senator Sani Angara, and of course, my distinguished colleague, my, my uh, mentor, Senator Drilon, maraming salamat po, sir. And of course, those that are here today behind me, it's uh, 9.30 in the morning, Senator Colentino and Senator, uh, <laughs> our presiding officer, Senator Sherwin Gachalian, my compadre. Thank you so much for the overtime. Mr. President, I move that we suspend session until 10 o'clock in the morning, Thursday, January 27, 2022. Maraming, maraming salamat po. Thank you. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the session suspended until 10 o'clock in the morning of Thursday, January 27, 2022.